Howdy, everyone. Howdy, say hi. Hello. I don't know how to get it to... Uh, of course, everything that we do, we do a little bit different. So we want to make sure you guys can see us and hear us, okay? Of course, you're not seeing me right now because I'm kind of behind the scenes. But Hershey Motorhome says, Happy birthday, Heidi. I know one thing. We're not having this furnace run all this time. <laughs> we're going to freeze to death. Uh, I don't think so. If it gets down to... Uh, 62, then we'll know. So let us know how the sound is, if it needs to be turned up. There's lots of comments. You see them all? Yell airplane spotting. Hello. How are you tonight? Mark's Adventures. Hey, Marcus. I'm standing behind the camera because I'm just making sure that everything stays in focus and the lighting's okay. How old are you, Heidi? Luis says, how I'm old 49 you? years old. She's old Monday. Ancient. <laughs> I think the lighting's okay. I don't know if I need all this. I'm so. not ashamed of my age. <laughs> and... <laughs> That's funny, Joe. The 28th. We're doing pretty good tonight, other than it's... Uh, a little rainy outside. Yeah, it's definitely rainy. Okay, am I in the view now? Uh, my birthday is Monday, October 28th. We're going to move this over just a little with a cord reach. Oh, to be 37 again. Mobile uh, Homestead RV. <laughs> Thanks, Charles Howard. I need a drink of water. So Thanks, is, Joe. Is the microphones equal? So this is what I want you guys to tell us if you can. Here's mine. I'm scratching mine. Can you hear mine being scratched? Quit touching it! I'm touching it! <laughs> so I'm scratching mine. That should come out. Now check, see if Heidi's does. Go ahead and just rub yours a few times. Scratch, scratch, scratch. <laughs> so did you hear that equally? Furnace background noise. Yeah. We just kicked it off. I I don't think it's too loud, but both mics are good. Thank you. Who's Thanks, that? Rico. The Pickles 85. You've got to be new. I've never seen that name before. The Pickles 85. <laughs> I'd remember that. <laughs> Gray Wolf Living. It's Greg and Karen. How are you? Thanks, Linda Gross. We, we almost... Um, uh, Greg and Karen, we almost came out and visited you for a few days. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit. We, I don't know what, we decided not to and it, it you know, it could have gone either way. We could have flipped the coin and we could have been in five different places, but we didn't. We are actually in our driveway. <laughs> yeah, we're just in the driveway. But yeah, we didn't go anywhere. Happy hey. birthday. Fourth commenter. You're always... He's Thanks, always like CM. first. We, I have uh, your questions. I just wrote them down. Almost always like We appreciate you. Right away. And you're, and you're one of the reasons that we're sitting here live today, by the way. <sighs> you, you put that the other day, posted and said live with a question mark. I'm like, ah, uh, yeah. Thanks, Brian. It's about time. <laughs> yes. I've been subscribed to you for something. He's a... I'm just the silent one. Oh, are you? Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's a great username. I would re I'd remember that one. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Oh, he can hear the rain. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's not pouring down there. I I'll have to say that there is a definite distinct sound uh, to the uh, rain on this thing compared to the old one. It's nice sleeping. I love yeah, it. Yeah, it's. It sounds kind of. I don't know how to describe the sound. Tell you the truth, it's just different than our old one. You finally got it on the TV. <laughs> awesome, Karen. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> oh, that is funny. Yes, Robert. We're in our driveway again. Yeah. No. Like I said, we didn't have to. Um. Uh, that's awesome, Brian. Thirty day trip. Yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah, we like I said. Thanks, 
uh, the Pickle 85. We did not have to... Uh, Thanks, JD, small engine. Um, we didn't have And to, Donna. We could have went camping. Yeah, we could have. We, we, there's a lot of stuff to be done around here. Um, I, I did want to go camping. At the same time, I want to be ready to... For Christmas. Um, to have our grandson over. And we got boxes of stuff everywhere. Yeah, our house looks like that somebody's moving, <laughs> moving in or moving everybody. out, one or the other. <laughs> There's boxes everywhere. We we've got stuff packed. We got stuff that are, Thanks, is Richard for yard Howard. sales. We have stuff that's supposed to be donated. We have stuff that's supposed to go to the kids. Some of it's our son's stuff. He's got his stuff. Hi, Jack. Up. It is nice sleeping when it's raining. Microphones I are working just love great. It. Good. Thank you, Joe. So glad you said that. Had a few people that mentioned it, but I like to hear it because sometimes our, we have our, our volume a little too loud, a little too quiet. We are tent camping. What? They're getting a camper. They're getting a trailer. Oh, good. That's awesome. Good. I don't even know how to begin the whole thing. Um, oh, I know how definitely to. The very first thing we're going to do is answer those questions. And somebody right away started asking us questions. I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure who it was. What I was got a mayor for you. Oh, good. Marty Steinmeier. <laughs> your, your questions came through immediately. I'm like, oh, we definitely have to cover this. So, and then Thanks, CM, Richard. we see some of yours too. Uh, we'll, we're going to go through those from what she's got uh, listed here. And if you guys have any other questions other than what we mentioned, throw them out there and Heidi will try to keep track of them. So, Marty Steinmeier uh, says, do you think the F 250 is enough truck or do you wish you would have went? With the F-350, I have an F-250 gas. I'm debating an F-350 diesel. And this is for the 30-foot uh, travel trailer range pulling tongue weight payload. I'm thinking. Uh, it depends on... It depends on how much you're going to be towing, I guess. I don't think my truck is an issue for okay here's here's the problem that a lot of people have and i do too and that is they drive their truck around every day go to the store get, whatever it's a daily driver then you hook up the trailer and all of a sudden the truck acts differently duh because now you have something big and heavy behind it and maybe it sits a little bit different or rides a little bit different so then you try to figure out is that different ride characteristic is it bad is it okay? Is it normal? Uh, should it be a little bit closer to the unloaded, unpulling characteristics that it had, you know, as far as driving it around without anything? And ideally, I think that uh, the people that have like F-350, you know, dually diesels, um, or even an F-350 not dually diesel, or any, any truck for that matter, any of the big heavy duty trucks, I think what happens is it, at some point, they uh, they get comfortable with how it doesn't change the way the truck reacts, acts, bounces, stops, whatever. Um, the bigger you go with what you have behind you, uh, so they feel more comfortable saying, "Yeah, I, I could have got away with this, but I decided to go with that." And I'll, I'll have to say, definitely, at least in the Ford family. The F-150s really feel odd uh, whenever you get this heavy and this long. Um, they do the job. It's just they feel odd. However, if you've got, you know, to where you're you're not towing that much, that many miles, you should be okay. Um, if it's a weekend thing, you only go out maybe four week, you know, four weekends a, a year or maybe four weeks a year, and you're only going maybe 300 miles. I mean, I, I, I could see an F-150 being okay. Um, but if you're planning on doing some longer trips, and just talking about what we're saying here, the 30-foot range, um, the F-250 is definitely okay. It's it, it's fine. The, um, I, I can't think of anything that it doesn't scare me, and it doesn't act strange or anything. It feels very capable. Um, but uh, the F-350 would have been a little bit more sturdier when towing, but much bigger pain in the butt when driving without a trailer on it so you've got to be 
cautious of that. As far as the diesel versus the gas, that is definitely your own preference. I just watched something on uh, truck, uh, fast lane truck. If you haven't ever checked out that channel, definitely go do it. They talk, just talked about the uh, Chevy, um, the Chevy truck, and they were talking about they tested the diesel truck, fully loaded, pulling or pulling a, a loaded trailer, and then the gas truck pulling a loaded trailer, and then empty and and going a, a loop like a 60 or 70 mile loop, and then the gas truck doing that same loop without pulling a trailer. They looked at the gas mileage and everything. And they figured that just based on gas mileage alone, that they would have to drive the um, a diesel truck uh, over 100,000 miles uh, just to break even on the gas price difference uh, to pay for the diesel, the you know, to, the diesel that they were testing. Um, it would have been 100,000 miles of driving the diesel and the savings in the gas that you get from driving the diesel towing. It would have taken 100,000 miles to do that, and that's towing, um, not driving it without a trailer. And then they said something to the effect of uh, if you were not towing, uh, you're talking like 400,000 miles or something like that before uh, that diesel would pay for itself. So um, there's, there's always an argument there uh, to be had one way or the other. I like gas. It's, everything's just so much simpler all the way around with the gas engine. Um, but uh, as far as going with an F-350, uh, if we were full-time on the road, I, I could see getting an F-350. And some people say you, that you can get an F-350 sometimes cheaper than an F-250. And I think Mike did. Um, Mike and Cindy Travels, uh, which we've talked about them recently more than uh, we have anyone else because we've been interacting with them. Uh, Mike, that's his motorhome that we have in the driveway. Uh, he said that it was actually a little bit cheaper, I think. I'm pretty sure he was the one saying that, to get uh, to get the F-350 than the 250. Um, and it's because, I don't know, the F-250 is kind of the middle of the road. Uh, I mean, not just numerically, but also for people buying. They, they don't want something too light, they don't want something too heavy. And the F-250 is kind of like a big heavy-duty F-150, but not the F-350. So... Would I get it again? Um, depends on the price. And depends on how close we were to being full-time. I mean, if you're just towing a lot, of course the F-350 makes more sense. Uh, even with this light of a trailer, I mean, it, overkill is great. Now, as far as the diesel part, though, maybe... I mean, that, that, that allows you to go into something bigger if you want to. Uh, I mean, oh it, it's kind of hard to say. Click that X. Um, the, uh, the fact that we have this F-250, we've towed with it now, this RV, and we've gone through some hills. I don't have a problem with it at all. So it's more than capable. So I think you're going to probably find that you're going to be doing the same thing that you are with your travel trailer, um, if you haven't already, and that is uh, using it in the manner that you're going to be using it, not anybody else, and then figure out if that's going to fit your needs. And I think it's going to be the same with the truck. Uh, somebody had mentioned once that your first RV, your first truck, is not going to be your last RV and your last truck if you're really into this type of, type of lifestyle. And I, I can see where that's definitely the case. I mean, you have to start with something to know where to go from there. There's a lot of personal choices there. So I don't think that it really answered your question too much other than, yes, I'm very happy with the F-250 gas, and I wouldn't change it. And especially now, if you have not bought a truck yet, and you want to try an F-250 with a gas, that new 7.3 with the 10-speed that's coming out this year, it, as long as it doesn't have any weird flaky characteristics or, or weird flaws or something, everything is lined up for that to be much better than the truck that I have sitting in the driveway right now. Even though it's going to look the same, it's going to be the same weight for the most part, um, it's going to have more towing capability, um, and it's going to uh, have a better transmission, so, so Ford has said so far. 
and uh, it's gonna it's just gonna be more powerful all the way around. And I, even though this 6.2 is very, very, very reliable, it's been out for quite some. It's proven. It's a proven combination. Um, that that stuff may that 7.3 and that 10 speed live up the same way. It's going to be a a very good engine everybody talks about oh we got a super chat who sent us a super chat richard thank you sir appreciate it richard howard sent us a super chat <laughs> you got any questions we'll throw you up front <laughs> when we go uh, full-time will we change our state of residency that is uh, heidi says that we're not going to right away uh, we've already talked about that she said for the first couple years uh, we're probably going to use her mom's address. Well, that depends. Yeah. It, oh, yeah. That depends if the school levy passes. <laughs> oh, yeah. If their school levy passes, we're not because they'll be taking money from uh, us. Uh, and if we change our state of residency, I'm caught in between. I know South Dakota is the right answer, but it's also way out of our way from anything that we plan on doing. Our actual license expire. You got yours this year, right? Yeah. And I got mine. Mm -hmm. last year so we're for three years yeah so i mean we have three years to make a decision right well other than income state income tax stuff like that but yes we will change it like i said uh our south dakota is the correct answer because it's so easy everything about it's so easy thank you uh, art uh, uh, i'm getting a little behind on the birthday thing however the pamela uh, uh, however, the uh, Troy state that we'd like to, to register. Thank you, thank you. Looking good. Hey, How are you? You're talking over me. I know. Were well, you talking over me? Hey, I gotta answer these questions. Okay. Well, you <laughs> need to shorten them. <laughs> I want to give them good answers. Well. <laughs> so the travel, the uh, like I said, the state of residence, we should choose a South Dakota, but it's so far out of the middle of nowhere. Basically, tell you the truth, I could see us going up there and, and doing whatever we needed when we needed. However. Um, Florida would be more of an option because we have relatives down there. So we'll have to weigh that. So CM says likely, neither does Florida. What's that? CM says neither does Florida. What is neither does Florida? What well, CM, what doesn't Florida have? Neither does Florida. Or what do they have? Yeah, he says Florida. Uh, so CM says, why do unicorns have horns? <laughs> he was just... I don't know. The, oh, okay. To keep the leprechauns out of the road. That's it's just a guess. I don't know. <laughs> did the motorhome sell? No, it did not sell. Uh, it's still right where we left it. If you guys haven't had a chance to check out that video, it was just a couple videos back. Um, uh, it's Mike and Cindy Travels. Uh, they have a YouTube channel, and they have a, uh, a travel trailer now and a new diesel truck, and uh, they have their motorhome that's just been sitting. And they don't want it to. Uh, they want it to go to a good home, so it's here at the house, and it's nice. Uh, I had a gentleman stop. Well, actually, <laughs> we're not we're, buying that for Bud. We no. That's funny. <laughs> we have a few people that are uh, that had stopped, but the one guy stopped with his wife. I think that he left. We were out of the area. Um, we made an appointment. He showed up, and we talked for a long time. He was very interested. He had a lot of questions. He was going to be new to RVs. And CM says, is Bud still working? Yes. Um, he's excited because he finally said that he got a deposit of, I don't know, a grand or so in his bank account <laughs> for the time he's been out there. It's been very, very slow working. It's yeah, he, he's doing well. Um, he definitely didn't plan to be there for oh, this long. Yeah, it's been over a month. Yeah, it's been over a month uh, and very little pay. Uh, most of his pay just come in within the last week. I talk to him every couple days, and uh, he seems to be doing good. But he was mad because he's, he said he spent some money, and that was to survive. So I told him that, you know, yeah, you're going to spend money. you got to spend money to make money. you gotta eat. You got to eat to survive. So, and I'm sure that he's probably pretty bored sitting in his van on the days that he didn't work because they got it was either a foot of snow two foot of snow lots of rain lots and lots of rain he said it rained hard for days 
So he got booted out of his campground. He had to go to Drayton. And he's now 30 miles away from his work instead of 20. So he seems to be doing okay, though. Thank you, Greg. You're awesome. Who's that? That's Greg. Karen and Greg. Man, we're going to end up buying you dinner again. <laughs> Send us money. <laughs> um, Great wolf a veteran living. said he was interested before seeing it. Um, CM, I'll try to track that message down and see if uh, I can uh, locate, him again. locate him and see if he is still truly interested. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of hard. We, well, This is the way I've learned to sell stuff. If somebody's interested, we shouldn't have to go looking for them. We should, I mean, it, I mean that's the way it is. If somebody's truly interested yeah. and not a tire kicker, they really, uh, it's... Yeah, because this isn't ours. We're just doing a favor, you know. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. Like, well, even if it was ours, I'm the same. Well, right, you guys more, are on the... I'm more displaced from the stuff right. that I sell, even more if it's mine, than, than if it's somebody else's. Because I, I've got the theory of, you know, if... If you go to Walmart and you're looking to buy something off the shelf, if you really want it, you pick it up and put it in your cart. And if you really want to buy it, you push your cart to the cash register and you, you hand them money. Um, it's the idea, and again, this is going back to, I, it, it's, I'm a little jaded, I guess, because I sold so much stuff from the house here. Uh, but, you know, it's you get a lot of the tire kickers and dreamers and big planners and you know whenever they're talking about everything they would love to do or they've got thousands of questions that are basic questions to the point where they don't even know if they necessarily want to have a motorhome they might want a travel trailer if you get into people that have those kind of questions I mean that's you know I'll be I'll be cordial and I'll be polite but it's not it's not a good thing it's just not a good idea it's to, to really spend a lot of time there. Um, that gentleman had some really good questions, and it's like sitting with you guys. I mean, he had questions that he, he was asking that, hey, should I do a travel trailer? And I went, I, I went through all the details of, of the pluses and minuses. Um, but, yeah, yeah, as far as you shouldn't have to work to sell something <laughs> to any extent. Why do you keep on doing that? Jeez, it's a keyboard it, that hasn't changed for years. Didn't you take typing in high school? I didn't even take typing in high school. <laughs> typing in the computer is different. Oh, sure it is. <laughs> I don't know how that happens. But anyway. That's right, Robert. That's very true. What's that? Selling it for a fair price. I mean, that's pretty much the money is going to be up to Mike and his wife. What's that? When they sell, since it's for a friend, you're probably more interested in trying to sell it for a fair price. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, you, yeah, I if think... it was you, you you're, you accept the lowball offers no, a I lot don't. of times. No, he that does. is not true. A lot of times. I have an idea. No, it all depends <laughs> on what... But we haven't even got nobody offered anything. Well, not yet. But the whole idea is, it there's the way I okay. I'll tell you some secrets. You're gonna learn some selling secrets here. If you guys are selling anything, your time is worth money. I've said this a thousand times on previous videos about selling stuff. And even though I might want to sell, I'm going to use an example: a John Deere tractor, a, a 48 inch cut twin cylinder. Uh, hydrostat uh, John Deere that's five years old or eight years old let's go eight years old if I want to sell it for twelve hundred dollars this is something that's in perfect shape um, if I want to sell it for twelve hundred dollars regardless of how much I have in it um, if I put it out for sale and I and I have maybe let's yeah I better talk about how much I have in it if I buy it a mower for five hundred dollars or I have five hundred dollars invested in the mower with repairs and everything else, the purchase and the repairs. And I want to sell it for what I think is a fair price, and it's $1,200. Um, 
for that specific one that I've got in mind because I actually did this. I know that my low price for that should be maybe $900. That's probably the, the lowest I would sell it for if it had been in my yard and I've been putting it out for sale, bringing it back in at night, putting it out for sale, bringing it back in at night. Guy talking, you know, I got to talk to this guy. Then, you know, somebody's knocking on my door, you know, another day later. And they want to start it up and hear it. And, okay, maybe I'll be back. Let me talk to my wife. The wives are saying, let me go talk to my husband, whatever. All that time that I have going back and forth and dealing with this mower that I want 1200 for, that I have 500 invested, uh, if somebody comes the very first day, they pull in, they have a truck, and they say, I'll give you 800 cash right now, that would be sold. That would be sold immediately. Even though it's $100 less than what I just said my lowest offer that I would accept uh, was, um, I just saved myself all that time and headache and everything else of what I just mentioned, showing it, all that crap. So that's what we do. That That's what I do. So at, the longer something's here is doesn't necessarily mean that I want to sell it for the lowest price because it's still here. Because I would, I'd rather just sit on it at some point because I've got to recoup all that time that I have invested putting it out, bringing it back, showing it, talking about it, you know, again, dealing with all the headaches of now the wife is here, you know, and she's wanting to get her husband, and then he comes later, all that stuff. So you got to remember, again, your time's worth money, and you may not want to uh, just uh, hold true to a, a, that hard bottom dollar price on the very first day or even the first couple days because it'll be gone, it'll be out of your hair, you have that money now to do whatever you want. And in my case, I would reinvest it back into what I was doing, you know, at the shop here. That especially if I was getting ready to go to auction, uh, I would sell it for that lower price than what my rock bottom price was. Hey Shrags. Oh, you're covered? No, our campers. Oh no, no, no our campers not covered. It we, was it was uncovered the day we did the video. Did the video. Yeah, we just we wanted to put it on for the for the video and just just see what it was like. Yeah, <laughs> imagine it being covered, and we accidentally put the slide out. Not thinking about it. <laughs> well, that stretched that cover. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We we um, we almost okay. I guess let's talk about that. So for Heidi's birthday, I asked her, I said, did you want to go camping? She's got five days off here. How many days you still got left? Oh, uh, this is... Still three. Yeah. So... The rest of the day, Sunday, Monday. Yeah. So we, uh, we had time. She had time off. And we were thinking about actually going to do a trip. We didn't know where. Uh, we talked about... Um, well, matter of fact, the Shrags. Since they were down at Atwood, I kind of liked the way the park looked. We were thinking about going to Atwood. Uh, we thought about going to Putin Bay. We thought about going to Kelly's Island. Um, we thought about going to East Harbor. We thought about going to Pima Tumi. I mean, I looked at all this stuff, and uh, the only place that had full hookups, which we would really want to do, uh, was Kelly's Island. And uh, just the RV going over one way is like $75, and uh, we could have done it. I mean, it wouldn't have been a big deal. But then I looked at Kelly Island, and it's definitely not Putin Bay. You know, it's definitely not South Bass Island. So then I thought, okay, maybe we'll go there. Anyways, we, we had a lot of options. We thought about going out and seeing Greg and Karen for a few days. Then we thought about going out to Jellystone and Hartville because my, my dad and my stepmom live in Hartville. And I'm glad we didn't go, though, because they were... They're in they're, they, yeah, they were in Florida. <laughs> so anyways, yeah, we was, we was going to go out there. Um, I'm question what was the worst of this coming days you had to do. <laughs> okay. Uh, so that was, that was, uh, up in the air. That's kind of what I was thinking because the weather was going to be pleasant. 
other than what we're experiencing now, this rain. We knew this was coming. But as far as camping, I don't mind rain, and it's not too terribly cold. Uh, it is chilly, though. So I asked Heidi, I said, hey, what would you like to do, you know, for... And she immediately says, you know what, I wouldn't mind going down the Mountaineer. And I said, well, if we go to Mountaineer, you know how that is. I said, it's going to cost us X amount of dollars for gambling, um, which we, we're not gamblers. We, we enjoy doing it maybe... Uh, we're more frequent than ever, so twice, a, tw three times a year, about three times a year, yeah, about three times a year we'll go gambling. I'm talking about the whole calendar year. Three times we may go gambling, and we don't normally spend hardly anything really. What we like to do is just make a whole night of it. We'll get a hotel room close to the, like if we go over to Hollywood Gaming, which is over in the Austin Town area here, uh, we get a hotel room, we uh, catch the shuttle. Uh, we go over to the casino, we might gamble a little bit, we'll, we'll have dinner up at the Skybox, uh, if they got live bands, we'll sit and listen to live bands, we'll have drinks, um, we'll gamble a little bit more, then we come back to, to the room, we might order some, some food in, or, or something like that, um, and they're, within walking distance, there's a Cracker Barrel, and there's a Quaker Steak and Lube, so, a lot of, a lot of things yeah, do. so, that's kind of like we just make a whole night out of it, you know, out of the whole thing. But Mountaineer, they have, uh, uh, they're under one roof. There's a hotel there. They have like four, three restaurants and uh, then a, a buffet. Um, and a bar. Yeah, they have a spa. Of course, you know, they got horse racing there. They've got, you know, full blown, you know, craps and everything else. I mean, it's a full blown casino. So I told her, I said, well, if we go down there, you know, the rooms are like $174 for, a, you know, a night for just the king. It's nothing special, just the king bed. And I told her, I said, I don't know if I want to spend that much again. And then it just kind of clicked in my head. It's like, you know what? I asked her what she wanted to do for her birthday. She told me, and then I'm still giving her 20 different reasons why we shouldn't go. <laughs> so I backtracked, and I decided, you know what? Maybe, maybe we won't go on Friday. Let me see if it's, you know, a little bit cheaper. So... We we went uh, and they have a special because it's so slow on like Wednesdays and Thursdays. Um, the rooms are like with taxes and everything. It's like eighty eight bucks. So we went ahead and did that. Now as far as they get you other ways, obviously, <laughs> and as far as the gambling part, I just you know it's Heidi's night out, so I just kept on handing her money. <laughs> we didn't win anything, but we had a great time. We did have a good time. It was probably the best. It was one of the best times that we've ever had gambling. It wasn't too busy. It was just everything. Yeah. Except for the, in, it's in West Virginia. If you guys don't know where Mountaineer Casino is, it is in West Virginia. And West Virginia allows smoking in yeah. the buildings. And Even though I'm a smoker, it was rough. It's real rough. I, it was rough. Don't get me wrong. They have, they must have some incredible ventilation and, and stuff going on there. But you can still tell it's a, a smoking place. Mm -hmm. Okay, so as I was talking, someone had asked uh, a question. Whoops, not touch screen. Why do I keep on doing that? <laughs> um, what our worst, best and worst camping yeah. was? Was that what it was? Yeah. I have a question. What was the worst and best? This is mobile homestead RV. What was the worst and best camping days you have? And I can't finish it out. What you have had. What? What was the best and what was the worst and best camping days you have had so far? Uh, going back or what's a tough one? A lot of it was circumstantial, and what we had it was equipment wise. The tent when it rained. The truck on the coil spring or the leaf shack. Bro I didn't yeah. really. That wasn't a bad. No. But yeah. Um, we didn't have, we haven't had a bad trip. Yeah, we had some of them that were just a little bit more, had stuff going on than others. The rain one. The uh, rain with a pop-up was our, Apache our leaky. Apache Guilford. Yeah. Yeah, we went to, I we got our Apache pop-up, and I'd done a bunch of repairs on that. If you don't know what the, the Apaches are, they're hard-sided pop-ups. They have no canvas. However, they have this plastic that is on the ends, the bed ends, and the plastic, they have this cold welding process that's needed 
to repair any cracks in that. And I did all kinds of repairs on that thing to fix it. And I neglected to check the windows, where the windows mount. And the windows basically, there's a cutout in that plastic and the windows are metal framed and they sandwich the plastic. Well, I didn't check and here that plastic was cracked all along. So we went on our first, that was our first camping trip with that, wasn't it? First or second. Or no, we went to West Branch first. Yeah, I think it was our second one. Uh, then we went to Guilford and it was with the kids and it rained and rained and rained. Now, the very first thing, it was a good day because we didn't have a tent. However, it was bad because it rained and we, we were all in that little pop up, but we could have all been in that little tent. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, uh, the it was windows leaked. It was raining worse than this, and it just wouldn't stop. Yeah, it just kept on going. just kept on raining. Now, oh. as far as our best, uh, still, it's hard to beat. I, we, uh, I'm still going to have to say our Florida trip was right up there with one of our best. Tennessee and, was pretty nice. Uh, Tennessee was great, except we should have only been there one, two days. <laughs> two days. Well, I'll give it two days. <laughs> Because uh, after that, it's like, all right, seen everything. Yeah. Florida, the I still liked Florida for a bunch of different reasons and a different, much different locations. Um, Didn't really get to enjoy. Mormon Beach. Yes. That that, that location, yeah. I, I think that's got to be the best one. Mm -hmm. It was. I mean, you park your RV in this. The the campsites are so small and tiny. It's it's not. They're not big at all. But it don't make a difference because you lock up your RV, you're in your swim trunks, you don't have to have shoes, you don't nothing. 20 feet, you're You just the walk, ocean. yeah, just walk right to the beach. You don't have to cross a road, nothing. Yeah, that's, uh, that was definitely the nicest. Mike, I have a question with the same truck, but I only have three leaf springs, unlike yours. Yeah, I have the, I have the 10,000 GVW package. I have a huge yellow, yeah, it's the bump stop. Um, no, I have the, uh, I have the, no, I have the bump stop. I have those rubber stoppers. Oh, you did. They're there. I don't know. Maybe I just didn't show them in the, in the thing. They're there. Cause I always spray them when I go to the car wash, make sure they stay bright yellow. <laughs> um, yeah, that's, uh, th that spring that you are missing is an overload spring and it's, uh, my window sticker said. 10,000 GVW. Oh, wonder. Oh, I also have, I'm sorry. Yeah, I also have, have a, the camper package. Yeah. We are, my truck, the truck is rated to handle because I guess you, the trucks are supposed to be rated for slide in campers, you know, like the Lance campers or whatever, the ones that slide in the bed. Um, that gives me a sway bar or an, yeah, an anti sway bar on the back, um, which is underneath the, the, the axle. And, um, the overload spring then i thought that was part of the 10,000 gbw package but it must be part of the camper package you have the camper package and the snowplow package wow. well, i'm sure there's something that hmm that's odd i thought you had a heavy duty 2500 no that what, that's a shit i mean uh, 250 that's what I meant to say. Hey, I work with cars all day. I had a 97 oh, heavy I, duty. Well, I didn't know. No. They still make HDs for everything now. No, those are super duties. I'm sure they don't make an you HD. You have a super, super duty. duty. Right. The um, in your door jam. Right, you, Xbox. The trucks do have million packages. Yeah. but You I, could have 15 things and they leave off one. You're absolutely right. Yes, I know that the F-250 is, they're all super duties nowadays. I'm going to look real quick to make sure that, whoops, that's wrong, F-250. I take all kinds of pictures of my trucks and decals and whatever I run into, and I save it to my Google Drive, so if I ever have to refer to anything. So the door tag on the new truck, your GVWR, um, I'm guessing it says 10,000 pounds because that's I mean that's what mine says other than that I don't know what else 
could be there. My front uh, gross axle weight rating is 5,600 pounds, and the rear gross axle weight rating is 6,340 pounds. Mm -hmm. He's getting a picture. <laughs> <laughs> so much for laying in bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, the new Silverado HD, the 2,500. Yeah, they're not. I don't like them. Yeah, he's gonna go out and get wet. <laughs> yeah, because it's pouring. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what the deal is there. We knew it was coming. Now I know that the unfortunately I've done everything I could. I can make, and I want you guys to chime in where you think uh, what you think on this. Um, our audio is always we're, we're going to try to stick with wireless audio, but I debated for a long time tonight if I wanted to bring out my other laptop which is out here anyways and go ahead and run the OBS uh, platform and run our we have a real nice 4k handy cam it's like a it's what thirteen hundred dollar handy cam that gives us a really good picture and whenever I use that encoding through OBS we can actually get 1080 60 frames per second you won't get all this stuff that's going on. If you guys watch your screen, you're going to see it flashing and doing all kinds of stuff. I've locked my phone as best I can as far as the the picture. I've zoomed in on it, you know, and I, I clicked on something to try to hold it. But it still tries to auto-adjust all the time. you just seen it do it there, uh, or I've just seen it. I'm a little bit on the lag side there, but... Um, Tell me if that bugs you guys, because right now you're not seeing it. You're seeing us in HD, but you're only seeing us in 720. That's all the better that YouTube will allow on our phone. I don't, and I'm sure that's with a lot of others too. Our internet speed I'm currently using, just so I had a little bit better range. Our Wi-Fi Ranger on the the camper connected to our home router. Um, I should say, I'm sorry. Our yeah, our home router. Why, why am I having a hard time with that? Yeah, router. <laughs> I wanted to say modem real bad. But is this acceptable? I mean, is, is the quality acceptable? Usually people will will deal with crappier pictures. Looks okay for a live stream. Yeah, it's... I can do better. I mean, the thing is, is if I use that OBS Studio, you guys will be seeing 1080, 60 frames per second. Right now you're seeing 720 at 30 frames per second. Hey, so Xbox, you might be hearing rain, yeah, there's not so much static. As far as movement in that, you want to get a, you know, a blurry action when I'm doing this with my hands, and it would be more crisp, you know, be more sports-oriented. The 30 frames per second helps with the low lighting a little bit, but very little. It's just, it's long, okay, as long as it looks good, I, I just hate it. I, I wish they would get that. I think it looks fixed. all right. It's not blurry. Yeah, anything. you're right, Robert. The connection speed does, uh, but our upload uh, speeds are, they say you got to be above 6 megabit per second, somewhere around there, and we're well above that. We're we're closer to, I think, like 13, somewhere in that range on our upload. So we're well above it. It's just they restricted. I went through and looked for close to 45 minutes today trying to find somebody that might have a way to get around it. And, and we know we have in the past used OBS and done 1080, 60 frames per second streams and we never had any problem. It's just, it's a whole different setup. We got to have the laptop. We have to stream through the laptop and we're willing to do it. I just wanted to know if you guys thought it was worth it. <laughs> Donate planting trees or I'll eat you alive. Have you donated <laughs> yet to Mr. Beast for the trees? We're actually thinking about post putting the, a link on our channel here for that. Um, yeah, there's a lot of... Uh, the thing is, I belong to the Arbor Day Association. I mean, I've already... Our trees that I mow around all the time in our backyard, that's all Arbor Day trees. We've We bought... I don't know how many Arbor Day trees that we planted all along our, our fence line. They all died. I'm not sure why. Arbor Day was real good about it. They they refunded us, which I didn't really care about the refund so much. I wanted trees that were going to work, and they they didn't apparently they didn't want to send us another group. Because I just told them, just send us 
all new trees so we can plant them and for some reason they said they couldn't I'm not sure why but I uh, like I said we belong to Arbor Day here we've been belong to Arbor Day for a long time and he soaked <laughs> so he's front 5600 rear 6340 I think that's what I mine was yeah my front is uh, 5600 what's this yeah and the rear 6340 and my rear 6340 I don't know why you don't have that overload spring you have an extra extra heavy duty alternator yeah <laughs> that's part of the camper package oh well, I think it's part of the no that's part of the snow plow package yeah wonder if it's because you have a short bed a crew cab short bed or no he has an extended cab short bed right Maybe it's because he has a short bed. I don't know why. I can't think of why. Maybe it's because you have the short bed. What's it going in the shop for? Is it broke already? How about ours? Are you going to the shop same reason we, we need to go to the shop? Is that recall? <laughs> we haven't done the recall. <laughs> yep, snowplow package. Oil change and recall. I did. Oh, listen, John. Before you do the oil change, uh, take it in to do the oil change. You should do it yourself. I am telling you, I've never done an oil change on a simpler vehicle ever. It is so easy. It's incredibly easy. Very, very easy. The dr you don't even have to move the drain pan whenever the oil's draining out of the oil pan to to get, catch the drippings from the oil filter. It's just that close. You just have to have the pan that's about so big. It is so easy to do. He said, okay, you sold me. I'm telling you, it's really easy. <laughs> and if you want, I mean, as far as the filter and that, I, I've, I'm telling you, the Heidi's got uh, those Boss filters at her work, the Pure Later Boss. I watched YouTube. I watched a guy go through and cut open a whole bunch of filters. I don't know how many years ago that was. And um, I'm sold on those Boss Purilators. They are very heavy when you get them. You just you can put them in your hand. You can tell right away. But the guy cut it open. It's got all real nice pleating inside. All the pleats are equally spaced. They're not paper. They've got good mesh on them. They're just really well designed. And uh, as far as the oil, I'm definitely sold on that Rotella gas uh, that she sold. Rotella, you know, Rotella's been making diesel oil for a long time. And uh, they are experts in it, that's for sure, for diesels. And they just started with a truck formulated only. It's a truck. Uh, red bottle. Yeah, red bottle. It's, it's oil for truck hauling, towing, gas engines. They just It just started this year. It's brand new, and it's really, really decent. Uh, I got to see them. I could talk, we could talk about Fords and everything else. Hmm. Um. Yeah, we. You, hey, Jeff, are you Debbie's husband? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> you don't know that. Oh, yeah, I do, because his name's not Coleman. Jeff, her last name's Coleman. Oh, that's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah, Jeff, uh, the Rivian, the Tesla. Show me. Show me the money. <laughs> oh, and your trooper, yeah. Yeah, Rotella. It's Rotella. Rotella gas. Yep. Advanced Auto Parts has it. I don't know if anybody else does, but she definitely has it. The um, that that Rivian and the Tesla. I just need to see them. I mean, they talk about it. I mean, just like Ford, they showed that electric Ford truck that they had pulling this that locomotive with all those cars, and it's like, what? Where's the truck? You know, I need more details on it. Everybody's trying to rush to get it to, into production. Um, we'll see. I I. And then the very first thing out of my mouth after that, as soon as I see them, everybody's, this is what everybody's going to look for. What can it tow? And the very next thing, what's the range? That's all they're going to want to know is the range. And I still don't know if they can do it yet. However, with a truck, you have such a huge platform mm. that you could put so many batteries in there. I'd like to see that. Ironic to use Rotella gas in a rotary tiller. <laughs> I 
I've been using the T6 diesel. Yep. Shell gas rewards. Uh, you know, we we do, uh, when we're traveling, we have uh, Good Sam's Club, if you guys haven't signed up for that. And we have a Pilot Flying J card. Um, so, I, you know, I can just charge my gas. You get a discount at the pumps at Pilot and Flying J's while you're out on the road. Um, and it's okay. We also have, because we shop at Giant Eagle, we also have Get Go, which we get money off of that when we go shopping, um, which we haven't been doing that as much as we used to. Uh, the Shell, we have a discount through T-Mobile. Almost can, every Tuesday. Yeah, every Tuesday we can go and get 10 cents off mm -hmm. a gallon if we go. We, we don't really utilize it that much. Mm -hmm. I We should. The thing is, I haven't really been driving my you know, you think if we since we have a new truck and we want to go take it places and go, you know, and I drive it and we take it on trips and stuff like that. I mean, we just went to, you know, Myrtle Beach and back, and still I'm like 9,600 miles, and we've had it now a year in just a just a sh few days. Yeah. In just a few days here, we'll have had it a year, and we'd even break 10,000 miles this year. So. That's good. We need to save them. Yeah, we do need to save them. <laughs> So, um, the other thing, talking about, we were kind of excited. When we were at the Hershey RV show, uh, we do belong to the Good Sam's Club. And we've been happy with Good Sam's. Now, we don't do the roadside assistance because Good Sam's roadside assistance, if you break down, they will tow you any amount of mileage they have to. It could be a thousand miles that they have to tow you as long as they're towing you to the the closest repair shop. repair shop that can actually handle your repair on your rig. Now, there's two things that are wrong with that. Number one, if I'm 10 miles away from here at a campground and for whatever reason my truck broke down, they're not going to tow it 10 miles to my house. They're going to tow it 30 miles to a repair shop. I, I can fix whatever at the house. Just get me back to the house. That's all I want. They're not going to do that. They're going to tow it to a repair shop. That's number one. Number two, I had heard that uh, for good Sam's, and this is this goes along with others too, believe it or not. Um, I heard that also that they may tow it to a repair shop, and if that repair shop ends up not being able to repair it for whatever reason, then they'll tow it to the next repair shop, which is fine if I'm out in the middle of nowhere. But being close to home, the last thing I want to do is have my trailer that I can fix for a lot cheaper than a shop can, uh, I want it towed home, and they won't do it. They will not do it. I could, I could break down at this intersection and say that's my house right there, and they will tow it still somewhere else. So, um, other than Good Sam's, just the regular club membership, which we get discounts at campgrounds and that. Um, we also just recently joined uh, and got our plaque, our. Uh, FMCA. Now, if you don't, you guys don't know, Family Motor Coach Association has been around a long time, and uh, they have benefits. Uh, and the main reason I signed up with them is you get discounts on Michelin tires, and I'm wanting to get Michelins for the truck eventually. But uh, when we were at Hershey, they had a, an introductory thing, so we went ahead and did it. So this is our our coach number. We're going to put this on our RV eventually. If you guys look into that, if you, I'll tell you what, if you decide you want to sign up with that, let us know. Because I think we can give you a, a code or something mm -hmm. that they'll, I don't know how that, I don't know if it, it, it's supposed to, I don't know if they get a discount and then we get yeah, some kind of kickback in the or something. Book. We didn't really read through it too much. We, I, to be honest with you, I was kind of a kid and I wanted that plaque real bad for my RV. <laughs> And I hope he don't think he's going to screw it on. No, I'm not going to screw it on there. <laughs> <laughs> Heidi said, no screwing. <laughs> so I, I, we signed up for that, and it's really cool that we got that in the mail the other day. I had, uh, unfortunately, yeah, we have AAA. We've had AAA since 90, 90? No, before... Oh, I've before, had it. I have had it since, like, 87. Yeah. Yeah, she's had, she had AAA when we, first, when we first started dating. And then I got AAA 
uh, after we we got married, we we got AAA, and we've had AAA ever since. Um, our son's still on our AAA, but that's it. How are you going to attach it? Uh, probably double sided adhesive, I guess. That's all I could think. Double sided adhesive. Talk about your full time timeline, please. It's coming up close. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, the uh, it's coming up close. Ah, uh, thanks. High mile per hour. Thank Dang. you. Got a birthday. <laughs> awesome. High mile per hour. Thanks for the super chat. Really appreciate it. Heidi appreciate it. That'd be her birthday. That's her birthday gift. It's all her birthday stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think we should play a game for every sentence. For Mike, Heidi has to take a shot. I already had a drink before. Yeah, she had a drink. We started this, so maybe that's why I've probably said more than ten words. Yeah, I told her. I said you definitely need to drink before we. I said you get awful chatty whenever you drink. <laughs> um, slap. <laughs> well, it's not so much that you need the plaque on your <laughs> on your semi. It's uh, you need to uh, just have your membership, and you got to go through some kind of. There's a couple hoops that you got to jump through to get your discounted price. I don't know what exactly. What's it is. my most memorable birthday? Probably memorable, not that it was good. Not when I've been around. When I was 18. See. Okay. <laughs> and uh, my grandmother went into a nursing home. Yeah. Yep. So. Uh, as far as giving an update on your full, I want to go back to that. Talk about your full time timeline. Uh, Heidi and I was just talking about it the other day, and I don't know if you guys realize it, but basically, when we get to next March, right or April, yeah, we have how long left? A year and a half. I'm pretty sure next March or April, we only have a year and a half to be done. It's something like that. And it, it's funny because now we're moving more than we have been. As far as inside, that's why our house is a disaster inside. Heidi's been cleaning. And unfortunately, our timelines, we're seeing more, we're realizing we got to do more stuff than what we thought originally. <laughs> such as when you move all the furniture away from the walls, since our walls are real light in our living room, you can see where the furniture was and, <laughs> and stuff like that on the walls. So now we're like, oh, good. We get to repaint How all of this I... over again. Yes, real exciting. Yeah, and then we're seeing the carpet, and it's like, ah, we might have to do something with the carpet. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's uh, a year and a half, and uh, we will not go past that. I, I'll make that statement. You guys can give me all kinds of crap if something happens. And uh, we don't make it, but I feel as if a year and a half has got to be right. And I don't know what it's going to look like, you know, uh, uh, whenever we do leave. I don't know what's what that day is going to look like. I don't know if um, we're going to have stuff in storage, if we're going to be moving into a campground that's local, if Heidi's going to still be working for the time being. Um, I, I don't know, but... It, that's what it's going to happen. That's, we just know it. Um, Heidi's just hanging on because the longer she works, <laughs> the, the more money it's just coming in. And it makes yeah. it a lot easier. Plus, with my income, it's, it, you know, there's ebb and flow that's happening, and I've got to plan accordingly, and we're, we're seeing that. Um, we had some really good months like three or four months in a row. I mean, very good, extremely comfortable months in a row. I think it's been about four months that the the amount of money that, that has been generated is just fine. We, are, we would do more than fine on the road. However, now the downturn is starting like it does every year, and I've got to see how far that drops. And, I mean, there's some eye-opening... I mean, it, it just drops, and there's some eye-opening stuff that happens. Like, wow, I don't know. I don't know how things would be pretty tight. But if we can find out what the average is and know that when we get above the average to bank it, and when we get below the average, dip into it, um, you know, that that's, we just got to find what that is right now. 
it, we're, we're, we're moving along pretty good here. Um, of course, uh, when we leave, we'll, we'll be debt free. I mean, there's that we, we have a plan for that. Uh, I know a lot of people are always curious about that stuff, but we're, we definitely are going to be debt free. It's, it's not an issue. Um, I can't, the only thing that we would have is just our, you know, our cell phone. We'll have to bump up our, even though I'll lose my home internet that I'm paying for my home internet now, I'll apply that money towards our data, our cell phone data. Um, we will be investing in probably, you know, some sort of a unlimited Wi-Fi system that's other than what we currently have. So there's a lot out there. There's a lot of uh, options still that we have to look into. Um, but, you know, it's not, it's, it's not like just walking out of the house and turning off a light switch and then realizing, oh, I got to go back into the house. I mean, it's more like walking out of the house and disconnecting the power lines from the home. Uh, so this, and that's an analogy for everything. And I, what I'm saying is like, I would be selling so much stuff, you know, that I, we couldn't operate at the house here because now I have no riding lawnmower. Now I have no plow tractor. Now I have no air compressor. Now I have no welder. Um, you know, most of my bigger tools are gone. Uh, so when all that stuff is gone, you know, I have now made a commitment that makes it to where it's damn near impossible to go back into the house and live for another year. <laughs> I mean, immediately, what am I going to do? I got to go buy a riding mower again. And I, you know, start all that process over. Same with our, you know, our like our freezer that's downstairs. You know, just little stuff, just stuff in general. We're we're going to have to clean house. So, it, whenever we have a sale, there's only so much we can sell, <laughs> and we don't want to sell all the good stuff, and then have all this other stuff that may not sell because it's all the good stuff isn't attracting everybody in we just have you know a few things and i and i say that and it really it's not that it's good stuff or bad stuff it's just different stuff i mean like furniture it'd be real easy for us to get rid of our our two recliners if we're having a yard sale and i'm selling all these tools and like i said uh, you know outdoor power equipment and um uh, you know, chest freezers and, uh, you know, other nice furniture. Uh, but if I'm only selling a few knickknacks and two recliners, you know, good luck getting rid of them. <laughs> you know, there's no traffic. So it's, it's, it's a fine line. I'm just trying to get rid of all the little stuff that we don't have to worry. I mean, some of the stuff I'm just plain just thrown away. Yeah. And, and we've still debated especially more recently if you guys haven't had a chance to to watch on the, it's on amazon prime it's on prime video um there's a thing called uh, flea market fanatics just look it up flea market fanatics uh and that's roger's flea market that's the flea market we go to we went we did a video on it a few years back we went to it we always go to roger's it's a good flea market um, we thought about that we thought about going to the flea market and just selling everything there. Um, but we have such a good location here, we really don't need to go down there. We have all kinds of traffic driving by. So um, the other thing we talked about is doing uh, an estate sale to where the home and all the contents you know, are sold all at once by a, an auctioneer or whatever, and they get their cut but again, that auctioneer, there's only so much traffic. It, we're in such a good location, we don't really need that kind of advertising necessarily to sell our stuff. It'd be nice. <laughs> Listen to the water roll off our, our awning topper. Um, I still got to tighten that up. It kind of bellows in and then it dumps. But anyways, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of hard to, to say what what we're going to do there i we haven't we, we've talked about it but we don't know <laughs> roger sale oh so pickle 85 uh you you're close are you from this area
contingency funds appear to be what a lot of full-timers talk about when it comes to budgeting. Yeah. Yeah, the contingency, I, I, I mean, there's mm. there's definitely a bank. <laughs> cool. We, I, I like it whenever we have, you know, I like it both equally. I like whenever we have people that are out there and then people that are real close to. <laughs> Listen, um, it's Petersburg. Yeah, we probably had it. Right next to Petersburg. Hmm. Sounds familiar. Something else we I wanted to mention to you guys while we have everybody here. Heidi's going to put the link on this video, and it'll probably start showing up on all the videos from this point on. Oh, okay. Right. I'm out. I, oh. We've probably driven through there. Through yeah, there. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, they are close. Um, yeah, we had to drive through there. Hell, we just went through there the other day. Mm -hmm. uh, what was I saying? Oh, <laughs> everybody's waiting for what I'm saying now. Mm -hmm. We had a lot of requests. T-shirts. T-shirts, caps, I don't know, coffee mug. That was Heidi's doing. I didn't do any of that. Uh, she has a, a site. There's a site you guys can go order whatever you feel like. We had people ask, and I told her I don't even know how to do that, and I just let her handle it. Um, and we're going to add some different designs. Uh, that'll be coming up. I've got an idea about a design that I want to do. i got to get with my daughter, though. Here, I'll let water come off again. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> wow. That's a lot. I know you guys can't hear it, but the awning uh, topper... Uh, for the slide, the slide topper, the awning, the uh, the tension isn't great enough, so whenever it rains, it bellows, it it fills that thing. Now, of course, it ain't gonna leak in, but nonetheless, I should have it tightened. So whenever the water gets real heavy on there, um, eventually, um, if the wind blows, it just all runs off at once, and I can hear it running down the window here. <laughs> so yeah, we'll um. We drove through there coming and going in Indiana right near I-76. Probably when we go through the smaller towns, we don't necessarily... Well, I get to see it now because it's driving me crazy. I'm actually two miles north of the turnpike here in Pennsylvania, but I'm like five minutes from the Ohio line. Yeah. Yep, Peters. we're pretty close to PA and West Virginia. Not that close, but... Oh, they're only 24 miles. Yeah. Oh, we definitely drove through there. That was... Um, didn't I just go through there the other day? Well, we've been in Boardman a couple times. Yeah, but they are... Clean those window channels. <laughs> <laughs> the only We only have the window channels in the end. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, I cleaned them. Yeah, you know where they're close to? What, what's the deal? Oh, no, no. That, that's They're out further than that. I had to look at it on the map, though. It's been... Oh, they are... They're... I'm trying to find a reference that I can use. And that is... Good old 11. <laughs> There's 7. Oh, you know where they're real close to? How close are you guys to... Um... Feasels. Oh, yeah. I used to go out to Feasels. That seems familiar. Medford, Oregon. Hello, Oregon. You guys, is it kind of cold out there in Oregon? Yes, I'm very close. Yeah, I went out to Feasels when I had to rebuild my truck. <laughs> oh, you know the family. Oh, wow. Yeah, they've got they got a nice setup out there. Uh, if you guys don't know, Feasels is a uh, uh, a wrecking yard, and they've got a lot of stuff out there. Um, like I said, I rebuilt my truck, uh, my old F-150 uh, when it got totaled. Went out there and got a bed, got a door, got real good prices on everything. Weather's been great. That's good. That's good. I know that uh, you guys were in a weird weather pattern there, like we were, and we were all hot and drought and nothing, and I think out that way you guys were getting a lot of rain. 
Lots for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they were good price. Mike, we have a request. Will you do the opening of your channel live, please? The opening of your channel. Why? What is it? Live. What? Opening of your channel live. Oh. The line that you say. <laughs> Oh, I don't that's know if funny. I can do that again. <laughs> I said that was like a one-time thing I just did together. Oh, that uh, was funny. I don't remember how I did. What, uh, what have you been up to? What did you can't see your birthday yesterday. Yeah. What <laughs> have right. you been up to? Yeah. It was... <laughs> and uh, I'd, I'd have to hear it again to know how high-pitched I did it. What have you been <laughs> up to? Right? I wasn't here. Yeah, I know. It wasn't here. I just <laughs> sat down and I'm like, what am I going to say? So it was... Uh, what have you been up to? I've been riding on a daydream. <laughs> and that was it. I pushed the stop button and that was all. <laughs> well, that's funny. Uh, I did it in Wisconsin. <laughs> hey, Big Mike's here. Yeah, I don't understand how that notification thought. I thought it was Bugs Bunny. <laughs> yeah, it is funny. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, I, no, I, I uh, literally, guys, I, I, I needed something to put in there, and I, I had a Zoom, which it's somewhere. I've got my audio equipment in here, and I have my Zoom mic, and I just turned it on, and I don't know, I just that's just what came out of my mouth at the time. I don't even know what I was doing, and, <laughs> and I can't remember who I was talking to, and they said, "Oh my God, that was you." <laughs> so yeah, I was me. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> Love your videos. Great. Not birthdays anymore. Too damn old. <laughs> Boy, we've seen uh, you guys uh, that are in this area. We went out to uh, Warren today, just briefly, um, for a few hours to see our grandson. And Boy, there was a bad accident on I-76 right at 534. Mm -hmm. A car clipped the truck and went in the median. And, man, there wasn't much of that car left. I don't know what happened to anybody. We... WKBN had a, a, a news crew there, so it, it was it was pretty rough. WKBN's a, a Youngstown news channel station for you guys that are not in the area. You can jack involved, maybe. I'm not sure. I don't. I not don't tonight. remember. Yeah, not tonight. Yeah, definitely not tonight. I. Uh, I I didn't. Really I don't. Have I don't think so. It was during the day. I really didn't have a drink even. Even that's when we you were trying to figure out all this stuff for the channel. And yeah, yeah. I, I get. So. I have times that where I'm like, oh, I want to drink, and then I might want to drink again the next night, and then maybe on that weekend I want to drink, and then there's other times I just don't feel like drinking at all, and like Heidi's been off, and I we had it. We went to eat out one night. And I had one drink and or a double, and I wasn't really in the mood for it necessarily, one way or the other. We had a drink. We had drinks yesterday. We had we had drinks at was that yesterday at the hotel? Day, Day before. before yesterday, and I didn't even drink, but <sighs> I think maybe a shot, if it even yeah. that. I barely drank any. Heidi drank more than I did, <laughs> which is very odd. Matter of fact, she drank more than I did today. I didn't drink anything, and she drank something. I don't know. i, I got to be in the mood for it. and Sometimes I do. Sometimes I don't. I had no idea. <laughs> what the, yeah. It, I, I don't know. I thought it was... I, I never thought about it, really, until people okay. mentioned it. I can't, I, I can't remember who... There's a lot of people that's me about asked. That. Yeah. It's funny. Yeah, that that, uh, that would come from when I was in high school. Uh, a real good friend of mine, he used to, I, yeah, man, I'm Rufus Smith. He used to do this <laughs> funny voice. And it, he would, it, I don't know. So I would do it back to him and we would kid around about it. I didn't even think about it. And somehow that just came. What I wanted it was Heidi to say, what have you been up to? And, you know, kind of like in the sultry voice or something. And, she, of course, she was at work. She wasn't around. And I'm like, eh, I'll just, I've, i got to do a different voice. I gotta, can't have 
an ask and answer from the same voice, so. Teach mimosas with breakfast. Where were we at? That breakfast was... Virginia Beach? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, are you... Uh, hi, MPH. Are you near Virginia Beach or that part of that area? Are you near a coast? Are you, need, are you near an ocean coast? I want to know that. <laughs> because I have a theory about that. Just curious. I need, I need to get something to drink, but it's water. So, yeah, the, the site that she's going to put a link to, if you guys decide you want any of our apparel or anything like that, is called Teespring. Teespring. And it, you just go, I guess it's real easy. I don't understand it myself. I don't know how the whole process works, but go ahead and try it if you'd like. I'll try to get some different uh, designs on there, too. Galveston, but I'm in Houston. Yeah, well, <laughs> the thing that I've always noticed on all these, on every shore, ocean, beachfront, whatever, if you get kind of close to that, it seems like that their breakfast, they always have some sort of alcoholic, like, tropical breakfast of some kind yeah. with a drink um virginia beach kind of big. sealed it all off for me to made me realize holy cow this must be a thing because you know we're always you know myrtle beach surfside beach uh saint augustine ormond beach satellite right. beach that was the first place uh, vero beach and then we go over to fort myers uh and then up to uh, Treasure Island, oh, and it, every single time it seemed like that they had this breakfast thing with some sort of alcohol involved, and I thought, well, this must be a beach thing or something, because we don't have anything. Like, we There is no alcoholic <laughs> breakfast thing at all <laughs> No, because when you have alcohol here, you, get, you have alcohol to get drunk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, to forget where you live. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> I'd like uh, the black tee with a small logo on the left chest, maybe a large logo on the back. Yeah, Sully, I, I got a good, I, I've got an idea about a design that is going to be, it's going to have the small logo up front, and on the back we're going to have kind of a, a different look. It, I, I don't want to, I don't want to, say anything because I don't know how it's going to turn out, and I got to get hold of my daughter. Hey, Mercedes, are you watching? I, I haven't seen her. Well, um, she, maybe she hasn't said anything. Yeah. Mercedes, if you're watching, let us know. Uh, uh, just just say hey. <laughs> so anyways, I'm going to get hold of my daughter and have her talk with us. Have you ever thought about going on a trip to Anchors Down RV Resort in Dangerous, Tennessee? Um, if... <sighs> Would you do Tennessee again? Oh, I love Tennessee. It's beautiful. Well, well it okay, oh, I got state. that answer. It is absolutely a beautiful state. Uh, Solly, man, you are preaching to the choir. You're preaching to the choir. <laughs> Heidi has no problem wearing her full look. I have one of those shirts, just like she does. <laughs> I have two, and you only see me wear them like one time <laughs> because it's like, what the hell? It's like just All right, there. guys, I'll I'll. Get you fixed up. I can I, even I do want, that tomorrow. I, I agree. I want the small, and the reason is Sully's the same way as me. Um, I want something that kind of looks because he's fire department. That's the right, way it is. You right. know, they got their right. crest, and then they got you know their big whatever department FD and whatever you know right. NYFD or whoever. So yeah, I I agree. Um, what we want to do again, I don't want to I don't want to say anything yet because it might not turn out, but. I think I think it'd be kind of cool. I think it'll be more of a guy shirt. M m not necessarily. Heidi said she would like it too. We will trade you uh, shrimping. Oh, camping with the shrag shirts for two RV daydream shirts. That's Heidi. She doesn't know how. I don't know how all that works. You got to do all that. Yeah. <laughs> we don't. Do you have physical T-shirts? Do you have T-shirts that? I that, haven't ordered any T-shirts from them yet yeah neither I, I mean we will um yeah we haven't we haven't got any of our stuff yet 
I need to do more in Nashville next time instead of staying at the pricey yeah, KOA. Forget yeah, forget the pricey KOA. Stay at some cheap place so you can sightsee. I'm telling you what, the KOA, <laughs> especially in the in the summer season, all that means to me is kids on acid. Because there's just too many kids at KOA. I did, I, when did I become that grumpy old get-off-my-lawn man? Because, I don't know, just something about the kids. They're not my kids, and I don't want to hear them. I don't want them riding their bicycles around my truck. I don't want them riding through my campsite. <laughs> at 40, we all did. <laughs> yeah, we... KOA, well, we've only Marcus stayed... went there, too. We've only stayed in one KOA and... Wait till you wear black socks. Are you mm -hmm. I got some on. Black socks now? <laughs> <laughs> Not knee highs. We don't have knee highs. These are uh, little yeah. short ones. <laughs> yeah, 130 a night. It, that's... Wow, 130 a night. Holy God. That's about how much we paid in Myrtle Beach. No, 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 no. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, yeah, at a house. No, at the KOA. No, we didn't pay that much. There, yeah, did we? it was expensive because we were going to stay three nights and it was like four hundred dollars. What the hell were we thinking for? We that? didn't just for that. We stayed dinner? one night. <laughs> just for that dinner. Uh. New England winter crud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the black socks thing. Um, uh, it's kind of funny because maybe it's the black. Knee highs. Yeah, but, but our son wears those. Well, he yeah, he wears mid. Yeah, he wears he wears those black he wears black socks that I guess they're in style. I don't understand that. I remember when and you guys that are all our age will relate to this. We used to laugh at the post. Remember the postman had to wear black socks, knee high socks, oh, and shorts, tall ones with sandals. Yeah, Wait, that won't be. That won't be him. He won't even wear sandals. Yeah, I, I can't. I can't wear sandals. Or flip flops. I wear or... those. Uh, well, they are sandals, but they're they're not shoes. I don't know what they call them. Those they're slip on shoes. Yeah, those snooks. I wear those all the time. Crocs. Crocs. Oh my god. Oh, mm -hmm. I, I can I can top your Crocs. I remember when I was in fourth grade band. Our band teacher used to come to school in his clogs. <laughs> Oh, Aww, thank you, thank sir. Thank you. Look at that, another birthday gift. Spencer and Gina. Gina. Jenna. Jenna. Spencer and Jenna, 88 Ford for life. That's uh, our son's 87 Ford. No, <laughs> or is it an 88? 88? Yeah, that's right. It is an 88. I forgot about that. But yeah, he had clogs. He would come to band, practice in clogs, you know, give us our lessons. Um, I seen him years later at a band competition. Um I was in concert band, not in marching band. She was in marching band and concert band. Our school, you had concert and marching. It was separate. Anyways, whenever we went to our concert band uh, state competition, um, he was there. And I was, a, uh, I was a sophomore then, I think. Maybe a freshman. And he still, he was wearing clogs. <laughs> I mean, this was in the 80s. He still had clogs. I couldn't oh, believe it. Oh, my gosh. Nice guy. Nice guy. Kids over annoying, yes. <laughs> I'll tell you what. No, I think, I mean, a lot of that is if, if our kids oh. were small, we wouldn't think Gil, anything. Gil gave you a happy birthday. Yeah. Oh. Um, if uh, we had kids in the KOA, it wouldn't be. Slimy socks. It wouldn't be um, a big deal. But now that we don't have kids in tow, we don't need to. Yeah, oh, where there's I see that kids. big blob thing, and I'm like, whatever. I want to go stab it, cut it, <laughs> make it. Fun. I want to jump on it. <laughs> I don't want to destroy it. Uh... <laughs> yeah, I, I have to say that um, uh, when we went up with the Shrags to uh, Wisconsin Dells, I wish the camp. I didn't. I wish the campground was somewhere else. I I don't know why. I just wish it was somewhere else. However, the fact that it was adult, we could be a little loud, you could drink, you could have your drinks out in the open, you could stay up a little bit later, the music could be a little louder, there were no kids allowed. Man, I signed me up for more of those. The problem is, every time we look at adult only, um, uh, the, uh, uh, how many times we've looked at them in Florida, I'm like, oh, here's a nice adult park, it looks at a clothing optional. <laughs> Oh well, I don't think I'm ready for that. <laughs> let's go. 
Let's go to the next one. <laughs> mm, that's funny. Yeah, those shoes were loud. If I bounced on it, I would pop it. I oh. probably would too. I wonder if they got some kind of weight limit. Hey, Herbie. That's okay. You not late at all. Watch all your been a couple years now. One of our favorite. We both enjoy. Thanks for all the videos. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Appreciate it. Anytime. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, some of our. Uh, sometimes when we're doing the videos, I. I sorry. No, I'm sorry, Red stale. Jaguar. The, the the streets are bad tonight. Go Bills. Are the Bills doing well? Or I haven't been paying attention. You definitely ain't saying go Browns. Hey guys. Listen, I'm I'm not a big I'm a I'm a bandwagon fan. I really get behind teams that do a lot of winning. Um, I I like the Browns. You know they're they kind of are been our team for a long time. I used to love the Dolphins years ago. I grew up in Florida. Um, it's funny. I, we was just talking about this. Um, I have a I've I've got a connection sort of with Dolphins on some level. I'll tell you about that in a second, but. Getting back to my more recent point that I was just trying to make. If you guys have a chance tomorrow, tomorrow's Sunday, it's 4 o'clock Eastern time, I think. You guys got to watch the Browns football game because the Browns are struggling so bad. And holy cow, they're playing the Patriots. Oh, <laughs> We're wow. undefeated, and it's going to be a bloodbath, I have a feeling. If they have some way of, I don't know what they're going to do. If they win, it's going to be like the biggest bookie upset in the world. I mean, there's going to be people going broke over those, back in those bets. So, if you guys get a chance to watch football tomorrow, the Browns should get their butts handed to them easily and then some with the way they've been playing. You know, I always want them, I want them to do well, but uh, Patriots are really looking pretty darn good. Uh, so, going back to the Dolphins, again, not a big football fan, but whenever I was younger, we have I, I, it just seems like we're intermingling all the time uh, with this one common denominator. Uh, being raised in Florida uh, in, a, in the early 70s, of course, you know, the undefeated 72 Dolphins. And my mom went to high school with Larry Zonka, who, of course, belongs to that team. Not, you know, he's from Stowe, Ohio. Not only that, but he has a farm out here in Lisbon, Ohio, and we drive through Lisbon. We were in Lisbon today. Yesterday. Or yesterday, yeah, just yesterday. So, I mean, it's we have this, like, connection. Matter of fact, he was at Rogers Flea Market. Um, they just posted that on that uh, Flea Market Fanatics. Um, uh, so, anyways, Larry Zonka, we got a, kind of a connection there. He belongs. So, I don't know how many years I had... Uh, I, I wore 39. My jersey, 39, was my number for years. Anytime I was a kid, I went anywhere. My, my parents would buy me a, a Dolphins 39 jersey. As I was growing out, she, they'd get me another one. Or I got it dirty or ripped or whatever, they'd get me another one. Um, so I've always kind of liked the Dolphins. Uh, but, um, yeah, you know, being here as long as I have, we I, I kind of root for the Browns. But... Uh, do you travel through all the states? Well, we will. Uh, we haven't. <laughs> we haven't, but yeah. we will. Hey, Greg. Hey, Juanita. Kevin Bacon. What's Kevin Bacon? Uh, I don't know. When the Browns left Cleveland, the Buffalo Bill fans stuck with them. <sighs> I tried to make a reservation to the West Branch mm. in November, and, and nothing was available. Any ideas why? Because it's... They, they cut uh, off. Yeah, there's only some places. Yeah, you can't get full. You can't get full hookups. They're, I think they're done, right? Yeah, no. Uh, there's, there's still going to be some places that are open, but no, no. some Listen of them are closed. When is the full site? Oh, clo when is it off season? Yeah. Is it now? Yeah, it's got to be close. I would imagine. Yeah, I think it's off season now, so you you can only get electric hookup. Um, there's plenty of spaces with electric hookup. Uh, We've always been able to get it's, in there. It'll take too long for me to... And there's a shower house that's always open. It's right up front, so... Get close to the shower yeah, house. Yeah, get close to the shower house. It's it's kind of nice. But, yeah. Uh, you guys look very comfy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's we talked bad. about the, the last one. All the furniture in here is really comfortable. 
Um, the dinette I can sit for a few hours editing video. I don't have a problem. Other than the table, the way it's set up, I can't stretch my legs across to the other cushion to kind of kick back. Uh, the rockers that are in here are very comfortable. Uh, I have a footrest that I have to use with them because they're not recliners, but I can sit in them for hours, unfortunately. <laughs> and this couch here, believe it or not, I just put my head down here with one of these little throw pillows and then put another throw pillow on the end there and I can prop my feet up on the edge of the dinette. Yes, Kevin Bacon, seven degrees of separation with Kevin, uh, Kevin Bacon. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Greg says, hi to Dave, but not me. <laughs> That's funny. Bills are tied with the Patriots. Um, the thing with the Bills, uh, man, um, I went to a, a car show when I worked at Summit Racing in Buffalo. Uh, and we went up on the lake and ate at a restaurant, and they had a, a Bills game that was going on there, and the fans were just going crazy inside the place. It was packed. Um, but, come on, what was it, five? Was it five in a row? I mean, man, Jim Kelly, what happened? Five in a row. How could they lose five in a row? At, you know, But then again, they made it. Oh, was it four? But they made it. They made it. <laughs> You know, that's something to be said. They made it there that many times in a row. But, God, I just I wish they would have won one of them. <laughs> Wait until that furniture suffers through cold winters. Those chairs and coaches tend to get... Yeah, I can imagine, because as we sit on them, they do get... They get more pliable, and they feel a little bit better. Yeah. Nothing that hopefully have a to comfort, warm up. throw comforters over them or yeah. something. Jim Kelly is my hero. Wide right. <laughs> yeah, the Bills. Um, you know, and unfortunately, their greatest running back. What was he thinking? That's a shame. Still, still a great running back. <laughs> the dude says it. OJ started it. The seventies Pat could win a game. Couldn't win a game if their life has been a last decade. It's been a bit different. Yeah. Yeah, we're always wondering whenever the uh, Indians are going to... You think O.J. is guilty? Uh, we were to some, say we weren't there. Yeah, it wasn't there, <laughs> but when I, see, when I watched the trial on TV, yeah. wow, was there a lot of circumstantial there. It's one of those... Okay, let me put it this way, and I'm sure I'll get all kinds of controversy about this. I think he's just as guilty as Ray Lewis because... Those that whole situation was so shady on both accounts. Ray Lewis's situation, OJ situation, extremely shady. Really shit. Lots of unanswered questions. So take that for what it's worth. <laughs> <laughs> Don't start that or religion or politics. Yes. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, the politics thing. I'll tell you, like I said, no matter on what side of the court you are with the politics, I have never been so fed up with hearing news about the crap that's been going on, one way or the other. I, I, I just, man, it just... It's irritating. I thought but... that maybe it's just because I'm a little bit getting older and being more conscious about it or something, but I don't remember so this saturated. much crap. Just, it's always out there every day. Yeah, we're just being showered with it all the time. Mm. Just snow. <laughs> it's we're not afraid. We're not afraid of such topics, Sully. Yeah, it's uh, you know what? It's not that we're. It, get, it gets other people mad. We guys, don't get mad. Were you guys ever in the desert? Mm -hmm. uh, no. no, not yet. It's going to be what on Thursday? Zip it there, s'mores <laughs> camping. Yeah, politics are. Like yeah. I said, I don't know if it's just as we get older, we pay more attention to it or something. I thought that might be the case, but there's just no way. There's just no way I'm paying that much attention. It's just like it's getting thrown in my face all the time. <laughs> oh, the camera for oh, yeah. She's lagging that massage. <laughs> uh, just get it. Yes, that's for sure. Red Jaguar. Yep. Get away from it all. 
Yeah. That way we don't have to hear any of it. Yeah, you're right, Sully. The, I, I think that's probably... <laughs> um, talk And again, not getting into politics or anything like that. The only thing I've never really uh, cared about our current situation is... I I am not I am not eloquent with my words. I am not correct with my English. I'm not always proper with my pronunciations. I might say something that's backwards with, by the way what I mean it to say and I didn't put it together correctly. Uh, however, I am also not the leader of this country and I would think that I would expect if I was that hopefully I would be able to communicate and bring people together a little bit better I mean <clears throat> negotiations I mean it's all there's a certain point that I I like to 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 put across and you know, basically, I, I there is a point in which you everybody stands and say, "Listen, I don't really care about what you think." You know, past a certain point, I'm, <laughs> I'm, uh, you know, I'm here. I'm. This is my thoughts. This is the way I feel about it. And yes, I'll listen to you. Yes, I can sympathize to an ex a certain extent. I don't know if I can empathize, but I can definitely, you know, feel sympathy for what you're saying. Oh. <laughs> I don't relate necessarily. But after a certain point, after saying it so many times, you know, I will stand firm and say, listen, I just don't necessarily care about what's happening there. I, do, I just don't care. It doesn't affect me the way it's affecting you, and that's it. However, um, however, uh, the, I, I would expect more from... The people that are in charge of, in our, of our country. He said, I, I would expect Mike more. And Cindy said, uh, Mike says, hey, Mike, just ignore it. Let's get, just go to Florida. I know. I'm, she won't let me go. She's She's got uh, the ball and chain. After we get done here and I haul all this stuff in, she'll put it back on my... She didn't want me to have to carry it out here. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's by my recliner. <laughs> Guess what? What about the map behind us? We... We haven't oh, gone many places. We gotta scratch one more off. I scratched off PA. Yeah, I've been to Texas. I've been to I Arkansas. Know. I've been to Louisiana. We're not scratching. Uh, I've been those to off. Alabama. It's the RV. Yes, but and as far us. as the RV, and then of course there's no Europe on there, so I can't scratch any of that. Crap yeah, Red Jaguar. The keys are calling our names. Yeah, the key. We are. That is a bucket thing for sure, and I don't see why it's such a big deal. Um, we're going to Tennessee tomorrow. Oh, God, rub it I owe you 10 bucks now, Greg. What happened? Okay, honey, I said to make sure. You, you give me 10 bucks. bucks. <laughs> we'll get back out there. Yeah, we got to get out there. Uh, Judy, it's funny. Um, well, that's kind of strange. Have we talked to, to, to Judy before? I don't know. Every time, Heidi, you know I have, here, just to show you, because I do this to Heidi all the time. I say, you know what our temperature is for the week? And she says, no, I don't know. No, no, no. I said, well, but look, here's, I got a lot of locations saved, but my number one location, I don't know if you guys can see it. That's right, Melbourne, Florida. Oh, I spelled it wrong on the chat there. Have a drink. The of, big easy, thank let's you. Let's not get into politics. I've been watching you from the beginning. And I don't do too much writing, but I do love your channel. Thanks. Appreciate it. Angelo Ramos. Thank you, Luke. Thank you, thank you. The Big Easy. Is the Big Easy from the Big Easy? Or are you just big easy? Ball or Pokemon. Sydney, Australia. Oh my god, it's noon there. So we were just talking about it because we watch um, How Ridiculous on YouTube all the time. Of course, they're from out that way. And uh, how, how strange is it that you guys, Christmas is, is so warm out there? I, I, I would expect, right? How, how does that work? Oh, you're from Missouri. Okay. 
Thanks, Steve. So the big easy is a show me. Eleven thirty nine a.m. Portuguese Brazil. Wow. Mary said happy birthday. Thanks, Mary. Wish we were all set. Oh, by the way, Herbie, um, I still have. Oh, I don't know. I I I did. A, uh, yeah, I, I got as much. Yeah, I got a pretty decent amount still. No, probably about that oh, much of that bottle. I hit it one day for a while there. Yes, I do in channel, but I always <laughs> want you to organize your garage. Boy, that's an understatement. You know how you organize it? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, insurance. <laughs> Brazil. I, I love the back to Brazil. I want to go to Sao Paulo and get a uh, tattoo. <laughs> Not much longer I'll be on the road. I have an offer. Dragon Ball Super Topping. As I have an offer. Okay, let's hear your offer. Pay <laughs> close attention. Here we go. Oh, boy. <laughs> We're listening. We're on pins and needles. If you can. No, yeah. it's been, it hasn't yeah. stopped. Yeah, it's been raining here the whole time. Name my channel. Name. Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> <laughs> Name my channel. Salve pro mio amigo. If you look I know Amigo's friend. Uh, pro is for, for. I don't know. I don't know Spanish though. I can kind of put it together, but I don't know what that means. State my views, and when I started, and all my links. Okay, so in three minutes, I don't know what's going on. Dragon Ball, we're getting ready to start blocking you here. Stephen T, not yet. It goes in on February first. I'll give fifty dollars. Stay tuned. Next video on it. I have no idea what the whole Dragon Ball thing is. Feo mal I K. I don't I don't know what I don't know what that is. Sorry. <laughs> Just sorry. Yeah, we had somebody else from Brazil join us on our last live chat. So as far as Australia though, I, I'm kinda curious what what is it like? Um, is because I'm assuming that your season is reverse of ours since you're on the other side of the world. So, is your Christmas is it is it summer? Or I mean, our Christmas obviously happens in the dead of the winter here. So your Christmas is in summer there. Is that correct? What's that like? No comprendo. Sorry. Yes, I. I don't understand either. No crook. Go comprendo. Be back in a few. Keep talking. Well, you don't have to tell me that it twice. Was my -K -K. Um, just sell the house Mary and keep the garage. <laughs> no. <laughs> we, we, we just need to sell it all. We got a lot of work to do on the house still uh, to make it to where we feel comfortable selling it uh, to somebody. Yeah, Christmas is in our summer. How does that... That's That <laughs> has got to be strange. I mean, that would be so foreign to us, really. I mean, we don't necessarily... Our thing is, we don't necessarily get snow on Christmas all the time. There's very few times, actually, we get snow on Christmas here. Um, but, I mean, it's bundle weather, the food. I mean, just the Thanksgiving... And then Christmas, our food is so heavy, and uh, I mean it, it's it's a you know high carbs and staying warm and hot cocoa and I mean it's all part of the the Christmas atmosphere for us because and it all has to do with the cold. So I'm kind of curious, how does that work with Australia? I mean, like Christmas carols, you know, everybody bundles up and they house to house, and I'm kind of <laughs> curious what that's. That's kind of, that's odd. Don't you think that's odd? Uh, I know that Florida and I believe a few other states have a town called Christmas. Yes. Um, it's been a while since we had snow on Christmas. Yeah. I can't remember the last time we've had snow on Christmas. Time's up. I don't know if I was supposed to be playing the game or not. but Yeah, so it just seems odd that for Christmas, um, you know, you have a lot of uh, 
uh, like um, we have a lot of cinnamon scented, you know, candles and wreaths, and it's all like warm, inducing. Uh, you know, it really it really brings out warmth. It makes you makes you feel warm. Everything's about warmth and staying warm and uh, you know Christmas dinners and everything. I mean, just so drawn out. It. I don't think we would ever have those kind of dinners in the middle of summer when it was hot. It, I mean, we have picnics and it's like dogs and burgers and stuff like that. You know, chicken on the grill, that kind of thing. But in the winter, it's all about baking pies and there's something too you know your whole house like the fireplace having a having a fireplace and you know like a lot of the christmas songs you know of course american christmas songs they talk about uh you know chestnuts roasting on an open fire and you know all that stuff it's just it's all about you know being in the cold and, and trying to stay warm and so to be in a summer location or in a really nice warm location and it's Christmas. I know Florida's that way, but it's still the coldest time of year for for the most part for Florida also. Uh, so it just seems odd that as you guys go from the cold to the warm, you you get a, you get to look forward to Christmas. I, I don't know. I, I I think unfortunately, you guys probably are missing out on a, an experience, right? I mean, can you imagine having Christmas in the summer? I mean, because I never experienced that ever. Well, no, I'm. Not, I mean, I've never been out of Ohio, right? In well, the summer, right? In the winter, in winter yeah, right. right? Except last year we right. went. Right. Um. So. Grew up in the Caribbean, sunny, warm Christmas trees, foods, caroling. Yeah, it just seems so odd. Sand and shorts. <laughs> I'm going to be in Arizona. Merry Christmas. Oh, so nice, Mike. As you drive by the house, I'm going to throw a lasso around the back of your trailer. <laughs> Ocaprende. They have, bon they have bonfires. Dragon Ball Super Topic says they have bonfires. Iron Man. Yeah, that I, I'm just curious. That... That would be really odd, right? It would be definitely different. I mean, like, uh, the other thing is, like, when you go over to your parents' house, as soon as you walk in from the outside, the whole house is roasting hot because they've been cooking all day. So the oh, they oven, have a fire. They, and they fire got a fire, place. right. But the, but the oven is going, the whole house smells like, you know, the food for the, you know, big meals. and that. Thanks, Dragon Ball. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> Thanks, sir. But yeah, that's uh, that's crazy. That's I, I would like to, I, I'd like to try it out. Now, out of all the countries that, I mean, this is going back. I feel bad because my my father has gotten to the point where he's not as ambitious as he used to be when he was younger. Um, he always wanted to go to Australia, and he wanted to spend a little bit of time there. I have always said for the longest time in my life, if I ever had to move to another country. I think that I'd want to move to Australia. Um, I just, I, 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 as long as it's warm, mm -hmm. I, I just like the whole idea about it. In fact, you guys speak English. <laughs> Makes things a little bit easier for me because I could probably learn Spanish, I think, but, um, which I should anyways. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's definitely a country I think I'd at least like to go visit. That or New Zealand. I mean, either or. I think Australia, though, I, I just being on the mainland and everything. I don't speak Spanish. Anybody else? No. You have so <laughs> many subscribers. Uh, uh, not. not we, we have. Not really. Well. Uh, we got a decent amount. Yeah, we yeah. got a really good amount. <laughs> Love you. <laughs> uh, I'll have that much one day. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Just put up content. There's always a, there's a, a, a viewer for everyone. You want to hit show. Oh. We can get Juanita to translate. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Right. I love you. 
Uh, yeah, the um, other thing that we've got to do uh, is uh, the is winterize the RV. Uh, there's a part of me that wants to try the whole, see how cold we can get and, and keep the water from freezing with the, the heated tanks and everything. Uh, but I, I, the more I'm thinking about it, maybe I should just keep that as a we've got it. I, but I want to make sure it works. That's the thing. So how do you know? until you need it and do you want to keep water in your rv and, mm. and try to figure that out so uh new zealand is smaller but more mountainous than australia love you michael <laughs> jackson <laughs> uh. arizona's a town called santa claus and one called christmas hmm. that's different yeah, uh, the next place that Heidi and I want to go together for a long trip is definitely out west. Let me rephrase that. Or Texas. Uh, we've talked about Texas. So, do you guys, um, what do you guys think about this? Because I've been wanting to do this uh, while, I'm, while I still have the ability to do it. Heidi says that it's crazy and I shouldn't do it. I want to see if I can go with maybe just a, a couple power naps. Just a couple power naps. I want to do like 1,200 miles and, and straight, just straight. And the reason is, is because if she has a couple weeks off, once we get to wherever it is and I spend all that hard driving to get there, then we can take our sweet time with all the days that we banked and save traveling in one direction, we can take our time making our way back. <laughs> Plus, I wanted to see what the, what the truck does, how it handles. Uh, F-250 just passed 31,000. Do you believe in changing all the fluids? You, if you haven't changed your transmission fluid, absolutely. I'm going to change my transmission. I'm going to have Ford service my transmission uh, probably when I bring it in for the recall. Um, I watched a guy that's uh, a Ford tech on YouTube. It's called Ford Tech Make You Loco. Um, I think he's over in Pennsylvania, and he's really, really good. And he says, whatever you do, and I believe it 100%, he said, whatever you do, don't go the interval that they're saying you can go on your transmission. Uh, he said, because there's so much metal floating around from the break end. Mm. He says that you want to get that changed right away. Um and he suggested to do it around 10,000 miles or, or sooner. So uh, I'm definitely changing the transmission fluid. It's it's a couple hundred dollars for them to do it. I'm going to have them do it. I have to do laundry. Good luck. We all got to, got to do it. Like the video. Thank you. You will sleep for two days driving that far. <laughs> Could be. I don't know. I, I do pretty good. I watched the same video, just wanted your opinion. Yes. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Um, I mean, I watch, you know, of course, the transmission's completely different than a small engine. But, man, uh, whenever I drain a small engine, I see all the stuff that's in there just after braking. You know, it just, I can't believe that your transmission fluid, I mean, you've got all those clutch packs in there that are all working against each other. And... You know, break-in is putting all that material into the fluid that is so critical. And the transmission, I mean, everything is, the transmission fluid is so fluid, I guess, you, you know, it's so thin. Uh, it, it's And it's got to be thin for a reason. Uh, and whenever you're starting to add medical, you know, or metal particles in there, I mean, if you think about all the the formulations that they talk about with uh, bonding molecules and how they get separated and, and all that stuff with oil in general or lubricants in general and on a molecular level, how important it is for those not to break down and still, you know, bind and cling and, you know, do all kinds of weird stuff. And now you're throwing little pieces of metal in there. Well, you can see the metal. I can't see molecules, but I can see metal. So if they're saying that it's important that those, you know, those lubrication properties have all that molecular 
uh, engineering built into them. What's going on when you get little pieces of metal in there? Yeah, I, I definitely, definitely feel strongly about keeping your fluids changed. Um, John says, sorry I'm late. Happy birthday, Heidi. Christmas temperatures in Australia is between 24 and 30 Celsius. Now you've done it. Okay, Google. How many degrees Fahrenheit is 30 degrees Celsius? 30 degrees Celsius is equal to 86 degrees. Wow, holy cow, 86. Transfer uh, case? Uh, I don't, the transfer case and the, and the you're at 30,000. I'm thinking I would change all of it. I would change the front and rear differentials and I would do it all. If I was at 30,000, I would do all mine. Let's put it that way. You take that for what it's worth. I, I, I would do it all just so you know. Just, you, you don't have to, you know, at this point you can catch anything that might be happening. I mean, after 30,000 miles, you can definitely see where. You can definitely see weird stuff going on. Uh, we've had cars that, um, that are, were well known at like 100,000 miles. The transmissions would then fail. If you rebuild them, you got another 100,000 miles out of them. Some of them, though, uh, like that one would lose that one part. I can't remember that was inside. You'd drop the pan and there'd be the part just laying there. It was a servo stem or something. So anyways, um, yeah, uh, it'd be exp it's going to be expensive, but find somebody that you can trust, you know, probably a Ford garage, and just go ahead and get it all done. And then you don't have to do it. You would, I don't think you would have to do it. Well, the transmission fluid, maybe, especially if you're in a heavy towing or dusty environment. But um, the differentials really can go a long, long, long ways. I mean, pretty much indefinitely, I would think. I, I don't think you would ever have to change your rear end fluid again, necessarily. And as far as the transfer case, I don't know. Not really. Um, and make sure that your lockouts, you lubricate those, the manual ones. Because you never know if your your vacuum on the dash thing quits working. I mean, you definitely want to be able to go out and turn those. And a lot of people don't lubricate them. It's too late. Remember, an ounce of prevention. Yeah, you're right. You're right. So, Judy. Oh, that's it. Judy S. What did she say then? She... She, your. She said it's just. Your. Oh, do route sixty six. Yeah. Let me go up a little bit more. <laughs> Don't come Missouri. It's boring. <laughs> mean misery. That's what I heard called. At least Fort Lawson Woods, Missouri. Misery. Fort Lawson Wood, Missouri. Uh, Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri. <laughs> That's what it was. Yeah, Judy. Uh, so you said you. You're in Melbourne? Are you in West Melbourne? I know that's a place. Larry and Penny Campground, beautiful place in Miami, right next to the Metro, Metro Zoo. Zoo. Off the Miami, wow. That's that's south. If we're going to Miami, we're probably going to keep on driving then after that and go through the Keys. Maybe stay the night there. I'm in Kansas. Are you anywhere near Lebo, Kansas? <laughs> we're going to be out that way eventually. North Melbourne, okay. I was... Uh, I was born in what used to be Brevard County Hospital. I don't know what it's called now. John, John something? I don't know what it is. I don't know what they're called now. And, uh, yeah, I was born in Brevard County there, at Brevard County Hospital. My aunt worked at the hospital for years. My uh, grandfather worked at what was back then called Radiation, and now it's, it, it, or, and for a long time it was Harris Corp. I mean, he was still working there when it became Harris uh, he retired from there. I have his gold watch from Harris. I have his gold pen set from Harris. Um, yeah, Holmes Regency. Now, my cousin still works there. I have cousins that still live um, in Melbourne. Uh, after we left Melbourne, we moved to uh, Palm Bay. My grandparents lived in Port Malabar, and they also have a home in Satsuma, uh, Palatka area, Satsuma. Uh, but, yeah, they, they were in Port Malabar. I'm sorry. 
we were in Port Malabar. They were also kind of in Port Malabar. Then we moved to Palm Bay. Um, and then we moved to Temple Terrace on the other side of the state. Then we moved back to O'Galley when O'Galley was still a thing. And that was the last city that I lived in in Florida. Then we moved to Ohio. Um, but I still have uh, my mom and my stepdad. They moved to Florida for a while. They were there for a few years. They were in Palm Bay. And then, uh, again, I still have an aunt that's in a nursing home that's in Palm Bay. I have uh, a real close aunt that's in Rockledge. I have a cousin mm. that's in that area. Mm. Yeah, Sully, I remember you telling me that. Yeah, that's where I was born. That Holmes Regional used to be Bavard County Hospital. That's where I was born. Uh, the uh, Oh, you've been there 25 years. 25 years ago, did they, uh, was Cox's truck stop still on US-1 there? When you, I don't remember how long ago they got rid of it. I know you guys had dredging and stuff that was going on, and that's somewhere near Cox's, it's up the way. I know that dredging was controversial. Uh, but the, um, uh, still have, like I said, cousins and, and relatives all over down there. And I have a real good army buddy that is down there. Um, he lives in, I guess it's Melbourne, Carrollwood. But yeah, we lived um, right up from the golf course for my first home that I can really recall uh, was on Westwood Boulevard right off of, I uh, can't remember that main drag that's through there now. My, it's the, the golf course is there and it's been there for a long time. They're still dredging? Oh, man. I know that's a touchy subject to a lot of people. I have no idea what they're doing, but it sounds like a disaster. Yeah, Cox's Truck Stop used to be on US-1. We ate there all the time, constantly. My uncle used to work the service station there. and I like the area. I, I really like the area. Um, that's. Uh, he was 13 when he left. I no, I wasn't. I, can... I was younger than that. Eleven. No, I was younger than that. We were ten. <laughs> ten. But I mean, I remember everything about it. <laughs> I know, but it's changed. Where the fuck? How about came here to just dislike? Okay, that's cool. <laughs> it's changing fast. Yeah, most areas are. If, I don't know for the better. I remember years ago, um, the 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 rough part of the neighborhood that I remember driving through was out on Stone Street. I remember that was a rough area. That was, you know, that was years ago. It was in the seventies, but I never know if it got uh, got worse. I still can't remember that stretch of that road that we lived off of. Not hibiscus. I'm trying to think what it's called. Ah, whatever. We used to uh, go fish the uh, O'Galley Causeway all the time. What? <laughs> Who says out rude? What happened? Well, this person here. You know what happened. You seen it. Oh, pfft. out of my. <sighs> I mean, you're yeah, talking, it's bad. we got 56 people here. That's pretty <laughs> cool. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, there's a lot of, Marcus, <laughs> we we see that a lot. We, we get a lot of comments like, well, you, I'm sure you get your fair share. You'll, you'll get even more. It just happens. Happy birthday. Thank you. Yeah, the some of the stuff that's said, it's like, what is this guy talking about? Especially my other channel. It's even worse over there. I love the guys that have never posted one video. <laughs> Don't have <laughs> it just and they go and they go watch and I have a video that maybe has had two hundred thousand views. I have like eighty percent thumbs up, and I get comments for the most part. People saying thank you, you saved me a hundred dollars, or this is great. I got my mower back running again, and this was so easy. And they you know they're going on and on and on, and then all of a sudden you get a guy that comes on and says. 
that is wrong. You would you should never do that. And this is wrong. And this crap will never last. <laughs> Where's this guy coming from? <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> Twenty miles north of Palatka. You know, I spent a lot of time whenever as a kid. Um, again, my grandfather, they they had a what they called the property, which became their retirement home. It was on the St. John's River in Hermit's Cove in Satsuma. Um, and that, uh, a lot of nice area. Well, Heidi and I went down there when we, uh, after we'd been married for a couple years. Mm -hmm. So we've been together for about three or four years, about four years. And then, yeah, about four years. Three or four years, something like that. And we went down and, and we stayed on the St. John's River. We were there for about a month. Uh, it was, I, I like the area. My grandfather always had, uh, you know, a bass boat. It was in the boathouse, and he always take us out, and we always go fishing. Wow, four years. Mm. Happy birthday. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the... Uh, and no, we didn't sell the RV yet. Nope. Yep. The the RV still still here. People, we I've got. Uh, you can come down and buy it. I got all kinds of cameras, so you know I get an alert that somebody's in the driveway. And again, I have my own way of selling stuff. And basically, if if they're interested, they're going to come knock on the door. It, what I do is I let them look around and do everything they want. I keep an eye on them, and if I see them walk past an area they've already walked past before and start looking again and then they might give a glance up to the house <laughs> then that that's the cue that i need to go out there and talk with them or if they come up to the house one or the other and uh i've only had uh the one gentleman that he wanted to, he wanted to see it bad he wanted to see it inside and out and the whole reason that he wanted to see it was because the cab on the the rv is so clean there's no rust on it or anything it's not dented it's not scratched and it has a big brush guard on the front that big chrome and he loved the way that looked he said that was the main reason that he wanted to come back and look at it uh, because it when he stopped it was just so clean and he liked the way that it looked on that with that brush guard so yeah that'd be great for our son i think it's still i mean it would it's probably our son i've talked about he, see, we're wanting. He's got to go experience. Yeah. When he comes back, I'll get an idea of what, how he feels about it. Because I have told him numerous times whenever we were building the van out, he said, "Well, I'd like to have this, and I'd like to do this." I said, "Well, you're talking to Class C," and then immediately he says, "Oh, I don't know because I can't park it everywhere I want. I want to be able to pull in this parking spot and that part and do this." And and he kind of wants to be stealth, but then again, he wants the room, so. I don't know if we're going to be able to get him into Class C, uh, but he might be talking like Pro Master thing territory. You know, that's up to him. He'll l let him figure it out. Okay, you got some things. Uh, Speaking yeah, about right. cameras, do you have a camera on your rig? I was thinking about adding ring to my front door. Huh. Uh, we'll have something eventually. Yeah, I don't have anything on the outside. Um, since we have these cameras currently at the house here, I mean, we could bring them with us. We, we could use those. I don't know if we will, but we could. Um, oh, hey, birthday. some days here. Hey, how you guys doing? How are you? Thank you. We'll figure out health insurance when you go full time. Uh, I'm okay with my health insurance because through the VA. Heidi, however, we're thinking it's going to be that one of those Christian health share plans. We haven't looked into it. Heidi hasn't looked into it. <laughs> I'm not looking into it until I get closer. So, I mean, it, it's not going to change when we go full time. We're going full time. So, it doesn't matter if I look through it for it now or then it's not going to change anything right right i mean i have health care through my work and it is cheaper than that 
right now with just me on it. I don't know. That's all her. She she told So me. I mean I'll eventually look into it, but right now I'm there's something out there for me. Obamacare or But yeah, as far as the cameras we have on the house right now, we have Wise, W Y Z E, and I really like them. They're very, very, very good. Uh now I could always put our Alfred cameras mm -hmm. inside the RV and point them out, you know, whenever we're away from the RV. But as far as security and, and monitoring while we're in the RV, um, I can still run those cameras. Of course, they're all based off Wi-Fi, so, um, you know, I'll be, I'd have to be using data that way. As long as it, the unlimited is really unlimited, it'd be tough. Prices are probably going to be very mm -hmm. over time when it comes to, yes, we're good. I have to tell you that I enjoy <laughs> seeing the picture of your precious grandson. <laughs> yeah, he's he's big. That kid's big. He's a he's big kid. He's he's got to be twenty pounds. He was over. They they took him into the months. doctors, and there was a one year old that he was bigger than the one year old. <laughs> I mean, he's a big kid. He's just big. If you, I mean, he's really big. He's long. He's really thick. His legs are really big. Oh, that shrimp outfit is almost too small for him. Yeah, she <laughs> bought him this little shrimp outfit, and our daughter says, geez, Mom, that thing's awful big. As soon as we got him in it, she goes, he barely fits in there. <laughs> I mean, it's really, he's just a big kid. He's, yeah. I'm surprised, and he's strong. I I had, he was, Heidi was holding him, and he grasped onto my finger, and I told Heidi, I said, just kind of stand there. And I pulled on, you know, on him, and it moved her. I mean, he just, <laughs> He's really uh, strong. I, I don't know. I it could be a good or bad thing. We'll have to see. Yes, he's a happy baby. Yeah. And he's he's so he's such a good baby. Yeah. How how many of you he ever heard of kids that infants that sleep through the night every night? Yeah. Since day one. Yeah. He sleeps through the entire night. I mean, that's probably why he's growing. I mean, you do all your growing when you're sleeping. Yeah. That kid does. He sleeps the whole night through. They. I, my daughter has no idea how bad it could be, you know that whole colic thing and all. He hasn't had any of that. Uh, sure thing. Hi, folks. Thanks. Wondering, did you order your rig? Yes. We want to order new flag stuff. Yes. Any info or pointers for ordering process? Um, pay attention when you're checking the boxes. Double, triple check the boxes. We don't have carpet in our bedroom because we had to redo the order form and we missed one single little tiny box. If we order, can we get things we want? Yes, but only if they're options. We wanted recliners. They made recliners years prior. This model, you could get recliners. They had recliners that fit the right color. They match the interior, everything, but there is no way I could get those recliners unless the dealer made some sort of deal and bought them separate and then I had to give up these rockers to them. So, you know, it just... So, uh, as far as ordering, um, you can't... It's it's so much more expensive to add the stuff later. So, put it all on. Just go ahead and option it up. If Even if you don't think you may not necessarily use it, you never know. For example, the heated tanks that we have, we don't plan on getting in cold weather. We're in cold weather, but um, we optioned it in. In case we go somewhere and we get stuck or we get caught in snow or the temperatures drop faster than what we thought, our tanks should be protected, at least for a couple days until we can get out of whatever we accidentally got stuck in. Uh, same with the uh, rooftop air. We should be able to get away with one rooftop air. However, we got two of them, and it wasn't, it's, it's just much easier to do it all then. I just make sure that the only thing we don't suggest not to get the stupid bike racks that go on the tongue and on the back, whatever that don't don't bother with those things that they have. And the nice thing is, is if you order a new Flagstaff now uh, or a Rockwood, of course, it's the same thing. They're now adding a, a hitch on the back, um, which is really cool on all of these type of models. There's a, a, a hitch that's mounted to the frame that you can mount accessories to. Um, 
but yeah, as far as uh, also whenever you go, th whenever you pick it up, um, if you don't feel comfortable with the RV necessarily repairing little things that aren't right when you first get it, then have the dealer when you do the walkthrough have the dealer turn on and show you every single thing the hot water tank the water the stove the furnace the air conditioners the refrigerator the microwave have them go through and show you and turn on every single item in the rv with you right there standing there watching him <laughs> um, it's a pain in the butt it's going to take you all day but i didn't mind i i trusted them and i knew if it was something small i didn't care about fixing it and our furnace, I had to fix that when we first got it. And then our microwave quit on our first trip, so we got a new microwave put in there, um, which we did, or I did, and Heidi called and got it arranged where they delivered it, and we swapped them out. But um, other than that, oh, also, uh, go on the tour. Go take the tour and, and try to schedule it whenever they are building your style. You may not get to see your exact model, but we got to see... Ours was built two days prior to us getting there, and they were still building this exact same length and style of Rockwood. So we got to see how it got built, how the slides were built. The slides were the same. The dinette was the same. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that's the same. So you got to see it all, and it's very informative. Take lots of pictures, lots and lots of pictures, and it's so hard to remember what you've seen. Uh, but, yeah, go take the tour. It's worth it. Anthony, Anthony Yoder, call out. Ask for Anthony Yoder. Tell him that we sent you. And uh, he's a nice guy. Really nice guy. That's all I can tell you about it. I don't know if that helps you. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. I'll say a prayer for you. It's kind of getting better, unfortunately. I'm seven right now. I'm oh, just ignoring it. What's that? <clears throat> oh, so how many of you currently now are from the, how many of you right now are on the West Coast or close to the West Coast? Let's say anything from, well, we know Kansas. Yeah, let's use that as the, so anybody from Kansas, I know that's not West Coast, but <laughs> anybody Kansas West? How many of you are Kansas West? Oh, by the way, Kansas, I never did get to see. Are you near uh, Lebo, Kansas? I wanted to ask you that. Claudia Perez, hola. That's about all the Spanish I know. <laughs> Scottsdale, Arizona. I would love to go out. We've always wanted to go out and uh, see the uh, course. It's kind of funny when we say we're close to Canton, everybody goes, oh, Football Hall of Fame. Scottsdale, Arizona, though. Um, uh, Scottsdale, Arizona. Uh... Oh, we watch it all the time. Oh, the... Auction. Yeah, the... The big auction. Sh underneath the tent. Something. I forget what it's yeah, called. Yeah, what's the big auction? We, we were just we watching it. Not Something. the Meekum auction. No, it's the other one. I don't watch that one anyway. Yeah. So, I don't... Columbia. Desde Columbia. Go see Sedona, Arizona. Seattle, Washington. Barrett Jackson, you got yep. it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for Barrett Jackson, finally. Yeah, we want to go to Scottsdale and see the Barrett Jackson auction once. If we, Which we don't play the lottery, but we always say. I don't know why. <laughs> I guess everybody says that. If we ever hit the lottery, if I ever hit the lottery that I don't play, um, yeah, I like to go out there and buy something. <clears throat> How old are you? How old are you? Please tell me. I'm seven. We're 50. We're in our 50s. We are in Charleston, South Carolina. Just left Elmont Campground in the Smoky Mountains. Well, you better hurry south because I think it's going to be a little snowy. It's getting colder. <laughs> Claudia Perez, 32. Ideas, 23. <laughs> Kansas. Oh, okay. Uh, your symptoms sound a little bit like what we went through earlier. Go up letter. Oh. Mm. Are we daydreaming? 
It's January, along with the PGA, and traffic is bad. Oh, oh man, <laughs> forget that then. Never mind. Now well, maybe I don't want to go because I'm not a big fan of traffic. But like I said, if we ever won the lottery, soy Colombiana. Columbiana. We're in Columbiana County. Yeah. We live in Columbiana County, Ohio. But ours is C O L U M B I A N A. We don't have much for uh in this area. California. For Spanish heritage. Oh, California, no kidding. So, are, Brian, are you near any of the fire crap going on? I, we just seen that another fire kicked up. I, Man, I feel bad for you guys. And here's the other thing. Are you in that area that they're shutting off the power? And if you are, how do you guys feel about that? Because if I was to tell my boss I'm afraid that I'm not going to be able to do my job without causing an accident, so I'm not going to show up to work for four days... Should he continue to pay me even though I'm not there? Because I don't understand how a power company can say we're not going to give you power for maybe the next week. Do you still have to pay for that on your bill? I, I think it should be knocked off, right? You shouldn't shouldn't have to pay. They're not supplying you with electric. So uh, I know that they charge you, you know, service charges per month and usage charges, but... I think they should be giving you something else, some kind of convenient inconvenience rebate. That's crazy. Baton Rouge, yes, get out of get out of here and get warm. Are you in a house car? No, we're in a uh, RV. Yep, Barrett Jackson. Yeah. Seems some town and country names are reused in different. Yeah. Yes. That's true. When is Thanksgiving? I don't know. Uh, I think it's about they it's always the last Thursday. Yeah, of Halloween is, of course, is this weekend. Uh, no, isn't it Wednesday, Thursday, the thirty first? Halloweening, first. Halloween is being celebrated a lot this weekend. Right, especially tonight. Yeah, like tonight, starting a half an hour ago, the the band went live at the local bar, you know, sports bar, and they've got costume party and everything going on tonight. But I believe Thanksgiving, what is it, the last Thursday of the month? I don't know. Yes, happy Halloween. We haven't done anything for Halloween for a long time, not since the kids have grown up. In Columbia, it isn't usually Thanksgiving, yeah. In Columbia. Uh, yeah, we are, of course, we have Thanksgiving. Last week in November, yep. Monster Mash. <laughs> yeah, uh, we're kind of... Uh, we don't really do much for Halloween now. Thanksgiving we are. We'll, we'll have a we'll have get-togethers. You know, typical family big dinner get-together. Eat too much. Maybe watch some football. Take a, a nap <laughs> in the middle of the day. Do you celebrate every single time Halloween? Uh, yeah, Halloween and thing. Yeah, Halloween is. Yeah, that's. I I don't really. Yeah, since our kids are older, they yeah, don't, we don't really celebrate but th Halloween. Thanksgiving we do yeah every, every year. Thanksgiving we everybody everybody celebrates Thanksgiving even if you Thanksgiving if for you for anybody that might be watching that's out of the Napa is an hour away God I feel bad for you anybody that's watching that's out of the country uh, Thanksgiving of course is a national holiday that everybody celebrates in the US and every what it is is basically time to get with your family for the most part, and have dinner, and um, it's just a big dinner. It's a big festival dinner. It's just uh, turkey, mashed potatoes, gravy, uh, uh, sweet potatoes. Uh, some do, people do corn on the cob. Some people just do corn. Uh, what's the other stuff? Um, what's the uh, relic? The you know relic, not relish. The cranberries. Cranberry? Yeah, cranberry sauce. Uh, baked breads i mean it's just it's just a big festival however um and every anybody else wants to chime in here they can but um however if you don't have a family to celebrate with in that lots like all the mcdonald's they still do that does the mcdonald's still give away 
Uh, in Alliance, yeah. yeah. One a, of them does. A lot of our McDonald's in the area, our fast food restaurants, McDonald's, will give away free mm -hmm. meals to people that don't have family to to celebrate with. Um, yeah, our, our local always, they, they've done that for years. Um, and there's a lot of other places, too, that do the same thing. They they want you to come in and, and you know, have a meal and celebrate Thanksgiving. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot, there's lots of giveaways and, and good cheer at that time. So, yeah. Yes, it is. PGE in the state of California need to figure this crap out. I don't understand that. I, I don't understand how a company can that has profited so much for so many years knowing that their crap was not safe and was deteriorating to the point where any windstorm could cause a fire because they don't have their stuff secured in such a manner or safeties put in place, uh, circuit breakers, whatever. I don't even know how that stuff works myself, but all those years that they made all that money, tons and tons and tons of money off of people that have been contributing for their electric bill that probably gets hiked up every year. Now, all of a sudden, they're saying, well, our stuff, I'm sorry, you know, we've been sued because of the, you know, lightning strikes or whatever, the storms that have caused trees to fall on our power lines and cause fire. Now that we've been sued and warned that we're going to be sued again for all these forest fires we're causing, uh, we're just going to turn off our power because we can't we can't supply it to you safely. How How is that right on any level that's i see something happening on some level i mean this is coming from somebody in the midwest that our power don't go out that often because we have a substation right up the street so i mean i'm really spoiled with the fact that we we don't really get power outages and if i had the power company shutting off my power i mean even when my cable company uh can't give me high speed internet for a day or so i call them up and say uh so are you going to give me you know reduce on my bill or something I just don't get it. Uh, Thanksgiving, you usually have a full house of friends. No family for me here. Christmas, our daughter comes from college in Tennessee. Can't wait. Cool. Somewhere local restaurants stay open and sell turkey dinners for Thanksgiving and Christmas. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's kind of str I know that's probably strange for people that live out in the country, but Thanksgiving's just a big eating holiday for everybody to get with their friends and friend, uh, family, relatives, and just, you know, just kind of waste the whole day, you know, enjoying everything. I mean, even some of the stores that are known to be open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, Thanksgiving, they, they catch a lot of flack whenever, right? They work their employees, so mm -hmm. um, that's that's something, I guess. The leftovers are the best thing about Thanksgiving and Christmas, I swear. I understand that chili always tastes better the next day because it. I think it has time to marinate more or something, and it just tastes that much better. But how how is it that leftovers always taste better the next day? They're not marinating or anything. It's just like, <laughs> I don't know what the deal most, is. Most stuff tastes good the next so day. So does pizza. Yes, you're right. Pizza does too. Mm -hmm. The thing that we like to do with our leftovers, um, her mom makes a lot of uh, little rolls. She makes mm -hmm. lots and lots of rolls. And so whenever we... I mean, I'm talking lots of rolls. The, like big squares of rolls. Just mm -hmm. dinner rolls. Mm -hmm. So we get lots of those and then we make sliders. I mean, the, I don't know how many meals... After that, we make sliders, turkey sliders, ham sliders, whatever, uh, all the time. Reheated Sloppy Joe, yes. Mm -hmm. No beans and chili. Well, Heidi can't really have beans for right now because no. she does, but right. very little. We're going to have chili soon. <laughs> Are we really? Mm -hmm. We talked about it today. Heidi made uh, grilled cheese and soup. We found a really nice restaurant that we enjoyed uh, in Lisbon. If you guys haven't gone to the courthouse in Lisbon, uh, a little costly, but very, very nice. Really cool decor. You have to go in there and check it out. The seasonings go through it. Yeah, I can believe that. It's. I mean, it's. It's got to be. It's. Mm -hmm. It's cold in here. Uh, it's 62. I might have to turn on the furnace for Heidi. I'd have to say my feet are a little chilly. Our bills are very high because of fees and taxes. 
Our summer bill is 600 a month. Yikes. Wow. I mean, we use a lot of electricity here for how little our house is and uh, how there's only three people that live in the household. And even with our electric bill, which is higher than I think it should be, I don't think we've ever been. What's the highest it's ever been a month? 180 maybe? Yeah, 180. That sounds about right. I have a good chili recipe that doesn't have beans in it. Really? Well, I could do the Cut zucchini. up zucchini. Oh, yeah. Because it's it, marinated in yep, there. Yep. Gregory from Texas. No, he's not. Who asked that? No, Greg's not from Texas. He's from uh, Jump, Skip, Hop Away. He's in Ohio here. Had a water main break on our street, water back on. Uh, Getting a quick shower, keep the life going. <laughs> yeah. Yes, we have an Instapot, and it makes fabulous chili. Yes, yeah. We did that last year. When we went through Ohio, we thought about you all. Appreciate uh, it. Good thing you drove through, though, because there ain't much here. <laughs> <laughs> just, just wave as you go by. We won't, we won't hold anything against you for that. There ain't much going on here. Going to put the Christmas recipe on the way. Cool. The Rock Rock send your recipe. Outside. Christmas would make a good, huh? Yeah. Oh, uh, maybe. Yeah. But well, the only thing is, is we we'd have the slides in. No, because we'll have the cover on it. Probably have the cover on it. Tell you if it wasn't. Depends on how nice it is. Yeah. Maybe right. Maybe we won't put the cover on it. I have a teeny tiny Christmas tree. Yep. It wouldn't take much. She used to have a Charlie Brown Christmas tree for years <laughs> here. It's just this stick looking thing. We have a really nice Christmas tree that our daughter will probably get, right? No. No? They, she don't want it? I'm selling it. Like, no, but they, they, she don't appreciate that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we have a, uh original, I mean, this is back when this house, the address used to be Rural Route 2. Um. They have, uh, it's from the 50s, mm -hmm. uh, the the metal tree. It's been at this house all these years since the 50s. But it's one of those metal trees, you know, like you used to, everybody had with that spinning light thing. We had to buy a new spinning light thing. Uh, ours, that, that was too bad, but. Mike in a robe. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. <coughs> Pumping it in the sewer. Yeah, so we need we gonna, to. Uh, we've got to get a get. Uh, someday Sarah's asking, so when are we going to get together and go camping somewhere? Oh, my we gosh. We have a whole. We need to. We, and I would have never been so adamant about saying that so positively until these last few trips that we've made and we've actually hung out with people. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've never done that before. We just we just go camping with her and I, and we enjoy just just me me time, her time, our time, just sitting and enjoying and, and watching people and stuff like that. But I didn't realize how much fun it was, you know, having other people around. Um, so I think we need to do a get-together, but me being a, an over-planner, I, I really would like that to be a good experience for everybody so um i mean it's one thing just to meet up one-on-one -on -one whenever we're out on the road but it would be really nice to be able to have a get together of some kind uh to where we could we could run into everybody have a big group of people i just don't know how to make that happen necessarily i mean the first thing is is centrally located i mean mm -hmm. everybody's going to have to drive somewhere i'm not I, i'm not going to that's it would be easy for us to do it around here because it's close to us but then other than that location we also got to make sure that wherever we find whatever we find we got to make sure that they can accommodate uh you know in, in case we have a decent turnout um so everybody's you know there and they nobody's getting cheated on sites and we're all in the same boat. I mean, it would kind of suck that, you know, there's, let's say we have a great turnout, like 30 people show up. That'd be awesome. 
but here's 10 of us that have full hookups and then the other ones have electric you know only yeah i i you know it's yeah i just don't know how that we got to figure that out west branch on veterans day weekend west branch is hard to get into you you say weekend you can pretty much rule out full hookups i very rarely Finley, we haven't been out to Finley there. They also come to court sites. Yeah, I'm <laughs> telling you, plenty of room out there, and we'd all be on the same playing, you know, level playing field. We'd all be out there boondocking. Atwood Lake, yes, I agree. What are your plans in Kansas? Um, okay, I'm going to tell you this because I've already said this before to other people. It's a play on words, and I've been wanting to do this really bad. Um, our, if you guys don't know, which we, I don't think we've ever said it, our last name is, my last name, of course, Heidi's last name is Lebo. It's L-E-B-O. And there's a Lebo, Kansas. Heidi's middle name is Lynn. So her name is Heidi Lynn Lebo. So what I would love to do is go to Lebo, Kansas and get a picture of Heidi <laughs> because there is a Heidi in <laughs> in, Lebo, Kansas. in Lebo, Kansas. So I want to get a picture of Heidi Lynn Lebo in Heidi in Lebo, Kansas. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to do it. I don't know why. I just think it's kind of cool. I've always wanted to go out there. I do have a, a Lebo, Kansas t-shirt uh, that I got a few years back. But uh, yeah, I'd like to go out there. That's about it in Kansas. I'll tell you what else I'd love to do, but, man, I wouldn't want to do it with the RV. I'd love to go out there during uh, tornado season. So would Heidi. <laughs> she loved that tornado stuff. I would love to go do that, but, I mean, of course, that would be just the stupidest thing we could possibly do if we, you know, if this is our home at that point. You know, we basically have the truck in the RV, and we're going to go put ourselves in a situation where we could lose all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be cool. Got to go again. Happy birthday, Heidi. Thank you, the big easy. No saying. Uh-oh. Going to repo yep. some cars. You don't repo. Pay. You don't Good pay. luck. Be careful with that old yeah. repo crap. Man, I see some crazy crap going Be on safe. there. I love seeing the ones that go repo in the hood. And they all jump on the cars and stuff. Oh, my word. Oh, salt yeah. Fork. Yeah, we, we went to... The only thing we didn't care about Salt Fork... Salt Fork's huge. They definitely can accommodate. The only thing we didn't like about Salt Fork when we went, we went in the height of season. It's so and busy. I can't believe how many people ride in the back of their boat, even though they say, don't ride in the boat, don't ride in the back of the truck, and kids on scooters. I mean, we watched a kid get hit on a scooter, mm -hmm. and he got up, and, you know, the, there people are running out. Are you okay? He's fine, but he was he was riding on the sidewalk, people... He was walking, he, people would go to the bathhouse, and as he rounded the corner, they rounded the corner, there he is on a scooter trying to do a jump and stuff, and man, it's just out of control. Uh, I mean, it's just, there were so many people there, and then somebody, remember they brought the ambulance boat? Oh, somebody, <coughs> I think, drowned in the lake. Yeah, something happened where they, they were, the, the ambulance went down to the boat dock, and here comes this boat with his flashing lights on, bringing somebody in. And I felt weird about Stratton, Ohio, seeing how my last name is Stratton. Uh, it's funny because right down the street from us is Stratton Chevrolet. We just passed Stratton Chevrolet today. <laughs> it's a very small Chevy dealer. I don't think it's smelled. I don't think it's spelled that way though. Aren't, isn't it Stratton? Stratton with an E? Our Stratton Chevrolet. I don't think it's a Stratton O. I don't remember. Is your first name Eric? Damn glad to meet you. <laughs> Too many Sasquatches there. Too. Yeah. yeah. Pick another place. <laughs> yeah, it could be. Hello from Pittsburgh. Hello. We were just in uh, Steeler country. Here. Yeah. We may have missed you saying this, and I apologize, but when you are going full time. We did talk about it a little bit earlier. Uh, we're locked into a year and a half from now. 
We're, um, we're definitely way ahead of what we initially thought. But, uh... <clears throat> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> the, uh, year and a half of we... This winter is going to be a big working situation for us in the house. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So... God. <laughs> uh, when I searched Google Maps, just <clears throat> saw Lebo subs in Mount Lebanon, Pennsylvania. Yeah, apparently uh, the Lebanese people in Lebanon, they refer to them as Lebos. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I have nothing to do, that's way off of what we are. Yeah, we got a year and a half. Hopefully, everything will go smooth. Uh, it's uh, ho hopefully it'll be good for us. <laughs> I think it'll be good for us. That's for sure. You're ready for the cold, and I mean the cold. I'm hoping it holds off. Yeah, I'm. I'm not ready for it, and I want to get out of here. Mm -hmm. uh, our son went to college in Kansas. Not there, even Kansas. Yeah, I know it's. Uh, there's not a lot out there. I was in Pittsburgh and grew up in Bethel Park, PA. Cool. been to Lebanon, Israel, and Jordan. Yeah, um, we see things on, like if you just type in Lebo, I see a lot of stuff come up with, and I think it might be a slang, maybe, and it might it might be a derogatory to some extent, because I see, I saw some videos that said, stupid Lebo, look at them, or something, and they were talking about the Lebanese, and I think the person was dancing or something. I didn't understand it. I just don't know what that all that means or anything. Uh, is there a destination plan for your first trip of the next year in the spring with the camper? <clears throat> Don't know that. Heidi's got a lot of vacation. You know, of course, as soon as the, the calendar year flips. Uh, the only vacation we're definitely going to use right away, not with the RV, we'll go to the Cleveland IX RV show. Uh, we'll, we'll go up there for sure. Uh, but... No, we. The answer to your question is no. And I don't know how much we're going to plan, uh, because, like we did that whenever she had. Again, I, I know that the significance may not m mean a lot to you guys, but it did to, did to us that she's been working for. Okay. Uh, her and I, when we were young and didn't have kids, and we've been married for, like I said, three or four years. I can't remember what it was. We paid our rent at our apartment, or sorry, our house that we were renting. We packed up all our stuff because we were planning on relocating south. And we took off and went south. First, we went to Lumberton, North Carolina. I had a couple job interviews down there. And then after that, we went to Florida, and we spent a month in Florida. Other than that time, other than that time there, and of course, whenever uh, sh uh, she had given birth to our kids, she had not ever had two weeks off in a row <laughs> from work to where we did any two weeks ever. I mean, all those years until we took that trip to Florida, she actually took two weeks off back to back. A little bit over two weeks. Or no, it was two weeks total, right? Yeah. Actually, so, I was off for about three weeks, but that was... Yeah, that was yeah. something else. Yeah, that was family. But we... Other than that, uh, we, we'd never done anything like that. So we did not plan that trip on purpose because we thought, we've got two weeks, let's just go wander. And whatever happens, happens. And we literally were going to go out west, but at that time it was uh, in in the summer, 
and Arizona was having like 112 degree days. They had like a couple of 112 degrees days. And I told Heidi, I said, I don't mind the heat, but that is a little bit hotter than I think I want to deal with. And as we started driving towards Canton, at that point, we decided instead of going up to the turnpike or getting on 30, we decided just to get on 77 and head to Florida. And even then, we didn't know, we kind of knew we wanted to go there. And as we drove, we're like, okay, let's just go. And we, we went all the way to Florida at that point. And we drove relatively quick just to get down there so we could spend time down there. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I don't know. Uh, these, they're, um, uh, road link. Uh, I'm, the reason I'm holding this up, guys, is, uh, Daryl asked, uh, wants to know our mic set up. It's, uh, I think, I think there's a link in the description. I'm pretty sure that we have a link in the description of our, all, of all of our videos. But it's a road link. Uh, yeah, they're really good. And the batteries last forever. We got rechargeable double A's in here. They, it lasts forever. The batteries go a long time. Um, and they've got a really good range. Um, I think they're Bluetooth. They, they connect really easy. And of course, we got two of them. One for Heidi, too. Because you only get one transmitter, one receiver. And the receivers are up there. I mean, they're they're kind of bulky. They're they're relatively big. I mean, you see how big that was. Well, the uh, receivers are just as big. Stuff you can put them, you know, on cameras and that. We just, yeah, we like them. We like them a lot. And we get they come with a, a wind buffer that I don't have attached, but they it has the foam on here. But they do have buffers too. Definitely need the AC in Florida. Yes. <laughs> Levo means a Lebanese person, usually a Lebanese Australian. <clears throat> I didn't know that. Um, yeah, our name, Lebo, is actually, I think, uh, well, I know for sure it's a derivative of Lebo, L-E-B-E-A-U. Because um, if you, tra I mean, you could trace, which I have, my family back to my great, 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 I don't know, like seven or eight times great grandfather to... Uh, Alsace, France, which that that I've said this before. I think um, Germany, France line it changes back and forth there, and we relate more to being German than French because the way the 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 the, the, the country's dividing line was, you know, like I said, wars happen and the line changes, and sometimes the area was German, sometimes it was French, and uh, yeah, the name had derived from that Lebo, which obviously is pure French, and they've made it into the Lebo, and that's considered German. And uh, it was the 1600s. Um, the King of France had was pretty notorious, I guess, for uh, uh, beheading Protestants, uh, German descent. A lot of us was Protestants back then, I guess. So anyways, there was a mass exodus that started from Germany of all these German people leaving and eventually come to the U.S. And then they were given property in Pennsylvania. That's where the Pennsylvania Dutch came from. And then, uh, of course, the only reason the government gave all of my ancestors property there uh, was they, you know, the German people were gullible enough to think, oh, this is nice. We're being given free property to develop but here the government wanted, and they did, unfortunately, um, to run off the Indians that were occupying the land. Uh, so anyways, Pennsylvania Dutch country, that was Indian country, that all became you know German. And then they migrated, my relatives, uh, Michigan, and then Illinois, uh, Decatur area, lots of them there. And uh, yeah, so we can... We can trace, I can trace back, like I said, it's the 1600s as far as we've gone back. And I know that I am descendant from my great, 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 whatever, grandfather's second wife. I don't know what happened to his first wife, but his second wife, her son, and then it just came on down the line. So, 
But um, our daughter did the, the 23 and Me thing, and between Heidi and I, um, she's got a lot of English in her, uh, a lot of European, but English um, from England. So I, I might have gotten that from my grandmother's side, which uh, could be, could potentially be. <laughs> Next summer at Dollywood. That'd be kind of cool. Heidi, did you see what I posted? What's it? What's he? What do you say? Go up. And it, it's too much to do that. So. What do you mean? Well, you find it. Oh no, we didn't see what you posted. I'm assuming that. Oh wait, go up. Just one more. Did I just see you? Uh, nope. I guess. Like Cindy, how are you doing? Well, nope. Sorry about that. That was my mother. <laughs> Mom, if you're watching, I'll call you. <laughs> I don't think that she is, but. I related to Dick LeBeau. No. Nope. I'm just L-E-B-O, no W. <laughs> there was a basketball player or something that was pretty prominent in the college years. His name was Lebo. No relation to him either. I'm not related to anybody that I know of that's <laughs> anybody. <laughs> so what do you guys want to know? Pretty open. Pretty open. I, I didn't have a lot of content that I needed to talk about. Uh, just some questions that people had posted earlier. Uh, I'll tell you later. Mike might talk about me. Ah. What's that? Kevin Bacon. <laughs> yeah. Any update on adding solar to the trailer? No, I haven't covered it. Uh, we just have the um, we just have a Renology uh, solar suitcase. Uh, we want to try that out and see how well it does with our two lead acid deep cycle batteries. Um, I I need to uh, honestly we need to see what kind of consumption we have, and we need to see if where we're staying when we are boondocking, um, how much sun we're in. I, I mean, I don't, uh, ideally, you know, I would love it to be out west, but I don't know. So instead of just jumping in, because there's people that say you can get away with 400, people that say you can get away, you know, that's not true. You need more than that if you're really using it a lot. Um, I want to add solar. Uh, I would like to be able to just, you know, have to run the generator occasionally or maybe just the power of the air conditioner uh, only uh, but hmm. Heidi and I did that story a long time ago one of our videos we talked about um, uh, campgrounds for sure remember that was the title of the video campgrounds for sure we, we are definitely campground type people we do like being in campgrounds with that said we've never really experienced too much boondocking to where we know especially out west i mean we've got to go experience that okay. to understand it and know what we need how long stuff lasts. we know how far we can go uh in a campground with our black tank and we know how far we can go with our freshwater tanks for the most part uh, but we we've got to we've got to put that into you know we've we we need to see we just need to put ourselves in the situation more. I mean, there's we we can't say what that. I mean, if we're out in the desert, are we going to be drinking more water? Is mm -hmm. our water you know what I'm saying? I are we going to be using? Is our showers not going to? I don't know. I just. I just don't know. Are we going to be needing to take showers as much? I mean, it's a hot climate. It's a dry climate. I mean, if we're not sweating as much, I mean, as much as people like to smooth over that fact, I mean, that's one of the things that it's all about whenever you're boondocking is conversa conversation, conservation. And there's going to be times that you may not take a shower. And, and as it is right now, we don't do that. I mean, we... We take a shower every day. Even when we're camping, 
we usually, I can't remember too many times, we usually take a shower every day. So it's kind of, it's it's going to be kind of odd. We, we need to put ourselves in that situation in the desert. So uh, that's the same with the solar. Yes, I would like to add solar. However, I need to see what I currently have, how it does, and how deficient it is to know how much more I need to add. Uh, take your time with solar. Big investment, yes. Yes, you're exactly right, Herbie. 100%. Yeah, I want to do the Battleborn batteries. Uh, <laughs> it says Kim's a campground girl. <laughs> uh, four or five hundred watts of solar. Yep, yep, that sounds about right. Uh, vlog was a whole bunch of stuff about the area. I'm going to try to cram in the last day and evening or vlogging area. LOL. <laughs> Uh, if you guys haven't had a chance, uh, Mark's Adventures you see there, M-A-R-C-S Adventures. That's Marcus. Uh, go check out his channel. Uh, he's posting stuff. He's had a lot of, he's had a lot of, uh, of footage that he's trying to get uh, posted so you guys can experience what he's already done. Um, but like everybody, it's kind of hard to cram it all in. Uh, small tanks. I don't get more a couple days out of it. Small. How small are your tanks? I'm just curious. Uh, tell me what your black. Your, you know, your fresh black and gray are. But you don't use it for the AC. I don't think anybody should use their sol their solar for their air conditioner. If so, maybe you get a split air conditioner. It does seem very regionally if you haven't... Right. We The only place we can boondock here that I know for sure is the AEP. Uh, our power yeah. company has some land. Um, I'm curious. How much power can you current pickups provide the trailer to the uh i don't know my i know whenever my truck's hooked up everything works really well in here i've never checked my 12 volt voltage though um plus we have a 240 amp alternator so um it probably does a pretty good job but of course your wire size dictates that too dry camping to figure it out yep absolutely Mm -hmm. Yes, the Battleborns are lithium batteries. Not only that, but they have all kinds of built-in safeties. So I guess whenever the batteries are, are too cold, you don't want to charge them if they're too hot. And I guess they have all kinds of safeties to protect them. Uh, as far as I can tell right now, they're the ones to get. I'm sure there's other ones, and people probably have comments on that. But that Battleborn, you know, but at like 900 bucks a piece, that's, that's a tough pill to swallow. Yeah, more dry camping to figure it out. Yes, yes. Sure thing, Marcus. No problem. 26 black, 40 gray? Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, I don't know, because our black, we can go 10. We know we can go about 10 days on our black if we're really frugal. And it's 45. Oh, and 30 gray. The gray is tough. You're going to have to get yourself uh, the blue tote, the, which... We have a 32-gallon. I wish we had the 40-some gallon now. The reason I got the smaller one is because our old RV set so low to the ground, I couldn't get the bigger one. It was a little bit taller. But now I wish I had the bigger one because, um, it's for, like I said, I think it's 42-gallon. You definitely need to get a Blue Boy. And your gray, you will, even if you're not taking showers, that 30 will fill up a lot faster than you think. Yeah, See, they're, they're Rel, uh, Relion, Relion, whatever, uh, lithium batteries. That's another one that I've been seeing, too. We can get four days with nine people with a 43 fresh, 90 black, 90 gray. Four that's, days, nine people. So that's... That's, that's pretty good. That actually. is really good. But look at they have 90 gray and 90 black. 90 gray that's a lot yeah that's i mean that's pretty good though four days yeah that's really good nine people seven kids <laughs> yeah i feel that your tank usage will depend on if you're using public facilities during the day something that we need to do more of well i'll be the first to admit um it's funny how how uh you got two bathrooms <laughs> oh that makes sense it make it, it's funny how whenever we were um, 
whenever we first started RVing, of course, we were in a tent, and we wanted to be close to the shower house. Then we got a pop-up that didn't have but just a, a 10-gallon tank and a sink, no hot water. And, of course, the heater just kicked on, so hopefully it's not too noisy for you guys. Um, but we then uh, got uh, to where we wanted to stay close to the shower house. Then the next RV we got after that had a shower in it, but no toilet. And, of course, a sink. And, of course, the shower had a hot water tank in that. But <clears throat> the, the holding tank, the fresh water tank, wasn't very big. So we stayed close to the shower house. Mm -hmm. And usually what happened was, which was kind of funny, you would think it would be the other way around, but me and our, my son, we would take a shower in the, the pop-up, and the girls would go take their shower in the shower house. Uh, I'm not sure why. <laughs> never did figure that out. We never thought about it, really. But the, uh, the um, thing is, is we always thought, well, if we could just have an indoor bathroom, you know, it'd be nice because in the middle of the night, which is so true, in the middle of the night, last thing I wanted to do is get up, put on some form of clothes, <laughs> and get a flashlight, carefully step out the door, make sure there's no animal skunk sitting out there or any kind of, you know, anything for that matter, that I startle and wants to attack me. Uh -huh. um, and then make my way, you know, past the raccoons getting in the trash cans, because there's always dumpsters near the, the shower houses, and go to the bathroom and then come back and, and try to climb to bed and, get, you know, go to sleep for the rest of the night. And we always thought, boy, if we could just have an indoor bathroom, it'd be so nice. And, you know, of course, the showers, yeah, that'd be nice occasionally to take them inside, but we'd still use the shower house. Well, I'm telling you what, as soon as we got... The, you know, the old RV, forget that. We use that shower, we're like, forget the shower house. You know, occasionally we'd, we'd go to the shower house. But, but we should. For the most part, we did it. <laughs> we're like, forget the shower house. We're, we're going to use the RV. We, and, it, and if we could just get in that frame of mind again, I'm sure that that would be nice. Uh, and we do like, the, we've always liked the shower houses, just because you can go take a nice long hot shower. Uh, Newmar Air is capable of running the AC on solar. I I just don't like the fact that unless there was a a split, unless it's a uh, split air system, the, these rooftop air conditioners aren't efficient. They're not very efficient at all. So I I really don't like the fact that you take a nice, relatively efficient way of collecting energy and storing it in batteries and having efficient lithium ion batteries and you're powering this power hog and just eating it all up I know those split airs would do so much better but that's that's whatever you're gonna how will a blue boy help you when you're boondocking you still need to dump it you just have to haul it with you throw it in the back of your truck that way you don't have to move your trailer you got I did a video in the past of what our system was like back then but we, we've changed now, so we've got to think of something new. But, yeah, if you're out Boondock, you need to get away to, like, uh, Opa and Oma. Uh, they're an RV channel on YouTube here. He has, once he gets to the campsite, he pulls his trailer hitch out, and he has, like, one of those wheelchair uh, cargo carriers with a ramp. And he moves the, uh, oh, you don't have a toad? Well... I wouldn't have. I can't do a motorhome without a toad. So just what they'll have to do is just they can boondock. They're just gonna have to really cons conserve their water. Yeah, they. I. I don't. I without then, the toad, that's a whole. Uh, pilot and flying J. Some of them have RV dump stations. Fourteen days, eighty fresh, forty black and gray. Yes. Oh, they got a good setup. They that's high MPH says we camp fourteen days with an eighty gallon fresh, forty black and gray, and the champion for the AC, and the two thousand for the charger. Oh, that's and, and it, for two people, and we do ten days. That's cool. Uh, with we did ten days with forty eight 
45 45 and our black tank unfortunately that trip was it was full and when i say the 50 the 48 on the fresh we refilled that because we had a, a separate tank that we went and, and got water and refilled the fort so mm -hmm. we we basically did well we had water left so we were pretty close to 80. yeah we had about 80 gallons fresh so yeah we were about the same actually uh but no we we only did 10 days that's because we took a shower every day yeah yep It's getting used to the campground electrical supply when not metered and build one of your favorite things about the campground. Yeah, but of course, if you stay over a certain period of time, they start charging you for it, so. Uh, yeah, that's additional tank in their truck. That's what we're gonna do. Yeah, yeah, I have a, um... oh, um, I don't know if you guys, go back and look at our old uh, video. Uh, I don't know how many years ago, we have a 42-gallon uh, freshwater tank that I had mounted in the back of my old truck. I just have it mounted in the back of this new truck, and I have a water pump. In the old truck, I had drilled the cap and actually had the fill neck in the cap. Um, we got rid of, I mean, of course, when we sold the truck, all that left. But, um, yeah, I still have the tank, and I still have the pump. So it goes in the back of the truck, and we fill that up with, of course, 42 gallons of fresh. I could actually do a lot bigger fresh tank now in the back of the truck because I don't have the winch in there anymore. Oh, yeah. Because um, I had a winch that was, again, you just got to check out our old video. Um, the winch was mounted in the bed of the truck. I had a ramp uh, that uh, the Blue Boy then, whenever it was full, we would the blue tank, we'd just hook up to it with a winch. We'd winch it up with the uh, aluminum wheelchair folding portable wheelchair ramp winch it up in the bed of the truck and then we could drive if and that's if the dump station was far away mm -hmm. um, if the dump station was far away of course the blue tank that we have has pneumatic you know air filled rubber tires on it and it just has a, a thing that goes over the ball and we could just tow it to the dump station and then refill our freshwater tank and then come back in the pump we could run our rv through the city water hookup with the tank in the back of the truck if we wanted to do that, but usually we'd go ahead and just fill our freshwater tank again with what was in the back of the truck. It it worked out really well, but I gotta reset all that back up again. And our biggest challenge right now is the blue tank situation because uh, the blue tank now, I don't have a way to get it into the bed of the truck. So tall. Yeah, it's, it's way too tall for what we had before and I wasn't gonna put a winch in the new truck, so I got to figure that out. I'm half-heartedly thinking about it. Oh, wow. It's the wind. I know. You guys can't hear it, but the wind is moving our RV. Oh, high winds tonight. Yeah, and I can hear the awning. Yeah. The topper. Yeah. The thing. It's really being whipped around out there. Wow. The then go to the bathroom. <laughs> Take off your microphone. I am. <laughs> Heidi's got to get run to the little girl's room. Hey, can you re... Oh, we got water. Never mind. We got lots of water. Yeah, we got a jug of water in here. Yeah, if you guys don't do that, watch yourself, old woman. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. If you guys haven't done that, um, we have a five-gallon, the one of those, you know, jugs that you can refill at Walmart or anywhere, a quarter of a gallon. Look at him getting all comfy since I got up. Yeah, I was thinking about just kicking back and laying down. <laughs> Be careful, it's windy out there. Turn on some lights so you don't lose your way. Send up a signal if you get lost. Yeah, it's funny. Uh, Daryl, you, you you also have a 2,000, is a 2000 watt generator? Is that what you said? I'm doing more research and a fresh. Yep, uh, we have a 30 gallon water, 50 gallon fresh tank. Yep, that's got a plenty. Not any binge on the past episodes of RV Daydream. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's, I got a lot of, we got so many videos up and I, I can't even tell you exactly when it was I posted that. I really wish I could help you there, but um, 
The winds are there, strong there too, huh, Greg? I can't, I have with the whole RV just moving. We got our stabilizers down and everything, so. Does having an older truck make you more comfortable modifying it? Yes. 100%. I am having the hardest time even, I and Herbie knows this, um, I wanted to mount my CB in my truck on my glove box door like I have for the last two trucks. I didn't want to drill in my glove box door like I have in my last two trucks. So I got this really good 3M dual lock adhesive and I cleaned off everything really well and that CB won't stay mounted and I know I have to drill and I don't want to. I know that I can turn it sideways and rest it. I just, I had, again, a creature of habit, used to something, stubborn, and uh, I just hate it. I, uh, I, I don't want to drill into the glove box, but that's where I want it mounted. So I might have to do that. Yeah, but it being a new truck, like even all the, the phone mounts and everything like that, uh, I knew that I could get away with uh, you know, those no drill mounts that hold that stuff um, and I'd be more comfortable about it. But it would have been so much easier just to drill some holes and put mounts in there. I just I have a hard time doing it. I don't know why. I mean, it's it's like me saving all my boxes for my electronics. You guys have no idea how anal I am about this stuff. Um, like whenever I get uh, new anything, new electronics... I take pictures of it as it comes out of the box so I can see the order that the stuff needs to go back in there if I ever decide to sell it. And I'm talking about even the, the protective plastic that covers like lenses and stuff. I, uh, I just, I don't know. I want to put it all back together that exact same way because it makes it so much easier to sell when somebody opens it and goes, oh my God, this thing's like new. You know, it's it just, it's, you again, whenever you want to sell something to someone and get a really decent price out of it, don't give them excuses for why they shouldn't pay that price. And whenever something looks that new and isn't taken care of that well, they don't have an excuse. They can't say, well, I would, but, well, they, they, they are, you know, and a lot of people don't care about that. And I still cater to the people that might, even though the majority don't. So, yeah, as far as drilling, you got it. Turn off Google location. What is that? Uh, no, 2,000 watt inverter on solar system. Okay, I understand. How's your son doing making out? Yeah, uh, he's doing okay. He's been there, you know, over a month now. Uh, he's in, he's enjoying it. He's learning what he wants, what he, what he likes, what he needs. Uh, when he comes back, I'm going to get... I'm going to debrief him, and I'll give you guys all the update. Right now, he's very unhappy with the fact that his Internet is not good, his high-speed data. Uh, he's like, T-Mobile lied. He goes, 4G coverage is kind of a joke up here, and it's true. I've even called them up, and they said, yeah, we got 4G coverage up there. And I'm telling them zip codes and locations and all that stuff. They're like, yeah, he should be okay there. And I'm saying, no, he's not. So, like everything, I'm sure there's dead spots for all these carriers. However, he's, he's just unhappy about that. So as far as our communication with him, uh, usually we'd be texting and he'd be sending pictures and stuff, maybe even some video, but he says he's having a hard, he can't. He just said he can't do it. So other than that, though, he's, he's enjoying himself. He's, you know, he's, he's a good worker, and uh, you just tell him what to do. He'll do it. He, he, he won't cheat you. Uh, he's, he's real good about that stuff. So I, I think he's enjoying that whole situation. Um, but we'll hear about it when he comes back. Hey, let's give these guys a thumbs up. <laughs> uh, copy Mike's ideas. Thank you. Sure, no problem. Sometimes they're good ideas. Sometimes they're eh, ideas. Audio just went out of sync. I'm not sure why, unless it was to do with Heidi. I think my audio is still on. Yeah, I'm still on here. Yeah, we got full battery power, believe it or not, on both transmitter and receiver. Um, yeah, the portable macerator pump, I, I'm thinking that's going to be the way to go. And the only reason is, is because of course you can pump it up into the tank 
while it's in the bed of your truck. And then once you get to your location for dumping, you just need a long hose because on my tank, my blue tank, it's got a blade valve on the side. So I just connect to it, pull the blade valve, and then the hose just needs to run to the dump. And of course the tank is empty now in the back of the truck. Um, of course, I'll have all kinds of stuff down to protect the bed from being exposed to anything. Might even have to keep a little Ziploc baggie of that lime or whatever in there too in case something happens. How good of a worker? Yeah, Bud's a good worker. He's 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 good. He he does a good job. Yeah, it's funny how I I can't come to just drilling my dash. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> Yeah, they, they've already been through all kinds of stuff with him. Thunderbird 97's here. All right. Good here? Okay, everybody's saying it's okay. Um, somebody said that the audio had unsynced. But every, there, it was just one person. It might be on your end. Seems like the majority are okay. Oh, he took up my side of the couch. <laughs> It's <laughs> cold. I could have bumped the heat up if you wanted. It's 63 in here. It warms up really fast. I mean, all the time we've sat here, guys, talking with you. Um, I kicked on once. Um, it was 68 degrees mm -hmm. when we started, and it just dropped down to 63. Now, it's very windy. With our house, if it's extremely windy, I think it's because of the ventilation of the attic. Um, our house feels always more cool when it's really windy than when it's not. I bumped the heat up in the house. Oh, did you? I turned <laughs> it way down. Um, and as far as our outside temperature here, which isn't very cold, but still. Cool. Um, we are uh, at 77 outside. The wind makes it... I'm sorry. <laughs> That's Melbourne. Thank you, Melbourne. Have a nice day. I knew it. We're I'm like 50, 77. We're 52 outside. And, uh, of course, raining. and Everything's wet. So even though it's been in the 50s the whole time that we've been in here, the temperature's only dropped uh, six degrees yeah. uh, in all this time. Of course, with me talking... <laughs> The heat that's being generated in BTUs is off the chart. <laughs> no, no heat pump. Yeah, no heat hmm. pump. 56 in Houston. <laughs> Marcus says, wow, 77 in Ohio right now. <laughs> yeah, that was a mistake. That was Melbourne, Florida. No, oh, cool. good, good. Okay. I'm glad you've seen that, Jeff. I don't know what happened. Our, usually our sinking's pretty good because our quality's not great. Mike is full of hot air. Mm. Absolutely. So There's fat. no doubt about it. Uh, certainly a macerator pumps lets you discharge your black water through a relatively small diameter hose and dispose of it in any appropriate drain. Yes. Oh, uh, wow. I watched uh, a while. Movie and you guys are still on. Yeah. <laughs> We're still on. We're still chatting it up. I was about to move to the Northwest <laughs> to get away from the winter. <laughs> hey, buddy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Talk, the only time I don't really care to talk too much is, uh, I don't know, on the phone. I'm not a, I, I, I work sitting at a desk on the phone making, I mean, there was a time I was averaging 110 calls a day. And uh, I don't know. I did that for I don't know how many years, and I don't mind talking on the phone, but not not a lot. I just <laughs> look what Red says. Energizer Bunny. <laughs> <laughs> I get past a certain point, I I'll, I'll slow down. Watching a movie, he. Oh yeah, if I watch movies, I mean I really watch movies. I mean I really watch them I and I there's lots of times she knows uh, I'll pause and 
who's that rewind act? here's that actor and you know look up stuff about the actor you know uh. yeah I, I i really like watching movies if it's a good movie i really like watching them two three four times there's some movies i've watched so many times over and over again no no uh here's a warning do not buy gladiator tires now i never even heard of those uh had two blowouts on the way there oh that is sad oh my word okay gladiator tires nobody buy gladiator tires that is bad you cry watching old lassie movies <laughs> i haven't seen lassie for a long time uh... god man that's some serious 8500 miles two blowouts and the other two had belts uh, uh, broken belts. Flowjet has a nice macerator. I don't know about the garden hose. The problem with that is uh, that is some serious the, wind. The flag is. I'm gonna have to put our slides in tonight. How about you? How about you go put in the, watch your microphone there. Uh, make sure everything's out of the way. Right. And just put out the, put in the. Uh, we'll have that one taken care of. Yeah. We're going to put in the uh, wardrobe. We're going to put in the wardrobe slide because it's easy to do. Yeah, there's definitely nothing That here. wind is very strong. Listen to that. I know. The whole RV's moving. It's not even raining. Let me see what the winds are here. It says the. What are you doing? Just let it go in. So it's... Now you gotta wipe them off. <laughs> Yeah, you guys. I, anyways, I know that we've just given you some dead air there. Sorry, but the the wind is really crazy here. And I'm hearing from other people here in this part of the the state, and they're all saying that uh, s'mores, uh, s'mores camping there. Shrag saying it's crazy winds too. We should have drove over and knocked on your camper door. Yeah, plenty of room. Like I said, we got other than us sitting here. We got. Two chairs there, and you got the dinette over there too. So, feel how wet this towel is. That's it. I wiped both off of both sides. Wow, that ain't bad. Not bad at all. Yeah, that's pretty good. Seventies in Florida. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> that's Quiet in Steubenville. Yeah. Cause you're down in the valley. <laughs> that was Bud text uh, me. Maybe you'll end up in Kansas tonight with Dorothy. RV packed for travel? Uh, no, it was kind of packed, but no, it's not as packed as it should be. <laughs> Bud just texted me and he needed money. Did he really? Because he transferred all his money from that money card because he gets tired of it being declined. Yeah. And then it takes two days to get... You sent him money? <laughs> I sent cool. him money. He said the rest of the next week he'll be working. It says all a happy birthday. Uh -huh. Thank you. Heartland tires are made by Gladiator. Sold a discount tire. Good to know. We have we had a discount tire in our alliance. CM says he needs money too. Go ahead. We need to cook him <laughs> up with the PayPal. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Wayne. Knuckle needs to crack. Yeah, I think I think unfortunately. Um, Thanks, Dell and Corinda. Stuck here for the winter again. Uh, I'll take yeah. free money. <laughs> yeah, we'll take free money. We're not really, uh, I don't know. I've never really, I, I guess my dad helped me. I'm t I guess my dad's helped me out in the past. Thanks, Marty. Sam says he said yes. <laughs> <laughs> Just. Throwing it that way. Throwing that money out there. Yeah, we're um, uh, we were we were gonna buy tires for the RV. 
Uh, so I could go up one more load rated because I like doing that. I just feel more comfortable doing that myself. Okay, that's a good question right here. And then... No. So there was another one up here. Oh, uh, getting back to the Mass Raider. Uh, I don't want to do the one with the garden hose because then you need a garden hose and you're using water. And, of course, the whole idea is try to conserve water whenever you are in that situation. We're hooked up to the campground. That'd be great. Um, but, yeah, I, I don't want to use it for maceration. As far as having an electric macerator, I agree 100%. It'd have to be 12 volt. It doesn't make much sense to have to run a generator or something to do your maceration. So, yeah, I'd love to have a 12 volt macerator pump, an electric macerator pump, if I was to go that route. Um, now, as far as the uh, Goodyear tires, uh, we were looking at buying uh, the next load rated higher tires for this RV, even though these are new. Heidi says, just use these for the time being, which yes. And then I was going to buy some Goodyears. I had some money to where I was going to buy the Goodyear Endurance and go up the next load rated higher. However, at the last second or minute, I shouldn't say, I just dawned on me, wait a minute, most likely this RV is going to sit all winter on the tires. There's no sense in me buying brand new tires for it to sit all winter on them. So we'll have to wait until spring, and then uh, we'll probably do a couple camping trips and then go ahead and get those tires, as long as we're not going anywhere real far. Um, yeah, I, I agree on the endurance they got to be the best ones. Everything I hear about them is perfect. They say 10s and 20s, please. Mm -hmm. um, now, as far as the dealer told me, the snow would crush the AC unit covers and vents. It will definitely not crush these vents that are over the fans um, or the uh, your wind, you know, the ones with the max air thing, uh, the, the protective hood. It won't crush those. I don't care how thick it gets. It can't crush those. I really can't imagine that. Our AC vents on this RV are very flimsy. They're really lightweight and flimsy. I can imagine snow and ice pushing on them. The biggest thing that I know about the snow, uh, other than the weight of the snow, is the ice and the water and the freezing and contracting and melting and then refreezing at night and then thawing out in the day and all that, all then water and then you got dams that are all built up and the water has nowhere to go so it's standing on the roof and all that crap. I know that a cover helps with all that considerably. Um, and all that that I just discussed about the water and everything happening there, it will eventually find a crack or will, you know, the fact that everything's being contracted, all those, all that sealant and everything's contracting too because it's cold. Um, you know, it will expose areas and let that water get in, and then as it freezes and um, and gets in places and refreezes, it'll start breaking stuff and causing leaks. So again, the cover I think is a good idea. With that said, we ran no cover last year on our RV, and we didn't have a we didn't have any problems oh, yeah, at all. We had it. We, we had, had it in storage, and there was snow on it, and we didn't have any problem. And I don't know what we're going to do with this here. I, I really don't. I, I, I don't know yet. Uh, we have a cover, but I don't know if we'll be putting it on. Um, yep, we did the tarp. We did do a tarp with the old RV because we didn't care if it scratched the paint. And it scratched the paint. It wore, it wore off paint. And even on the aluminum trim, it wore off the paint on the aluminum. Even on the cover. The yes. cover did the same thing. Well, the cover did, but not as bad. All right, but it still did. Yeah, so you want to secure the cover as tight as possible to keep it from moving around. But, yeah, the tarp, uh, I, it's, yeah, people do it. I like the, the covers that are breathable. The tarp is less breathable. However, the tarp doesn't really seal off extremely well either, so you might be okay. Yeah, there's people that make uh, AC covers. 
And then the cover for the RV, obviously. G-rated tires. Daryl's got G-rated tires. Tarp just over the AC? That's probably a good idea. I don't see why not. The problem with the portable 12-volt, really you need a 12-volt car battery nearby to use it. It was 120 just using an extension cord. Listen, the RV, um, the RV is filled with 12-volt. You can pretty much run a 12-volt wire from almost anywhere in your RV. I mean, I could go through, I mean, there's a 12-volt in the refrigerator bay. There's a 12-volt in your, your stove uh, for the igniter. Um, there's 12-volt for the hot water tank. Uh, there's 12-volt for your, your water pump. Um, so whatever the closest is to your dump valve, I'm sure there's 12 volt there. I mean, even the lights on the outside, there's 12 volt there. So you can tie into any of that to run, you know, just make sure the fuse that runs whatever that accessory is can handle that macerator pump. Um, it, I know that the, the macerator okay. pump requires a pretty good uh, uh, amount of, yeah, amperage um, to run. But honestly, to out of all the wiring to do, I wouldn't mind running 12 volt. 12 volt wiring is the easiest to run out of everything. It's really easy to do. So I would definitely just run. If you want to run it direct from the battery, just get some good gauge wire and run it from the battery. I mean, it's it's very easy to do. I could believe that. A lot less cleaning when you covered it in the winter. Uh, absolutely. Especially, especially here. Especially here with this road so close. Would have to run heavy wire to batteries for 12 volt. Yeah, I, I, I'm telling you, out of all the wiring to do, I would, I would love to run 12 volt wiring. I'm trying to figure out what that noise is. It sounds like it's the wind. I know, but it, I swear it sounds like that awning. Oh, which I know it can't be. It's got to be this awning, right? Now it's raining again. Yeah, of course you're getting rain again. In your RV for sale video you said the v10 was being replaced is it yes the 73 is going to be replacing all the v10s the 460 was a commercial engine the 460 was around for many years and it was a commercial engine they put it in their commercial trucks <laughs> just listen to the rvs making some weird noises they put it in their commercial trucks they put it in a lot of stuff um and then the v10 came out and of course, go, when I say commercial trucks, talking about the 460, that's also motorhomes. I mean, if you had a motorhome that you bought in 1990, and it was a big, it was a 460 or a 351, for the most part. Some of them had 302s, but anyways, getting off topic there. That 460 was considered a commercial grade engine. Then they came out with the the V10. And even though you had a 5.4, and that 5.4 made its way in some of the stuff, the V10 was the commercial engine. It was put into the motorhomes. It was put into the shuttle buses. It was put into the Ford trucks, the big Ford trucks, the big Ford vans. Anything that was heavy, they put that V10 in because it was made to, to handle commercially you know, vehicles, you know, the big heavy loads. Um, now moving forward, even though we have a 6.2 in our truck, and it's a very good engine, they would never put that in a motorhome, ever, uh, unless, I don't even know how, they would never do it. I just can't imagine them doing it. But they're coming out with a 7.3, and they reverted back to a push rod, in, it's a push rod engine, just like the old 460. The injector design, the way that it uh, sprays, uh, is just like the old 460. It's not like, it is, it's not even close to my 6.2. The 6.2 has, you know, the, the cam phasers, and it's got direct injection. It's got eight spark plugs. It's got all kinds of crazy stuff on it. Um, and this new one's not like that. And it, it's a good one. It's going to be a good one. We have covered our campers every year since we started. It's important because of what Mike said. Snow sits. Yeah, it just sits on there. Water will find. Yep, you're absolutely right, John. It just... The only people who would know that is people that live in this area that have to deal with that crap. Mm -hmm. Just in general. I mean, I, 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 
I mean, it just finds its way. It just finds its way in there. Oh, they're taking Daryl and them's out of here. Yep. Going to bed. See you, Daryl. See you, Kim. See y'all later. Yeah, the wind's really strong, but I don't know. I don't know what's going on here. What cool gifts did you get for your birthday, Heidi? <laughs> <laughs> he says, happy birthday. I didn't get any gifts, <laughs> but we went to Mountaineer Casino the other night, and we had a great time, and that was just fine with me. I don't need anything. Maybe Michael will make me a birthday dinner. Probably not. <laughs> we will make my own birthday dinner. <laughs> yeah, I'll watch her make her birthday dinner. Sing happy birthday as she cooks it. Yeah. <laughs> it seems that Cruise America rental motorhomes typically have the 5.4. I don't know why they would. That 5.4, anybody's got the 5.4, don't take offense to it. But that 5.4 was not a good engine. Hello, Gerald. Shrek's outside your camp for messing with you. <laughs> Heidi, your mic is giving static. Oh, I know. I'm Get your phone away from the microphone cord. Is that it? Yeah. It's probably it. Probably not. Yeah, right, Mary. We do that a lot. What's that? <laughs> Order out. <laughs> oh, yeah, we... Uh, I'm trying to cook more. No. Listen, Heidi's a, an exceptional cook and has cooked all of our meals for so many years. And there's a part of me that's like, I don't want to make her have to cook, especially if it's just her and I now. And the other thing was, it took her a long time. And even still, um, it, takes, it took her a long time to figure out, hey, you know, there's not a bunch of kids eating, you know, it's just me and you. So she always had leftovers, mm. and she's buying too much and cooking too much. God, I actually yawned that time. <laughs> but the, uh, yeah, she, I, she can cook really, really well. I just, I don't know. I, I like the convenience, and I like her to be able to come home and just enjoy. And I'm not a, I am not a cook. Oh, I can. Let me rephrase that. I can cook. We're gonna have eggs. And they're going to be omelets, most likely, <laughs> um, and uh, or creamy mushroom soup, or uh, hot dogs. That's it. That's all I really cook. Because whenever I cook, to, I I just cook for just me to eat, just to put food in my belly. I'm not a, I don't sit there and take pride in all my food or anything. I just want to get something in my belly. Do you poop in your RV? Because I know a lot of people who refuse to poop in their RV toilet. We use this RV just like we would our home. 100%. Every way that you can imagine. I did a whole video. If you want to go back just one or two videos, I talk all about the black tank. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my word. High yeah. mile per hour. Uh, Thank you, Mike. You guys are awesome. Heidi, there you go. <laughs> That's Heidi's dinner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be a good one. That is gross. You two are gross. No, that actually sounds <sighs> good. Oh, uh, I won't. Hey, be I like it. mushrooms in my omelet. Mm. Why not have cream of mushroom? Mm. I'm not making it for and you. Hot dogs, if especially if they're all beef hot dogs. Oh my. I don't like none of that. Yeah, we're always on for a long time. Ron, I haven't seen... That's the first time you said anything, I think, right? I think he just got on here, but we haven't... Oh. Yeah. Yeah, we've been on a yeah, while, Ron. Yeah, we're comfortable. This is... Uh, the RV's really comfortable. I, Whenever we... For you guys, have had, good night. See, <laughs> see you guys. Thanks for sticking along all this time. Um, if you guys haven't checked out our videos... See you next time. When we did all our RV shopping... Um, we have a playlist that I think is titled RV Shopping. And you can watch it. We, a lot of the RVs that we actually thought of. Um, uh, yes, you know, that Barf we might, on the That we omelets. might be interested in. A lot of those RVs, 
I would sit in all the furniture and say, well, this dinette's good, and my feet move around, you know, all that stuff. Spent seven hours today looking for a vehicle. Oh. At some point, don't you just, I hate it. <laughs> he used to drag me all around when we were looking for cars. Yeah. Oh, it's awful. Yeah. No, it, we're not staying in the RV all winter. It'd be nice. Like, try that out. We will. We could do it. We could do it this winter if we wanted to. We go right to Friendship Acres. See uh, Greg and Karen. Yeah. Come help me look. <laughs> <laughs> it's rough looking for... Yeah. God, vehicles are so hit and miss. Mm. You want to go to dealers because it's the easiest way to see a lot of vehicles at once, at one stop. But the last person you want to deal with is the dealers. <laughs> That's the worst part. I need an RV soon. I need to move out of my grandmother's trailer. Yeah, um, you if depending on where you're going to move to, Geraldo. Geraldo. No. There's no L in there. Yeah, her. Did I say that right? Gerardo. Gerardo. Yeah. That's Why did it. I say Geraldo? I don't know. Geraldo. Gerardo. God, why don't we put an L in there now? <laughs> Gerard Gerardo. I have a hard time saying that. That is hilarious. Um, if you're going to be moving out to your... Uh, we're full-time in Outdoors RV in Central PA. Cool. Um, the G sounds like an H. Okay. Geral Gerardo. 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 Yeah, that's it. Gerardo. Gerardo. Why am I having a hard time with that? Class C in his front yard for sale. <laughs> oh, yeah. We do have an RV for sale. Um, anyways, if you're going to uh, move into an RV, depending on if you're just going to park it somewhere, uh, it's easy to find those type of RVs for sure um, compared to ones that you want to move around all the time. Uh, you know, like ours, we could never get one that's really big and old because, you know, it wouldn't last on the road. However, uh, as far as if we wanted to move into a campground somewhere, it's really easy to find those RVs, at least around here it is. Yeah, the art outdoors RV, it, you can do it. The dealer would give you the... Tonky pants gone. Dealer would give you the car to get me gone. That's true. Why do you really <laughs> like the RV? That's a good RV. That's a really good RV. It's heavy. It's a heavier RV. Um, it's ex more expensive uh, for us to get this floor plan in the outdoors RV. Um, we would have had to have it's two foot longer than this one, and it weighed ten thousand pounds fully mm. loaded. Some people call him Jerry instead. <laughs> oh, that's easy. <laughs> you can do Jerry. <laughs> um, right here. Uh, when you say go full time, will you move around a lot or stay in different areas for a few months at a time? To be determined, I think we're. Uh, I we're, bet we move a lot more in the beginning. Everybody thinks it's vacation and they need to cram every. <laughs> okay, listen. This is one of the things that we've seen on other YouTube videos. Uh, people talking about their full time experience, and they say when they first get out on the road. They try to go do everything, and they, they're like they're on vacation, and it's this after that, and just thing after that, you know, just constantly, and you're trying to cram it all in. So when we I'm know back. we're going to have to watch that and, and try to dial it back, number one. Because we're not on vacation. We're not on vacation. <laughs> At that point, you're just living your life. I mean, as it is right now, if you're full-time in your, you know, at your house... Do you go out every night and have dinner? Do you go out and see something, TV, you know, shows, events, bar hopping every single night? Do you go out every weekend? Do you do something every single weekend? You know, do you hit the trails? Do you go biking? Do you go, you know, explore all the, the well, most people say no to that. You know, there's times that they just hang out at their house and watch TV, you know, especially during the work week. So we want to make sure we don't fall into that trap. Um, we do want to get out of the area, though, and we do want to make sure that our plan works according to weather. So, for example, the best thing we could do is when we went full-time, 
and we're getting ready to leave here, we would leave here in October, November, probably after Thanksgiving. The first Christmas, they just have to, their family would have to deal without us. At least our immediate family here. We maybe will be at family, you know, down south. But yeah, we would we would want to travel that way. We would want to to leave during the winter from this area and go to the warmer climate. Then whenever it starts getting hot uh, in the summer, then we might start migrating back up north. Not necessarily here, but none nonetheless north. So there's there's some planning involved but we want it to be fluid we don't want to have any one destination that we have to get to we just have destinations we'd like to get to um, and as far as traveling I you know your your rates especially if you stay in campgrounds you know the longer you stay in the campground the cheaper the rate so staying a month at a time might be an option but I definitely don't like for example when we went to our Dale Hollow Dam site I, I couldn't spend a month there. I mean, we spent a week there, and we were pulling our hair out. So, it's tough. Texas? What's that? It's always warm in Texas, isn't it? No. Oh, hell no, no, they had snow the other yeah, day. Yeah, Texas is strange as far as weather goes. Like so, okay, wait a minute. Marty's saying 6,700 and 8,500. I'm not sure what that is. Mm. That's your empty and loaded? You're fully loaded? Mm. That sounds right. Yeah, but that that sounds like a shorter RV. That sounds like a sixty sixty. That sounds like a twenty, like a twenty-five foot. So, are, is your RV? It's that's one of the that twenty-five model. Is it a twenty-five model? Let me let me put it this way: Is the outdoors RV that you have? Um, uh, Ireland, hello Ireland. That's the first. Yeah. Wow, that's the first one. We got Netherlands. We got oh yeah, the twenty five model. Yeah, we want. We were dead set because of our kids coming to visit us that we wanted a, um, a lot of seating. We have the two rockers in the back. We have this love seat here that pulls out into a bed, and then we have a dinette, of course, that seats four. Uh, we have a walk through bathroom. And then the walk around queen, and we're under 30 foot. The RV's under 30 foot, and I'm 8,800 pounds fully loaded. And that's with 20, whatever, 400, 2,300 pounds, 2,100 pounds of cargo. So we were wanting that much seating. So when we looked at the outdoors RV, the only way we could get the, the two seats in the back, uh, a, a d dinette, and a couch was in a 32 foot. And it was ten thousand pounds fully loaded, and it, I I didn't want that long, and I I didn't want that heavy. Um, I mean, they were just built better. They got more stuff in them. Nothing like taking it on the road. Yep, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, high MPH is right on on the ball there. You have a twenty-seven foot box. Yeah, thirty foot overall. That's our box is 26, uh, 30 foot overall. John Decker, hey, that'd be awesome. <laughs> you got awesome. You got to, you got, John, then you got to type faster. Your awesome <laughs> got broken up. You're in North Florida? I thought you was in Texas. Who? CM. Uh, he says right there, he says North Florida. Yeah. I think he was in Florida the other I thought time. he was in Texas. That will make real economical vacation for your daughter and your young family. Good idea. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. Um, like I said before, uh, if they came and stayed, uh, we could push these two rockers over kind of in the corner and they could, you know, utilize them for whatever they wanted. This could be their door to go in and out of the RV. This would be their bed. They can make it. They don't have to make it. It doesn't make a difference. We can still utilize the kitchen 100% and the dinette without affecting them and all their clothes and stuff. And, uh, of course, at night, they can use the bathroom from this side. Uh, we can use the bathroom from the other side, and we're separate. 
Um, I don't think that's an issue. I think that if they stay the night, they can make the bed in the morning, put all their stuff on our bed or in their vehicle. Oh, he said Florida. <laughs> I said shut up. <laughs> I the only thing I about like about North Florida is it kind of gets cold up there still. Fort Wilderness in Central Florida. I've never been there. Yeah, I understand. We're well. First of all, it's kind of expensive there. Um, back when we lived in Florida, my grandmother would take us all once or twice a year to Disney. And, uh, we, um, that's when they used to have the book, you know, the, you know, you ever hear, I don't know if you guys know this and I might be saying something you guys go, oh yeah, I know it's old news, but they used to give you tickets for the rides. You had a book of tickets to ride, you know, to do the rides at Disney. And if you didn't use all the tickets during your trip, you just save them. And then you go, when you go back. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so, it, you know, that's where you get, oh, that thing's the e-ticket ride. Because the real high-dollar rides, the ones that were the big attractions, you had to give them an e-ticket. You know, they were they were lettered inside the booklet. And stuff, you know, the real simple ones, like a carousel, might be, you know, a B-ride. So you give them a B-ticket. So that's where you get that e-ticket at. You know, hey, that's an e-ticket ride. So my grandmother, she always had, you know, leftovers. And she would all, she would take it. So that's how many times we would go. I've been to Walt Disney World, oh, I don't, uh, probably 20 times. Uh, before I was 10 years old, I've been there 20 times. We always went. It was just a thing we did. Um, but I haven't been back for years Good night, Mike and Cindy. Yeah, damn, damn, you're old. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Do you live chat often? We we need to live chat a little bit more, I think. Yeah, before it got expensive. You're right, Thunderbird. It's it's definitely more expensive, a lot more expensive now. You guys share around how much it was to get the house on the beach. In my mind, it's a lot, but maybe we could swing it someday. Oh, I don't know. Heidi knows. Um, Brenda, it depends on the time that you go. Yeah. Um, we hit the off I season. believe that it was 5500 for the week, and it was off season. There's some sites you can go to. Um, to some of the places you can reserve through the site, we actually... I actually tried to reserve through the site, and the guy called and said, I'll give you another 500 bucks if you just reserve through me. So we went that route. Some people are all into vacation insurance and things like that, but um, we actually got lucky, though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the, the oh. Walt Disney World was expensive, um, or of course expensive now. Back when I was a kid, I mean, they had just, the last time I was there, one of the last few times I was there, oh no, I shouldn't say that, it, it had been up for a few years. We went up there when they first opened Space Mountain, I remember that, uh, I did not ride that because my dad wouldn't let me, my, my dad was a millwright, and uh, that's machine repair, and he knew a lot of the guys in his union that put together the Sp Space Mountain ride. And he said they were telling there's like parts left over and stuff. <laughs> so he wouldn't let me ride Space Mountain. <laughs> but um, yeah, the uh, you know when I was there, it was it was much different than it is now. I mean that was before Epcot Center. The last time I went to to uh, Walt Disney World, uh, my uncle was an electrician built uh, working at Disney World on Epcot Center. He was building the Mexican pavilion. He was he did all the wiring in the Mexican pavilion. And I had to jump. I was 14 I think then. I I'd been I was home I was down there on vacation. I had to put a hard hat on and I had to jump in the back of the pickup and my aunt put a hard hat on and she got in the front of the pickup truck uh, for the company that he was working for. 
and we acted like we were employees. <laughs> And he drove us in, and they were still building that geodesic dome. It was just, they didn't even have all the panels up or anything. It was just this big wire ball with, uh, like, one quarter of the panels up. And it was nice. Everything, you know, where there's water and everything, it was all dirt. You could see all the plumbing and everything for the fountains and stuff. And uh, it was a dirt roads that we were going on to get to the places. That was the last time I was at Disney. That, I mean, that, that was a long time ago, obviously. Uh, let's see. Might have to... Oh, recreating. That's, That's kind of cool. cool. That would be kind of cool. Mm. That's cool. We did uh, Ormond Beach, you know, that one Florida trip. There are some videos about Action Park in New Jersey that was the most unsafe amusement park ever. Mm. Oh, I watched that one. I watched that video. Yeah, that was really interesting. It's Disney. <laughs> it is in the Ohio State Fair where stuff falls apart. I don't know. Apart. Disney had something fall apart. Well, back Those then, cars. I'm telling you, back then, that that Space Mountain was very questionable back in the day. That was Turkey all around. There, guys had heart attacks on it. Mm. There was all kinds of weird, you know, when it first came out. I don't know. But the Ohio State Fair stuff fall apart at the Ohio State Fair? Somebody I've never been there. got flung off a ride last oh, year. Oh, did they? Yeah. It's part of the ride. <laughs> they just forgot to, the, the cake. We're going to Ormond Beach next week for a few days. Yeah, we've always, when I was, uh, when we were though. kids, even though we lived in Melbourne, occasionally we'd go up to Daytona Beach and uh, my parents would always say, "Well, we'll drive up Daytona, but we're going to we're going to spend the day at Ormond." <laughs> you guys like to smoke marijuana? You know, I've never I've never done it. I've sat with people that around me that smoked it, and I've gotten contact buzz, but I've I've never done it. It's not legal, so. Yeah, it's unfortunately not legal here, and I don't I don't want to get in a situation where we might have uh, like especially when we're on the road. And we might have a work camping situation, and they want to do a drug test until they make it legal. As soon as they make it legal, I, it and you know what? The funny part is, if somebody came over to my house and we were sitting outside, and they said, "Hey, you mind if I smoke a drink?" I, no, I don't care if you smoke it. Go right ahead. Go right ahead. If you want to come over and sit down and drink a beer, I don't care. Go right ahead. It doesn't offend me. I, I, like I said, I, if it was legal, I would, I'd be smoking it. I'm sure just to do it. He's never smoked a, he's never had a lit cigarette in his mouth, yeah, so don't never, let him fool you. Yeah. I would do something, to, maybe through the bong, because that's supposed to be clean, right? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Who cares? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Girl, look, damn. That is wicked. You know, the good news is, I mean, you guys, you guys, I know you can't hear this, the wind, that but. Good news is I we don't have I don't feel any cold air coming in anywhere on the it's start chilly of the in here, but I don't yeah, feel it any is cold chilly. air. Maybe through the bong. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm not I don't have the lingo there. Like I said, I've had friends <laughs> that smoked a lot of weed uh, and I've I've gone and sat down and, and in their car and said, Hey, roll up the windows, guy, I want a contact buzz. I don't mind that at all. I don't mind, you know, the uh, inhaling marijuana smoke as far as in general just i don't mind any of that i don't go looking for it and i've, I've just never done it uh but yeah i think the i think it doesn't whenever you do through bong uh whenever you use a bong don't it i don't know why he's filter? looking at me i don't know i thought maybe you heard. tell me quit looking at me i, thought, I never did it before <laughs> i thought maybe it does <laughs> i thought it was cleaner or something like filters or something Oh, you're funny. Next time the wind kicks up, I'll, I'll try to get to the door, see if you guys can hear it. It filters through the water. Oh, it filters through the water? Okay. Any plans to buy a drone to help out? Kind of, nope. I am not. I no. Again, nobody take offense to this, but I'm not into those drones at all. I just, I, it, I don't get it. 
it's just not my thing. I don't know why. It, I you would think that I like cameras. Um, I don't necessarily like flying things. Maybe that's it. I mean, I had model flying airplanes when I was a kid, but I, I just, it's it doesn't fascinate me. The whole, the the fact that you get you can't put it up when the, the, the wind is too strong and and signal loss and and distance and annoying other people with the noise and FCC requirements and having license to fly in certain areas and those things being restricted and and all that stuff. I just no. No, the answer is no. I'm I'm just not a I'm just not a uh you know, edibles I wouldn't I mean, Oh yeah. I, yeah. You say that Yeah, I wouldn't But mind, it's gotta uh, be all legal. <laughs> oh <laughs> Jerry says for some reason you guys seem very nice and sweet. <laughs> Uh, I said we're just normal people. No, I have a live chat that's you guys will never see. You should have seen how drunk I get on the live chat. <laughs> I don't know how many people are seeing it. I'm uh, sitting here drinking here. <laughs> oh God! I'm yeah, we, awful. we'll go out and we'll tie one on. We'll drink. Edibles are the way to do pot. I will have to learn how to do that. Because well, they say that you got to you got to figure out how much to eat. I know most public parks have banned flying drones. Yeah, I just again I don't. There's nothing wrong with them. Space Mountain on Space Brownies. <laughs> Abnormal, Abnormal, Heidi. Heidi. Abnormal. <clears throat> but the... Uh, I don't know. The, I just never got caught up in the drone thing. Um, yeah, I mean, even whenever I watch footage... Mm. Like, if I flew the drone over our house, I would be using it to look at our shingles to see if we needed them replaced. I wouldn't be looking at the overall picture or anything, necessarily. <laughs> Mike's drone would be a GoPro attached to a, a Hot Rod RC Mustang. <laughs> right. Uh, Maybe after a few beers, it'd be fun to launch a drone. <laughs> Maybe after a few beers, I'd be out there with a shotgun shooting down a drone. <laughs> no, I, I That'd agree. That'd be fun. Drones and RV stuff are... Yeah, they're... Honestly, some of the stuff that we... Uh, uh, now, again, not wanting to offend anybody that does this... When we drive, I hate doing the musical montage of the drive. We do it ourselves just because we might go through an area that looks kind of nice. But I think it's kind of cheap content. I, I And I don't want to take away the drive for anybody else that might go actually get to do, go do with them. I know there's a lot of people that are that live in a certain area and have no intentions whatsoever of traveling certain places. And they like to see what we're doing. And we'll try to show that. But as far as just, you know, doing uh, cross-fade transitions, you know, of the drive and what we're doing, I've done that a few times and I feel weird about it. It feels like that I'm, I'm wasting six minutes of your time showing you a drive that could be anything for that matter i mean it's even when we don't do stuff it, it reminds me of the people that ride their stationary bikes in front of a big screen tv of a of them going through the woods it's what it reminds me of it it's fake it just doesn't seem like real to me because there's no interaction so you guys can extend, tell me how you feel about extend it extend the length of a boring video <laughs> yeah yeah i mean I, my stuff is really long and boring anyways and when i do that it's like god why am i why am I doing it? I want to, sh but there is times that we have made drives that I want to show you the drive <laughs> and show you a different look. Uh, Benny Hill song, yeah. <laughs> uh, that would be funny. We have sped up some of the drives. Um, if you look at our trip to Lock Thirty, I showed that drive almost in its entirety, and I sped it up. You can go check it out. It wasn't Benny Hill music. It was some other kind of music. Um, but I did. I did slow down the video um, to show a couple of things along the way, too. Like one of them uh, was, it was in the old F-150, and we oh, were yeah. towing the RV up that hill. Mm. And it, we had to kick that, kick that pig, put those mm -hmm. RPMs through the, <laughs> through the ceiling and hold it there. I'd, like four grand the whole way going Every up the hill. Every time we took it out. Yeah, that was a good old truck. I, I think that's why I've seen lightning. There's no way. I mean, I just seen. Maybe it's just cars turning. 
I know this is distracting for you guys. Here's something else. Since we're talking we about, we have an RV in front of us, so you can hardly see any. It's That's black true. out there. Um, you know, you're getting old when you're sitting in your camping or driveway live stream on Saturday night. <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth. <laughs> true that. <laughs> um, yeah, the good songs were cut. You're right. Yeah. I just went. At, uh, bought. Um, I bought the entire library of uh, Computech his music so I can use it all. Um, but yeah, it's still, there's, there's not a lot of great music. You can't use name brand stuff. Um, anyways, getting back, since we were talking about cameras and stuff like that, I don't know how to incorporate it. I think it's very, very cool, but I don't know how to incorporate a 360 camera. Um, I actually bought one. I tried it out and then I sent it back. That was probably, five six months ago about five months ago maybe and i i sent it back because i just couldn't see how to utilize it well now they're coming out with some better 360 cameras with better editing software i'm just curious can you th guys think of a reason really to have that you know and utilize that i i mean there's different ways you can shoot the footage the nice thing is for me to capture it and for heidi if you're holding the camera, and, and they, it's got pretty good image stabilization built into it, if you're holding the camera, here, I'm going to let you guys hear this. The wind must be blowing through something. Okay, so now you can't hear it. But it's <laughs> It sounds late. like the wind is blowing through something. Oh, you know what it could be? No, and it's not anything of ours. I don't I think guess. it's... All right, so I wasted you guys' time. Big, big drama there. Nothing. See ya, Gail. So, the um, 360 camera, the best part about it is you get... You, you, you can't lose the shot. There is... You, you, you don't lose the shot. Wherever you're... You hold the camera... And you're getting everything around you. So if something happens behind us, you know, I can make that footage whenever I'm editing it. Just turn around and show you what's going on behind us. So I, I don't know. I, I'm kind of curious. Yes, I agree. Landscapes. I could see that one. Not to promote our channel, but Russ on RV or TV gets some great footage with his cameras and his drone. No, yeah, we, we, watch, we watch Russ occasionally. I like... I like his, I like his coverage. Showing us, um, uh, quartzite. I don't necessarily, and there's nothing against him. It's just what he shows. I wish he would give us in depth the campgrounds at this point. I mean, not just flying over them and showing us what they look like. I want. I wish he would take his time and go to each campground, and say this is such and such RV park. This is how much it costs to stay here. This is how many sites they have. This is the full hookups. This is, you know, do they have full hookups? This is what they're, you know, do that for each campground. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, he's out there. He's got all the equipment. Um, I, I think that would be good information because, again, I think we're kind of more on the campground side. And the fact that there's so much free camping all around those campgrounds don't normally charge very much for you to stay all winter because if they charge too much, everybody say, screw that. I'm just going to go stay out in the desert and deal with the water and the solar and generators. It's cheaper to do that. So I'd like to hear about all those parks there. And he don't really do that. Um, but, he, yeah, he's got decent drone footage. We've watched, you know. But then again, it's, you know, it's all desert. It's easy to get good footage when you got all that sunlight out there, too. I mean, everything stays lit up. How about a 360 on a drone? Yeah, they have those, but I'm not going to do a drone. Uh, certainly, RV manufacturers often have 360. Yes, yes. And I can do, I can, don't get me wrong, we've done that. I've mm. posted pictures on Facebook of 360 uh, at locations we've been at to where you can just, you know, you click on the picture and you can look all around, whatever, you know. Up in the sky, see, the, see my feet, or you can turn around, look behind us, front us, what you know, whatever. So yeah. 
Uh, Midland, Texas. Uh, the only parts of Texas that I've been in was, uh, of course, we flew into Dal. I flew into Dallas. Um, of course, I drove through Texarkana and <clears throat> Waco um, before David Koresh. Uh, we used to go up to Baylor and uh, bring beer and knock on the girls' doors and say, "Hey, you want a party?" That's what we did. Oh, that's just what we did. Um, Colleen, of course, lots of time in Colleen Temple. Uh, so Colleen, Texas, Temple, Texas. And then um, 6th Street in Austin. Spent a lot of time 6th Street in Austin. Uh, frequenting all the bars, walking up and down. Drag racing. We used to drag race up and down 6th Street in Austin. And then San Antonio. Been San Antonio a few times. Um and then we went into Mexico. I don't even remember where we went into Mexico. I just rode down with my friends because we could get two cases of Coronas each. Uh, that's all you were allowed to bring back. This was in the 80s. And uh, we get the Coronas real cheap. We, Four of us, five of us get in the car. We'd all go across. We'd walk across. We'd get our Coronas. We'd all walk back with it, each carrying two cases of beer, back to the car. We'd load it up in the car. We'd come back to the barracks. And we would sell a case for pretty much retail price. And uh, it paid for the trip. It bought us pizza. And we had a case of beer. So it always worked out. That's that's the only places in Texas that I was at. Google is the king of 360. Yep. Just solar, no gen. I have two four. I have two fans. I have to replace them. My twenty four comfort. What would you recommend? Looking for something quiet and decent movement. The max. Um, if you've got to replace the whole fan, and you've got to get on the roof and all that stuff, uh, the max air fans. I mean, the, the they're expensive, but yeah, the max airs. Uh, the Fantastic Fan's been around forever. I think the Fantastic Fan's probably better. Um, but uh, the Max Air, and you don't have to get, you know, the one with the remote and all that stuff. But um, we have Max Airs in here. We have two of them. And if I turn and open this Max Air, and my son, we installed a Max Air on his van. If you want to go look at that video. He's got a low profile one that it's all one unit. I don't know how to describe it. You'd have to see it. Um, but the Max Air uh, that we have, they're just uh, in the one direction. They're not pushers. They're just, they just suck air. They don't blow air down. They just suck the air from inside the RV. And if I turn one of these on high, like this, the window's got to be open all the way, and I don't even know if just one window can handle it. We usually, because you can tell how much it moves the air by the sound of the fan when you turn it on when nothing's open. And then as you open your window, the sound of the fan changes. And then if you open another window, you'll hear the sound of the fan change again. You do that until the sound of the fan doesn't change. Then you know you have enough windows open. Happy birthday, Jerry says. But, Thank you. So I, 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 I'm a fan of the Max Airs. <laughs> I'm a fan of the fan. I'm a fan fan. That's why the stadiums are so cold. Every seat Bye, has Greg. a fan in it. <laughs> See ya. Actually, if you leave the hood closed, the Max Air becomes a ceiling fan. I <laughs> don't know about that. Hmm. I can't imagine how that would work, tell you the truth. Go try that. I'll try it. You're closer. I'm closer. So the thing's closed. I don't think it would work. I don't think that would close, right? Or, yeah, it's on high, right? And there's some air. I don't really, nah. Because ours is only uh, well, one direction. Would, yeah, but it wouldn't make a difference even if we flipped it the other way. Well, that's true. Because it, it's not pulling in. I can feel it, though. 
Yeah, I mean, I can feel air coming, but it's it's like struggling. Oh. The RV should have a ceiling fan. right here. It said in the instruction. I, I mean, I just left it closed, but it. I mean, I didn't really. You felt air. I felt. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Um, the thing is, is you know, our we have two rooftop air conditioners that both have fan modes on them. <laughs> so I have a low fan and a high fan, you know, fan only, and it's all ducted. So I don't know why I'd want to run those fans just by themselves with the lid closed when, you know, that, that would do the same thing. Blue, green, brown. I think that ha I think that's just because it's a colorful map. Yeah. Yeah. It's just the color. It's just map. a colorful map. Yeah. We haven't scratched off, obviously. Well, happy late birthday, uh, Jerry. He turned 26. Oh, no kidding. Where to you? be 26 again. Well, uh, you're just a couple years older than our son. How old is Buddy going to be? Uh, 23. Oh, and a couple years older than her daughter. Yeah, she just turned 24. Yeah. Good night, Judy. Thank you. Good night, Judy. Yeah, what is up with the map? Will we just scratch it off as we, as we go RV places. through it? Yeah, I don't think we're going to be able to scratch off Hawaii at all. Unless we fly over there. We get we'll it. make that an exception. Yeah, maybe we'll make an exception. <laughs> Love the idea of the ceiling fan on a trailer. Yes, me yeah, too. Yeah, a regular full-blown ceiling fan. Mm -hmm. That would be nice. We, I could see that, but it'd have to be awful sturdy. Yeah. Max Air with push pull. Yeah, we don't have the push pull. Oh, that's cool. Where can I buy one? Uh, I thought we put a link to that. The map? Yeah. Did you put a link to that? I don't know. Uh, we got it on Amazon. You can add a link to this later. Yeah, we'll have to add a link to the video, I guess. Hello, Jordan. Heard a guy last night trying to remove his AC off of his travel trailer with an awning. Using the awning to slide his AC off? Is that what you're saying? Mm. Jordan Deus. Hello. What's going on, kiddos? New to the channel. What's this channel about? <laughs> RVing, full-time RVing. We're going to be uh, selling our home and traveling full-time in an RV in the U.S. He ran into it. Okay, wait a minute. I got it. I, I'm, I lost there. Heard a guy last night trying to remove his AC off of his truck. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> What's the destination? Much respect with it. The uh, travel. Yeah, all the everywhere, everywhere in the U.S. Just travel. <laughs> oh, Breaking Bad. It's funny you say that because a lot of our viewers, um, we put the Reflectix, that shiny stuff, in our windows to keep the heat out, and uh, it looks like the Breaking Bad. It looks like you're doing something inside that you're not supposed to be doing. <laughs> Come to California. I would. If you guys get the power back on, get your fires under control. We'll have to head out that way. <laughs> Brand new travel trailer. Holy cow. Oh, man. That's sad. Mm. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you. I love watching those videos on TV. It's like they go under the bridge with all their stuff on top of their RV, and they come out the other side, and it's perfectly smooth. <laughs> My favorite. Yeah, 10.8. Favorite. Yeah. And bridge it just cuts it right off. Yeah, we'll get out we'll get out there sometime. Yeah, yeah, we'll come out to the east coast. We we got a little while for that. We still got some loose ends here. We gotta sell our house we've been in for the last twenty whatever years and yeah. Take me with you, ha. Huh? <laughs> Mark's have been here. eleven foot eight. Oh, is that what it is? It's eleven foot eight. I could barely get underneath here with this one. I'm 11 foot two. <laughs> that, I'd be scared to go do that, though. Where are you at, Jerry? Where Where are you located at? I didn't... I don't Is remember saying Texas? that. Did he, yeah, you're in Texas, right? Midland, Texas. 
Is that where you were at? Mm -hmm. No, it's somebody else. Yeah, I love that channel too. We we watched that years ago. I remember it's like this is awesome. These guys are <laughs> these guys are ramming into this thing over and over again. It's crazy. I'm sure it's going to happen. Seeing a guy take a tr his truck camper off. <laughs> Speaking mm. of which, anybody on here uh, close enough from this area or been through the area? We just traveled over the uh, Iron Bridge going into West Virginia. Texas. Oh, you live in El Paso. Oh, you're right on the border. You're right on the border. I just talked to somebody who was stationed in El Paso years ago. In Washington State. Anyways, there's a, uh, he said that, the, so there's an iron bridge in Washington State that, that went thunder and tore it off. Um, anyways, in Ohio here, it's really cool if you guys never done it, just to do it. Um, we do it because everybody travel. it's just a way to travel, but there's an old iron bridge uh, that's in between, of course, Ohio, it's over the Ohio River, and it's the way that we go to get to um, Mountaineer and... Uh, the bridge is real narrow. It's small. Uh, Ten tons is all it can hold. And there's two guys in a little tiny old booth that's been there forever. It costs 75 cents to cross um, or a dollar both ways. And they'll give you a ticket for your return trip. And uh, it's, it's just cool to go check it out. One day, maybe if we're down there, I'd like to go through it with the RV. Because it's really tight. It'd be fun. Yes, yeah, there Steve. you go. You got it. East Five miles per hour is Houston. Oh, you're in Houston. And Jerry's in El Paso. I've never been to El Paso. Never, never been out that way. I like to go down to... Um, We'd like to go down to, not Galveston, I can't remember where I'm thinking. Yeah, Chester, West Virginia, you got it. Yeah, so if you guys are ever, anybody that's not from this area, if you're ever in the East Liverpool, Ohio, Chester, West Virginia area, and you're trying to travel from one to the other, just take the old bridge. Usually the GPS routes you that way anyways. Any plans to travel to Canada, the Maritimes? Um, not any place in particular that I know of in Canada, except for one. And yeah, we got our passports just so we could go into Canada and and Mexico, of course. Um, we we need to go to. Uh, I want to go to Los Agadones, um, just to try out all that medical stuff they have. You know, the the dental, the eye, the all that stuff. We got woman. I can't help it. <laughs> but yeah, Canada. The only time, the only place I know for sure I'd like to go to Canada is just return to Peterborough. I'd gone up. That's the only place I ever visited was Peterborough, and I'd like to go up there again. <laughs> What's not that great? Uh, Los Algodones or El Paso? Party animal. Hey, Hi guys. Howdy. Xander 12 kilogram. What's wonder what that is. Uh, John, I took the ferry across the Ohio River once when I was on a motorcycle trip. I don't recall exactly where it was. It went from West Virginia to Ohio. The ferry looked big enough to take an RV across. Prince Edward Island is nice. At least it was years ago when I was a kid. I have to look into that. Prince Edward Island. I have to remember that. We're going to have to do something about our... I don't think that we can. We'd have to have a huge monitor. What's that? To where we would be looking up at the camera all the oh, time. Oh, man, no. It's the only way it would work. We'd have to have a really big room. I'll be going to Los Algodones soon. Yeah, I I need to go. I want to go there. I really want to go there. Oh, he says El Paso is not that great. <laughs> oh, darn. Yeah, that sucks. Eventually, I'm sure we'll get out that way. I was just in El Paso. No reason to return. Mm. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> Must not be too good. Well, maybe we could drive through there. Yeah, trust me. We've got lots of places like that around here. Mm. 
Yeah. Matter of fact, this there's nothing here. Nothing mm -hmm. really here, guys. We're all excited. We're all up in arms because we get the they got a new Dollar General being built. How far <laughs> down the road? A mile? Yeah. Like one mile down the road. Uh, I can tell you a lot about Canada. There are a few provincial parks near Peterborough, such as Emily, that have camping. Cool. Cool. Yeah, the... I, I just want to take Heidi and show her the lift locks. I got to go see them. I think she would like to go see them. Um, we went fishing on some big lake up there. We fished for, uh, musky. That's all I can really remember. I can tell you there were some good boondocking places out here in southwest Arizona. Yeah, that's the other thing we want to do. We want to go out there and try that crap out. Definitely want to experience it. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I need to see what that's like out there. We got I got to feel the wet. You know, I can't make decisions on a lot of stuff because I, I just don't know. I don't I don't know what the weather's like. I don't know. I, I, I just don't know. You know, oh, it's a hot heat, but it's a dry heat. What's that mean? How much how much difference is it in the shade? How does that affect me inside the RV? How well does the RV stay cold? You know, how well is it, you know, if the air conditioners are made to, to condition the air and mainly take the humidity out of the air to make you cooler, if you're in a dry climate, how cool can it make the RV? Because it's not removing a lot of humidity. I mean, I'm not used to that. Maybe I'll have to build myself another swamp cooler like I had before. I mean, that swamp cool. we had a swamp cooler I built, and it worked really well. Even in this area, it worked pretty well. So I imagine out west, it would probably do really well, because they're not supposed to work here. Mm. Ru Ruidoso. Where is that? I'd rather live in Ruidoso. You won't need AC. 20-degree airdrop. That's what we get here is a 20-degree airdrop. During the middle of the summer. So basically, this is the one thing that I'm kind of curious because when we, this is one thing, when we were in, wow, it is really raining out there now and the wind's blowing. When we were in Tampa, we stayed uh, in, uh, I should say Tampa, when we went to Florida, we stayed in Fort Myers. We stayed in a campground that had absolutely no shade whatsoever at the site we were at except for what our awning provided. It was a 104 heat index, and it was very humid. Um, we turned on our air, and with that one single, and we had Reflectix up in all of our windows for the most part, and it got cool in the RV. I mean, it dropped it more than the, the standard 20 degrees, because mm -hmm. at 104, that means I should have been at 84. And I mean, it was like 71 in the RV or 72, which, again, shouldn't that shouldn't be the, the situation, but it was. So I'm kind of curious, if we go out to the desert and it's 112, is it only going to drop it the 20-some degrees that they say? or I, I don't know. I, again, we got to experience it. Uh, Ruidoso. Oh, you can hear it? Yeah, it, the rain's really coming down. Their 105 feels like 85 out here, or 85 here. Okay, I'm glad you said that. That makes sense now. Because if we, can you imagine if if we, I mean, we've had temperatures in the hundreds here. Mm -hmm. And, no. No, 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 no. We didn't. I think the heat index put it over 100. Yeah, it wasn't we've, had, the... we've definitely had temperatures here in the upper 90s and when it gets the upper 90s here it's i mean the humidity is pretty crappy here we ain't florida tropical or nothing but it's pretty humid and it's it's pretty brutal so i i need to go out there and experience that heat to understand it <laughs> it's definitely a different type of heat yeah and i like the heat you guys i mean you guys have watched this for a while you know how i like it when it's 85 90 degrees and i'm sweating I like that a lot, so I I need to go out and experience the dry thing and see if I if that's something I can deal with. HVAC contractor, you'll need two ACs when it's 110 out to start. It'll take a few hours running. Okay, cool. 
Well, we got two eight, two units, so that's nice. Ruidoso is very nice. It is in New Mexico. Cool. It's not raining and barely windy in Maslin. Wonder if that's coming our way. I have no idea. Yeah, yeah I think it's here. Yeah, it's raining. One thing about visiting Prince Edward Island is the Confederation Bridge. It's only told leaving the island. Mm. Well, <laughs> yeah. Once they get you on there, I'm trying to. I'm trying to look out here real quick. Well, it's pretty windy. You hear that? It's pretty darn windy out here. Yeah, it's... I'm cold. Okay, I'll turn on the furnace. My feet are chilly, guys. <laughs> Richard said he, Richard says it sounds cool. It just dropped to 62 degrees. The rain. Well, you're going to hear the furnace now. Yeah, so. we've got to kick the furnace on it because it's like my, 60 in here. Yeah, my feet are a little on the chilly side. So. Yeah, right. Shove them out the door and lock it. <laughs> I got another door and it's a keyless entry. I know the code. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be back. <laughs> Now, a lot of people have said, I've talked about it, uh, we have these floor vents for the furnace, and I don't know if anybody's on here that said that, but I've been meaning to say it won't work. The floor vents are plastic, and you can't shut them off, you, uh, meaning I can't, I can't put, uh, oh, like, our, like our old RV we bought to replace the plastic ones that broke we bought metal ones that had little thumb wheels that you could close them off um keep dirt out of it whatever and and people say well you know you can buy and replace those with metal ones well the thing is is uh the slide goes over top of those i don't think i want those metal ones there especially with that little wheel sticking up i think it might do damage the bottom of the slide yeah yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of rain going on here. There's some pretty decent wind too. It's hard telling Jerry whenever he stops. Oh yeah. Talking. Oh, we're probably gonna close right. it out here within the next half hour. Yeah. Yeah, we've been on since seven, so. Yeah, we just want to make sure that everybody gets their word in, and plus, the thing is, I mean, it's eleven thirty here, so. You know, out west, it's it's not that late. <laughs> uh, the little, uh, it's actually not a creek behind our camper. It's like a ditch. Yeah. And it, it should not flood the camper, but it definitely will flood the, our yard. Yeah. And, if and it, it probably will be flooded tonight. If it rain, if it keeps on raining pretty hard, and it, it's got to be really flash flood-like. If it rains real hard, we won't be able to go out the door we came in. We'll have to go out the other door. It's 8.30 there, huh? Yeah, Heidi's, Heidi's in night night. She heard us the word. Absolutely. But the... Uh, we're, we're still in a... Uh, it's not moderate. I think we're still in a light drought. Because we went without rain for so long. The sad part is, is I knew all this rain was coming. We have a lot of leaves that were in the yard. And I wanted to stay up on them. And uh, my mower, one of the pulleys. One of those things, being a homeowner, which hopefully I don't have to experience for very long. Um, much longer. One of the pulleys screwed up on the deck, so i got to fix it. Hello, Mike and Heidi. From Hello. Lacey, Washington. About to put an RV cover for the first time on our travel trailer after our last trip in a couple weeks. So many pros and cons with covers. What say you? Uh, make sure that you keep it tight up against your RV. Make sure you get a good breathable one. RV covers will not last. Don't expect to buy one and 10 years later have it. <laughs> three years later, maybe. I would expect three years. But pretty much after that, uh-uh. Um definitely get a good breathable one and again you want to keep it snug against the camper because 
it moving around will rub your camper and potentially rub off some uh, some stuff. Now, as far as yeah, paint, maybe some light scratches. As far as your weather there, depends on how much snow you get. Um, I like having a cover to keep the water and the and the ice and everything from thawing during the day, becoming water and snow becoming dams, keeping the water on the roof, and then it freezing again at night. The seals and everything on the roof are contracting, gaps forming, water getting in there, freezing, breaking, causing leaks. I like that stuff. I like that a cover keeps, for the most part, all that away. But again, it's got to be a breathable cover because water will protrude in at some level, and you need it to be breathable so you don't have mold growing on your roof. Um, we have a cover. We may still not run our cover this winter because it's a sign of defeat and there's no chance even if the weather breaks that we can go out and take off our cover and go RVing and come back and cover it back up. It's a lot of work. So uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know when it comes to that part of it. You're but, funny. But as far as the cover, if you're just storing it all winter long I and you're going to have it parked, I definitely believe in that. And as somebody mentioned earlier, I don't remember what it was, uh, especially like in our area, we have a high traffic area as far as traffic around us. It definitely, without a doubt, keeps your RV so much cleaner so that whenever you break it out in the spring, if you've washed and waxed your RV and cleaned the roof really well before you put your cover on it, you know, after the thing dries, but put the cover on it for the, for the winter, whenever you break it out in the spring, it's going to be really nice and like brand new you know, when you put it away. Um, the bad part is, of course, you can access your RV. You know, they got zippered panels. You can unzip and get in your RV and everything during the winter if you just want to check it out. Uh, but you've got to be concerned about um, uh, if you decide you want to try to maybe turn on your furnace or something like that. Remember, your cover's covering up the exhaust vents on those things. You can't come out and screw around and and turn on your hot water tank or something, which I don't think you would because it's winterized, but still, if you decide to turn on the furnace or something like that, you get, just remember, you got a cover out there. And if you got slides, you can't slide them out, you know. Just, it, I, I can't think of any there. real downfall of putting a cover on the RV for the winter if it's going to sit all winter long. Yeah, that's just my own personal opinion on that. Um, again, Try to make sure that it's really tight against the sides of the RV. You don't want that rubbing going on too much. And, of course, um, somebody said tennis balls. Uh, we use roll bar padding. Uh, you can use pool noodles, uh, those things that you get swim in the pool at the dollar store or whatever. Uh, cover all your sharp edges up so you don't tear your cover. That's it. That's all I know about them. North Carolina. What? Why does that sound familiar? What did we just talk about, North Carolina? Mm -hmm. We just talked about North Carolina, didn't we? I don't think so. Oh no. The RV we have for sale in our driveways from North Carolina. Sold in South Carolina. Yeah, it was. No, he bought it from South Carolina. South Carolina. Yeah. Not a lot of snow. Who's not a lot of snow? Washington. Oh, Washington. Our snow was pretty decent last year. We've gotten good snowfall amounts. There's no doubt about it, but it's, it hasn't been too bad, has it? Not the last couple years. Yeah. North Carolina is getting the storm coming through the Gulf. I think that's what we're getting. I think we're getting that same storm. No, oh, it's, it's can stop. I'm pretty sure this is the same storm. It can stop. Let me look real quick here. Yeah, that's what we're that's what we got going on right now. The, yeah, right. The line goes from Alabama up through Atlanta, Tennessee, Kentucky, 
West Virginia, and, and it's crossing in, in bands through Ohio right now. Yeah, it's the same one. Yep, I'm running out of fuel. Oh, I have to. She I mean, always stretch. Does. My head hurts. <laughs> uh, today was a cloudy day for us. But it wasn't. Ter it, it wasn't I, bad. It wasn't cold or nothing. Um, actually, did you leave the house today? Did we, we go somewhere yeah, today? Yeah, we went. Oh, to went your, to Mercedes went today. Went to our daughter's place. Yep. It says, do we like Drake? I don't know who Drake is. Who's Drake? You talking about the singer, Drake? Oh. I haven't heard any of his songs forever. Yeah, it does sound like we're parked under Niagara Falls right now. Yeah. It is pretty noisy and windy. Uh, with a RV trailer, you can unhitch it at a campsite somewhere before the most extreme half of the Cabot Trail. So you only have the truck to control on the mile-long grades with sharp bends. Oh, that's cool. So it must be tricky. We got a four-wheel drive. I don't know. guess we can use it. Be one of these trailer queens. Those guys that uh, have race cars that they trailer them everywhere. <laughs> that's what they call trailer queens. Wait, we are... Who knows if our truck will ever see off-road for real. Uh, we got some stuff off and on rain, and then it's light rain in here in Philly. Keep the heavy stuff up there. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah, I don't know. Because we're getting it. I don't know. It's... Do we like the Temptations? Yeah, yeah. I haven't heard Temptations in yeah. a while, though. Yeah, I've got some temptations on How far my from Google Indianapolis. playlist. Indianapolis. Mm. How far are we from Indy? Not um, ter terribly far. Six hours? You know, I don't even know. How far are we from Indy border? Of course, Indiana's. We're on the northeast. We are 30 minutes from Pennsylvania. If that, and we're about forty-five minutes from West Virginia. If that, yeah, about forty-five minutes from so West Virginia. So it's five Virginia. hours and five minutes to Indianapolis. Five hours, yeah. So, so we yeah. got to drive all the way across to Ohio. I don't know if we took thirty. I bet you it has us take thirty, right? Thank you. Yeah, we like the RV. Um. Mm. It's going to be uh, next March. It will be a year old. Yeah. It'll be its one year birthday. Boy, the RV got warm. That was nice. It's just yeah. comfy. Yeah. It'll make you go to sleep for sure. Thank you. Yeah, we liked it. We like this RV. It's very comfortable. I don't know what that noise is, but it's. Uh, what I'm guessing is that noise is the wind on our AC covers. It's got to oh. be. Right? Could be. It's like I said, I, th I thought it was blown through something. Not necessarily. wonder what this RV... This is one thing I'm going to have to do is uh, put a camera in here while we travel. I wonder what it sounds like. I mean, if this is just the wind blowing over it, what's it like on the highway? Yeah. You know, it's 60 mile an hour winds. Yeah. That's one thing that I think I would have a hard time with with a motorhome. All the little squeaks and rattles mm -hmm. and clanks. Oh my gosh, I would probably never be allowed in my seat. Yeah. I'd be chasing creaks and squeaks down. Wait, you said you had Max Air fans. Yes, we have two Max Air fans. Cabot Trail was largely built about 90 years ago. It had been paved for some time. Originally, there was no guardrail to prevent you from falling. Oh. No, we've never, I've never eaten at Skyline Chili. I know I. it's a sin. We've only been through Cincinnati a couple times, though, her and I. And I've been, the only time I went through Cincinnati was when I was driving to Texas um, and coming you know, we back try from it. Texas. I, I know. Everybody says you should Oh, have we it. like spaghetti and we like chili, so. Yeah, they say it's all. Kind I mean, of... I've made. I've had chili with spaghetti on, and I don't know. 
You don't have any squeaks or rattles? That's good. <laughs> I tell you that I can't stand it. I'll tell you how, how, and Heidi knows it. You know when you have your water bottles? Yeah. It, the cheap water bottles, and you take the lid off. Oh. There's a little plastic I don't know about ring sentiment. that stays on the lid that whenever it breaks loose, you know, the first time, that's what held the lid on, uh, or, you know, that when it's fabricated. So you know it's a new bottle. Well, when you put your, your main cap back on your bottle, that little ring, when you're driving down the road, as the vehicle just moves, it'll rattle. Oh, it drives me crazy. Oh, I can't stand it. <laughs> I can't stand just that little bit of rattling that it makes. My Max Air vent cover is put on with pens and it rattles. With the well, ours is put on with pens also, but we're not hearing we're not hearing a rattling. It it sounds like kind of a roar, right? Yeah. It's kind of like a roaring sound. It's weird. The only noise I had is the tray and the mic. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Our when we get every time we get to our location, we forget and we just put our food in the microwave and start hitting buttons and then we hear the, all this clanging going on inside there and here it's those gears trying to turn mm -hmm. a, a the plate and the <laughs> everything's off of the wheel. Yeah, we always forget about that. Jeez. That's scary. What? Oh, my word. It's like it, the wind gets stuck. That is, cr that is crazy. Yeah, there's Sasquatches <laughs> on a roof. Oh, I can believe that. The rattles and how you load it. Uh, he says it sounds it sounds like thumping sometimes. Maybe that is a cover that's doing that. I can turn off the furnace. Maybe I can pinpoint that noise. Like it makes a difference. It ain't like anything's falling off here. Right? I'm going to check it out in the bedroom. I don't hear it now. I can't capture it for you guys, unfortunately. It's, I'm just missing it. Uh, it is this is probably stuff. the strongest winds we've been in this RV. Yeah. Yeah, the old RV, um, we got caught in a couple storms that were pretty brutal. Uh, uh, Virginia Beach. Those winds were pretty darn strong, remember? Yeah, they were. Yeah, that was pretty pretty strong. Kind of pull out of Go climb on the roof. Right? Let's go do that. <laughs> He's adding somebody else in there. I'm not <laughs> going up there. Cut a pool noodle and fit in between. Yeah, we could do that. Did you buy the Rockwood pontoon kit with the trailer? Yeah. Uh, we should be okay. I don't think it's enough to... It, it's pretty heavy, but I don't think it's enough. <laughs> I don't think it's enough to flood us out like normal. That, I could look out the window and see that railroad tie out in the middle of the yard, though, again. Yeah. We probably should start wrapping it up, though. Let's wrap it up. Because we'll have to move the slide in uh -huh. and move everything. Oh, we ain't moving the slide in tonight, are we? You're not? No. Because oh. I, I, I would want to squeegee the outside and everything. And, oh. but why? Is these uh, winds are going to be all night? Let's see what the forecast says. Today's Saturday, right? Yeah. 15 to 20 mile per hour, gust up to 30. Well, I don't know. That seems like gust higher than 30. Chance of rain 100%. And then tomorrow, 15 to 20, gust up to 30. So it's basically the same. I, I'm starting to lose this argument. <laughs> uh, well, the winds uh, is going to be like this all. Oh, man. Okay, maybe we're going to put this stupid thing in tonight. Gosh darn it. 
Yeah, uh, she wanted to put this slide in before we did all this. And I said, well, we're gonna do our we're gonna do our live chat out in the RV, and she goes, oh, okay, yeah, that's right. Other than that, we usually bring these slides in whenever we know they're going to be wins because I don't want these awnings, even though they're topper awnings, I still don't want them ripped off or tore up or anything like that. But, oh well. Um, see what mm -hmm. we're missing here. Not really. It won't bring the pull the slides in if camping when you bring dampness inside. Yeah, I... Not much. I threw in that rag. I wiped all the way around the wardrobe slide, and it was raining. It that's it was barely wet. Yeah, I, I mean it would bring in. Yes, we have roof vent covers. Yeah. Uh, do you guys ever bring other folks in your RV? Yeah, yeah. We. Um, who was uh, Gail and? Uh, why can't I remember Gail's wife's name now? All of a sudden. Chris. Chris, yeah. Gail and Chris, they came in and seen the RV. Um, Marcus and his wife. Why can't I remember her name now? Michelle, Mich Mich no. Why can't I Marcus, what's your wife's name? I forgot all of a sudden. They came in and seen the RV. Um, then... Uh, Michelle. You... <clears throat> it's why, Michelle. Why? It's Michelle? Yeah. Why? why? I don't know. You that always doubt weird. yourself. I don't know. Yeah, that was odd. Oh, well. Um, they Can checked I out the come? RV. Um, Frosted Doe, John, where are you at? John and Jean. Yeah, there's been a lot of people yeah, in Yeah, here. they come and checked out the RV. It's not much to look at. I mean, it's kind of all cluttered up right now. Why is there a hair dryer out here? Because that's where I blew dry my hair. Oh. The other day. It's just gonna come. I don't. <laughs> I wish in between you guys. <laughs> oh Jesus, you're dumb. <laughs> you're saying y'all in between us. Uh, hi guys. Any idea why one of my two AC units would have reduced airflow in a ducted system compared to the other unit? Both seem to cool just fine. Okay, let me see here. Why one of the two AC units would have reduced airflow in a ducted system? It could just be where it's located in, you know, as far as downstream. Um, for example, I think my center, the one that's in the center of the RV, I think that it doesn't feel as strong as far as the amount of air that it moves compared to the one that's in the front. <laughs> wow, that is loud. And He's I think looking through your windows. <laughs> He's trying to freak us out. I think that has to do with the Nobody. front one, the one in the bedroom. It basically only has a, you know, a couple vents that it has to blow through in the front. All the rest of the vents are in this direction. Um, where this one here has to cover four vents openings this way and all the vent openings the other way, so it seems like it moves less air. Now, there is a chance also, like in our case, um, I took the, the, the cover off of the RV to look up the inside vent covers or the filter covers, and there was a lot of foam spray that was oversprayed, and I took a steak knife and trimmed it back. Because uh, the way that they seal it off is usually with like that great stuff spray that you buy at the hardware store to fill gaps and holes. Well, they also do that not only uh, in the air conditioners and they overdo it where you have to trim it. That's what I did. But also in the ductwork where uh, the end, the ductwork is, in, like in our case, is in that four inch or whatever. It's, it's thick. It might be yeah. even closer to five inch of foam, block foam, um, they build the tunnels that the air travels through in that foam. They form it in the foam. It's voids in the foam block that they put. It's all one piece. So what they do then is at the ends of those foam blocks, 
where the, the air conditioning stops or where it should stop, they just fill it with foam. So the air cannot get, you know, keep on going to nowhere. So maybe there's a chance that they forgot to fill that with foam. Um, so maybe your tracks are open to a point that don't need to be. I'm not sure. No, we're not camping. Heidi's typing the same thing. <laughs> Herbie said, came by and we weren't home. Herbie said, you're home peeking out the windows, Heidi. <laughs> Yes, good night. Eat a lot of cake. We do need, it'll be nice to have cake. Should get a little cake for your birthday, honey. That'd be I'm fun. not going to go buy my own cake. Okay, I'll pretend I made a cake. <laughs> How about that? All right, I think we're going to have to close it up because, wow. That is some wind out there. Uh, yeah, we're going to have to close this out so I can close up the RV. <laughs> As Heidi was saying, I didn't. She's right. It. I, I don't want to that wind to be blowing all the time. But appreciate all you guys hanging out with us. Let's see how long do we stay on for? Seven. Four eight, hours. Nine, 10, 11, 12. Oh yeah. No seven to. Four, yeah. That's five hours. Five. Well, five hours. It's four hours and so many minutes. I don't know what time. See you, it Jeffrey. Is. Yeah, that's uh. Oh well. <clears throat> typical. Pretty typical. <laughs> Yeah, I don't mind doing. I can. I don't mind doing these live chats. I like them. I like them. Thank you. It's really. I, it's really tough to have a lot mile of people. per hour MPH. Yeah. Thanks again. We do appreciate it. Yes. Yeah. Heidi gets to go have herself a little snacky snack now. <laughs> Get some dinner. Um. Uh. We we like the the amount that we have watching, which is good. Whenever we have like. Around uh, thanks by fifty to friend. ninety watching, so we can kind of keep up with everything. Right, but there's times that we've had a lot. And it's like man, I can't keep up with this stuff. The so last time I think we had almost a hundred. Yeah, and I couldn't keep. I was having it was, a hard time. This is up with a it. little bit more <clears throat> more under control. Yeah. So anyway, as yep. always, we hope to see you out <laughs> there. Bye. Bye, guys. I gotta turn you off. And we are.